so really when you think about it when you like really put it into perspective that way the question of how many lobsters can fit inside a human anus is really more of a question of like species or maybe even logistics no, than it is no, of anything else the it, anus is what matters it, 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 there is there in the same way that our immune system across the world is entirely diverse right yeah. i don't have the same sensitivities that somebody in say indonesia has mm -hmm. yep I, as an individual, have a unique butthole that can fit yep. a different number of lobsters based on my history, and it doesn't. Have, species has nothing to do with it. It's it's sheer it, force of will. It's it's like I said, it's logistics more than species. Is really what I should be saying. It's it's how you're getting them there and where they're coming from and how they're housed. Because like the species is going to be too variable to, to really make a, a notable age. We haven't even mentioned the age of the well, lobsters. That, Not once. That's where. That's where species become so tricky because, like, they're going to continue. They're practically immortal. They're going to continue growing forever. So you can get, like, those big 50-year-old yep. boys off the coast of Maine. But right. they're also starting off the size of a freaking crawfish. Like, their eggs are tiny. So if right. you go grab one of those crawfish that you see, like, down in the southwest United States, or southeast United States, like, if you leave them long enough, they look the same. So right. it's really it's, – it's, it's where you're getting them from, how old they are, how they're fed – Right. more than like what kind of lobsters or what kind of anus like those those and are that's the why i'm saying that i've got a, a mine's capable of a lot except for that mm. i'm so i so crave a father-like figure to approve of me that i'm only yeah. going for the giant ones well that's it, you know if you're if you can't find the fatherly affection and approval from anything Get it from the lobsters, right. man. My if, if if my dad was that's anything, he was a lobster, and like that's yeah. that's a place you can get that. You know, Everything well, the is interesting thing about a lobster is what is God and the lobster hierarchy of the epitome of. I could actually probably keep doing this conversation and not even acknowledge the fact that we have a show to do. I'm like, <laughs> right. what an interesting one. What an interesting one to come in on where you said anus immediately, and it's just like you know what we don't want ad revenue this show. I guess like. <laughs> <laughs> this anus take away ad revenue is that going to hurt monetization? I, I, no way. I, I don't, it's hard to say because so even discussion of kinks, which somebody could mm. claim happened here, it didn't. But one could claim this was theoretical. It wasn't for gratification yeah, that we were describing this. Uh, uh, technically, you can just like discuss like oh, you know I like rope play and then and then that's mm. against the rules. It's it's kind of silly stuff. I probably shouldn't have even said the example of like, an example of what will get us demonetized is, <laughs> <laughs> and then you say it. Um, everybody, welcome. This is Cuz I Wanna. We do it, I guess uh, maybe we need a version that says Cuz We Wanna. No, nah, I, I don't like mixing the idea of it being a different. The I is a royal I. It can refer to me. It can refer to Forrest. Uh, I, we, we do the show when we want to, cause we want to, and we talk about what we want to, I'm more than happy. Yeah. We obviously this channel being the channel it is talking about atheism and theism is certainly going to be a recurring theme. Uh, and, and we're fine with that. Um, we'll reserve at least a couple of lines for people who want to argue with us about something. Uh, I think I'm we already have with the color temperature right now and I'm all orange. Yeah. You definitely need to go cooler. Yeah, that's, I'm trying. I'm trying. That's better, right? That's a yeah. little better. Yeah. yeah what you do the, is I look like a flipping ghost. One of the hard parts with adjusting your color is you have a disproportionate amount of yellow and orange books behind you, and then you also have a number of blue books behind you. So there are times where it's yeah. like, okay, has is there been has there been a reduction in yellow and orangeness? And you look at you, and it's like your eye takes in multiple pieces of data. And, and mm -hmm. there's a lot to, to set it askew. This is probably why auto white balance doesn't work great for you, by the way. No, I can do this. I can do, I can do noise reduction. What is that all about? It, it did nothing. Only matters if you have noise. If we zoomed in, you would actually see that the colors are now moving in little areas of a few pixels in like circles to try and, try and sharpen uh, uh, different areas and make the noise that is... It's, I just it's, don't want to come up on ISO. your show looking like a gosh darn ghoul man and i want to like try to make it look look a little bit more reasonable our show forest i'm ready to take that step this is our <laughs> show uh, i'll tell amber <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you called it our show <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm so alone uh what's on your mind <laughs> what's on your mind 
Dude, I'm freaking... Uh, so as we just mentioned before we started, I just woke up a little bit ago. Uh, it's 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is the best standard time. And uh, because I've been up all night doing sampling, um, it's the last semester of my master's and I'm trying to crank out this thesis, but I still don't have a solid results chapter. So I'm doing like a hundred more samples to try to get like something really to show for my work. Um, and so I spent literally like... And I was at, at my lab until the sun came up, just sitting there, just freaking taking pictures of mandibles, grinding teeth. If you want to talk for a long time about paleoecological reconstruction and about how these isotopes are moving and what I'm testing for and like really, really bore your audience for a while, I'm down, bro. We would, but I told you we can't discuss kinks on YouTube. <laughs> it's not allowed. Uh, so I'm, I'm replicating a poll in another place there. Yeah. For anybody who's watching, there is a, uh, there's a poll. Hey, actually, if you're watching right now, will you just tell me in the polls? And by the way, there is no purpose of the poll. The, the results of that poll is good. You're not going to get anything for it. There's no, it's just asking you to pick a number. Um, are you able to change your vote after you vote? Cause if you can, that actually ruins the one purpose the poll might've had. Um, I'm not able to. Okay, so you once you voted, you you were you were locked in. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. I was locked in immediately. Okay. Uh, it the the uh, I I don't want to bring up the one thing that might be interesting about the poll until we close that poll. Um, mm -hmm. but but it, it it it'll be it'll be interesting, uh, to say the least. I don't know, man. Yeah, I uh, I also don't sleep very well. I feel like you and I probably go to sleep around the same time, which is funny because every now and then I'll send you a text at like three or four in the morning and I'll be like, yeah, he'll get to this tomorrow. And then it'll be like one minute later, like, yep, I'm in. I'm like, did I, did I wake him up? But no, we just are both. That's when I'm most active. <laughs> we're just both. That's so, I'm doing the majority of my writing. Do you do multiple days in a row where you only get like a few hours and then you have one day where you like make up a whole week's worth or what's your. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on what I'm doing. So like if I, uh, uh, generally speaking, I'll phase in and out of like a, a normal 24 hour cycle where I'll like, I'll be going to bed at 10 and waking up at five and, and then yeah. I'll be like going to bed more at midnight and waking up at eight. And then all of a sudden it'll switch and I'll, I'll go to bed around noon and wake up at like when the sun is going down and just, I live in miserable. darkness and like, <laughs> it's, just, so and it's all, too. and yeah. so like, it just depends. And I've, I just phase through like I, I I don't live in a 24 hour cycle. My mind works in like a 30 hour cycle. And so I just kind of like move through it like as as it's it's super weird. Uh I um I so it's it's very or similar I'll do, for like, me. Three power naps thing where like, I'll sleep yeah. for three hours here and three hours there. That that one is very common as well. I have like I'll I probably only get four to five hours of sleep ever. I rarely get those like makeup days. Then sometimes I do get a makeup day and I'm like, Oh my God, I just slept like seven hours, but I woke up at like 7 AM. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just not go to sleep until 11. And I'm going to try yeah. and, and turn into a person who goes to bed at 11 and wakes up at seven. That's the perfect schedule for me. 11 to seven or noon to eight. If I actually got eight hours, that, that would be perfect for me. And what my body does is go, Oh my God, I'm so fucking tired. I'm so fucking tired for the next, for that period of time. And it'll be like noon and I'll be like, don't take a nap, make it till 11 tonight. And your sleep schedule is fixed. Don't take a nap. And then it'll get to like mm -hmm. four. And I'm just like, Oh, how am I awake? I'm like hallucinating. I'm so tired. I need this nap so bad. Uh, uh, and then it'll get to like, eight and I'm like, Oh, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. And then at about 10, an hour before I, I'm trying to stay awake, uh, uh, awake till I wake up entirely and yep. then can't go to sleep until like yep. 5 AM. And it's, it's yep. the fucking worst. And it makes me, it is one of the there single is. worst things about my life. There is a reason for that, and it's, it has to do with, like, your circadian rhythm and, like, the, the timing of the hormone balances in your body and shit like that. It's it's outside of my wheel. I'm not good at endocrinology yeah. in this way, but, like, there there are reasons for that. I just don't remember them. And, like, I suffer the same exact thing because, like, I'll freaking I, – I, and there's also there's a lot of psychological stuff where, like, I'll be on the couch passing out trying to focus on something or I'll be at my desk, like, trying to work, and then I'll go lay down, and I'm just, like – wired like i'm in my bed now just wide awake just like vibrating like what well, i have to go do something because like i don't associate my bed with sleep enough uh, like, it sucks y'all don't in the chat before people vote 
talk about what the results are, what vote, what vote you're doing. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, like that's don't, <laughs> don't do that. I see. Uh, some people also said that uh, they liked uh, me and Erica on the Thinking Atheist. Uh, if you liked that, head over to my channel. I just posted a video today uh, where we took that part where we brute forced the classification of Seth Andrews and like proved that he was a Homo sapiens. Um, we uh, we did that for a whole ass thirty minute video, and so we like explain what is a human and like talk about why that's a kind of a complicated question. It's way more complicated than you think it would be. Um, it's really cool, so you should check that out. I'm, I'm like doing production stuff at the same time. Yeah, also you could watch him with Erica on the line a couple of weeks ago, and then you can watch him with Erica yeah. again, not this coming Monday, but the following? We or is it this coming it. Monday? We haven't confirmed it. We haven't confirmed it. We haven't oh, confirmed it. I don't know. I thought we had but confirmed. Probably soon. Probably okay. soon. Well, please confirm that. It, yeah, would, it would help me. Gonna... It would help me. I'm trying to get all of February locked in. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyone available to mod? Uh Anyway, yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we're talking about anymore. Sleep is not something I get. I hate it. I really hate it. Uh, I don't know. We could take some calls, see what people want, what they want to talk about. We can see where the night okay. takes us. I don't think we have a plan. I think it's going to be a casual sort of deal. Uh, what do you want to do? Oh, by the way, you said not to. Well, I just want to point out because you said not to talk about the numbers that you you did. Uh, I won't say what number I picked. But I will say that when I walked out in the living room to grab my my drink, uh, Amber said she picked such and such number, and it was the same one. And we're so in love that we picked the same number, and it's right. so sweet. She's a sweet bear, and she has a similar mind. All right, here's what I'm going to do because now I kind of want to talk about it. Be and, and what's funny is these results. There's there was a different way I could have done this that would have made the point even more. But I'm going to end the poll there. Um, okay. And, I picked uh, five. Yes. Way. Okay. And so what five one, which was the in the position of the B, uh, it's really annoying because it reorders it when it gives you the report on it. So yeah, the, yeah. the thing in B position it was number five. The thing in C position uh, uh, was the number. Wait, was that the? It was four five six seven. Was A B C D, and mm -hmm. five one, which was in the B position. Uh, uh, four got second place. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. It was three, four, five, six. Five was C and four was B. And B and C had the most votes with C taking the most votes completely. So there's a few different things that could, that, that, that could have happened here. One, uh, a lot of people felt drawn toward the five because of something. And, it, and it's significantly enough that 29%, uh, when you're talking about four and we're talking about randomness and whatever else, the 25%. The fact that you have four choices, having one all the way at 20, 29 and another one all the way down at 20, as in people avoided, were more likely to avoid six. These actually are statistically like significant results, despite the fact that they feel uh, uh, very close. However, what we could have made, we could have done this poll and had an anomaly. We only had 400 people vote. And yet, even if we had kept it going for thousands and thousands of votes, the individual final results would have probably not skewed much from what percentages they were at, even at 400. And, and so when you mentioned like you picked five, she picked five, you're both so in love, you're both drawn toward five because you're so alike. Mm. This is the most basic experience that obviously there's a lot more we can do, but this is the most basic experience where I start going, how can you see the results of a poll like that, which were predictable? You could have predicted beforehand B and C in a totally apparent random choice will get more votes, whatever you put there, unless you start using loaded numbers. So, for example, a number like seven, seven is too many people's favorite number. I, I purposefully avoided the number seven. Thirteen is too many people's favorite number. And also it has like things about it. Twenty two is one of those numbers. I think twenty seven might be one of those. There's there's specific numbers. Fifty seven. We're all aware. Heinz fifty seven. We've seen it a million times, even if we don't know what that is. There are numbers that are right. significant. So going with three, four, five, six, there was only one number there that sort of like people are attached to five for silly things when they were kids. Down around, put the hat on, down around, put the hat on. How to write the number five. Did you have that one in kindergarten? Down Whoa, around, put the hat on. You just wrote insane. a five. Uh, uh, There's a whole song. This is the most basic version 
of what I feel is the beginning of a great exploration, if anybody has any weed, to smoke weed and look at this poll and really consider how much humans have free will. So I I picked the number five just because I like the way that five things together look. Like I like the shape of the concept of five. Yeah. But I like I'm wondering now if the number six had been in that same position, if I would have picked six because oh hell yeah, it's like a the, the six 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 that or Half if I just like that idea. Yeah, it's, it's, absolutely. I would have found a yeah. reason. Or if you put in three there, I like threes as well for the same reason because they're structured nicely and like I you know what I mean. So like it's, 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 I wonder how it would have tweaked my mind if I wasn't thinking about it. Here's what's like even funnier. I knew five was going to win when I did it, but, and on, on this one, five only pretty much won. Have a look at this, everybody. Let me zoom in. Let me use my robot technology here. At the beginning of the show, I, I put the, here. I put it out on Twitter, the same poll. Look which one is the clear winner. Oh my God. And which one's in second place. And which one's in, actually, this is the one that's funny. First and, or third and fourth place have swapped on this. But that, yeah, yeah. number five, once again, the same winner. Is in that same position, you think? Uh, and this is with fewer votes. This is only 103. I think it's a combination. I think five is a number that we all like more. We, like, we can count in fives to almost an infinite number, despite the fact that it's not an even zero number. Uh, uh, I think that there's... I think five is the most attractive number. It's been put in one of the two most attractive spots. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for it. And I'm just sitting here going like, look, not everybody chose five, but a lot of people did. So I'm not saying you, everyone had to. No, you had should keep the camera there for the entire show is what I'm saying. No, <laughs> you should I, keep it where it was. If I had more evenly colored teeth, I would, but I'm very insecure about them. <laughs> it's, they're, they're, like, they're just wild and whack. I don't know what they're ever doing. It's, it, I just, I, this again, I know that this is not the demonstrable, it's over, it's done, we don't have free will. It's just a tiny starting right. point. It's not even probably the best starting right. point. So the reason why I was thinking about this is uh, I've recently some people have been going back and watching a specific episode of The Sunday Show where Matt was trying to do an experiment with me where he goes, okay, so let's just make an easy one. Jimmy, do you believe we're conscious? And I said... Ooh, I was the wrong person to choose for this because not really. Uh, and there's a lot yeah, of nuance to that answer. But he goes, okay, but but in the way that a rock isn't and we are. Like, you understand that. And I was like, fine, if that's your definition. And I wish we had gone off on it more And when I say what I mean by... It's not actually that I don't believe we're conscious. It's that I don't believe consciousness is necessarily an independent... Most people treat it as an independent factor from something else. Like, we take in data... We listen, we hear, uh, uh, or we, we listen, we see, we process that data, we evaluate what it is. Uh, we're awake. So is, is, is conscious just the opposite of unconscious, which is sort of a specific human thing? Is it just the opposite of asleep? Nobody thinks that conscious is just the opposite of sleep. Otherwise, consciousness right. has been solved. And yet that is one of the definitions of consciousness. I have yet, so it's kind of funny, when we talk about sex is not even a binary. There's no one individual thing that defines sex. I have yet to find a definition of consciousness that you cannot describe other things having that we as a society right. don't consider conscious. I have yet right. to find an, a, 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 a definition of consciousness that makes computers not conscious. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it's, uh, And then there are people like, well, no, by conscious I mean like alive, you have life trees we don't consider conscious what are you right, talking right. about and so when i say well it could be a compounding thing like you have to be yeah. alive to have consciousness but consciousness is also a different thing so like i usually describe it as like an emergent property like if you have all the parts for consciousness you don't have consciousness consciousness is something else. it's like saying that like i have a tide without having an ocean a body of water and a gravity and all these other you know what i mean so like yeah do you have to have all these parts, but the tide is a new thing that comes out of the sum of, it's more than the sum of the parts. And that's what consciousness is. It's like, it is the emergent property of the combined electrical chemical activity of a brain. And like, See, I, I think we're, what do you mean more than that. the sum of the parts though? Why like, is so it more example, the, than the sum? Because, so like the, the example of, of a tide is, 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 is like, it, it's, it is a collection of water molecules mm -hmm. and it is gravity 
but it isn't just those two things. You're also having the effects and the motion and the, the things that happen because like all of that becomes this part of the movement of the water. So to call a tide the movement of water would be way too reductionist and it wouldn't really cover all of the concepts but that are actually there. Reductionist means you're leaving it out, not that those parts aren't there, is what I'm saying. Like you were that like, this is the tide, but there's the also concept. this and this. And, and so this is where, this is what I'm saying. I think that how myopic we get with our definitions are totally arbitrary. And I think there's yeah, yeah. far less different about us as adamant objects as there are inanimate objects than we perceive. Because what's also interesting is once you start getting into the smaller and smaller worlds with these less and less, first with complex organisms, but then even not things which are alive, you start to see a reemergence of a complexity that you associate with the complexity of our brains and complexity of our lives, different electrical systems and shit like that. And so this is where I'm saying like, I consciousness, of course, I'll be like, I'm conscious. But when I say that, I'm probably more describing that I'm awake versus not awake, but uh, I'm the opposite of unconscious. But we, even that, like a dead person, we don't call a dead person unconscious, right? It's, they're right. dead. It's a different state. So there's some difference in the definition where I'm just like, I, and so bringing this back to the free will thing, uh, uh, the fact that there are so many things you can predict about people before they do them, the fact that demographics exist, the fact that like even environmental means, we can, we can now even say like, if you find a serial killer, there's like a 90 plus percent chance that we can say they had these seven things happen to them growing up. It's like a high emergence of a cruel mother, a brain injury, and a bunch of other right. things like that. It's usually men who felt emasculated by their mothers and, and then were like, I'm going to get back at my mom. That's probably a poor, I shouldn't have used the word usually, but this is one of the common things that come up. Um, uh, and, and so just this, the concept of both agency and consciousness and all of this stuff that people, we accept as an, almost as an axiom. It's like, I'm mm. conscious and I am making choices, and therefore right, right. I have agency. As though making choices means you have agency, which is sort of ridiculous. It, it is kind of back because, like, it be, having agency means you can make choices for sure. Um, <laughs> so, like, I, I can understand where you would make that connection. Like, it's it's like the whole like, do you ever get into like really weird like thing theory and shit like that? Probably. I don't. It, I, it, I know no. I know nothing by their terms. Like, yeah, so like there's there's a, 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 a culmination of several concepts that, that are important here, and like one of them is um, the agency of inanimate objects. So like for example, like you know this this hat here, I got Ash Ketchum's hat here. This is an inanimate object; it isn't doing anything, and yet this object does have agency over me. It actually has control over me because when I look at it. I'm immediately reminded of my childhood. It brings back certain memories, certain emotions, things like that. It, 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 the, the fact that I own one was a dumb sense of accomplishment that is both a happy and a hilarious thing that I can laugh at myself and how stupid I am like this. So this object that has no intelligence or, or consciousness or whatever does also have agency. And yeah. there's also the idea that like most of the time when I have this thing here, I'm not looking at it, I'm not paying attention to it, so it isn't a part of my reality. But if it were to get damaged or destroyed, I would then think about it more and in a different way so it would become more real to me. You know what I mean? And in that way, it would have even more power over me, you know? Right. And so like there's these, these different concepts of like, agency as separate from a mind and separate from consciousness, separate from, from all these things. But like definitely I would say that trying to put these things together and like trying to say like, like that, that, you know, we, we don't have consciousness or that consciousness is an undefinable thing or that it, you can't break it down. I would point to like wetness as an example. Um, I can tell you what water is, but if I have a bunch of hydrogen atoms and a bunch of oxygen atoms, they're not going to behave like water. They're not going to do the water. Th you know, I can't, I can't say here's these things. They will behave this way. It's when they come together into a molecule that you then get emergent properties like polarity. They, they're going to stick together differently as polar molecules are going to become adhesive and cohesive. They're going to do all the ma amazing things that water does, not because of the atoms that are there, but because of the way that those atoms are put together. Um, and then wetness 
is the presence of those things on a different thing in a certain, so like water by itself. Can you call that wet? Because wet is what you call a thing that has water on it. You know what I mean? And so, but then would you call something wet if you had like pure ethyl alcohol, no water at all, 100% pure ethanol, and you put, got, got on, so that would be wet. So is it just the presence of liquid, not just water? Like, you know, and so you have this nuance. But if I say to you something is wet, we can talk about that. We don't have to have all of it. You know what I mean? And so like, I feel the same with consciousness. Like it's one of those things that the more closely you look at it, the fuzzier it gets. But when you come back away from it, like a Van Gogh painting, it, it comes together and you can now see what it is. You I, know what I, I mean? I get what you're saying. The thing is, is we deal with theists. Like we're arguing with theists who want to come at us with, well, scientists haven't solved the problem of consciousness. And I'm not aware that there is a problem of consciousness. That's the, well, that's I, the like... The, 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 why I don't are think we... anybody has solved that problem. That problem is I, I, I get I, what you're has saying. Has anybody even identified problem, but... that there's a real problem? That's that's sort of my yeah, thing. It's, is, just it's... That we, anytime you can't define something, there's a problem. But, but what is there to define that we haven't defined that we call consciousness? Mm. I get it. You're saying it's a collection. And if you then say it's a collection of these things, then it's defined. It's defined as the collection. It's done. It's solved. And this is sort of uh, co consciousness is perhaps an illusion because we have a great sense of self and we have a sense of like, it's very significant that not only can I see myself in the mirror, I can then consider myself and my universe and all this stuff. But none of that's anything more than just like getting high and having fun. Like you're just thinking, well, yeah. bro. And, and there's lots of things that in some way can identify themselves in a mirror. We can treat computers to now to identify themselves in a mirror. But I feel like we have a harder time having computers self-identify than we have. The, hard, the hard, harder than a, a teaching a computer to self-identify is teaching something object permanence. And yet we do that easily, but nobody brings object permanence close to a part of consciousness other than it just being sort of present that that's like the, like that's, that's the stuff that's actually more there, complicated. There are, there are conscious things that don't have good object permanence. So like, exactly. it, it's, they're not, they're not necessary. I, you can't have one without the other, but you don't need the other for the one. You know what I mean? You can't yeah. have object permanence without consciousness. That doesn't make any sense. But at the same time, you don't need object permanence to draw that connection. So I, I, you wouldn't make that a defining factor. I, I, I know it sounds like it might be different, but this is actually part of my point is the things which are more complicated, we don't associate into consciousness. A lot of the things we associate into consciousness are the simpler things that we do yeah. some primary version of something else. So whenever somebody calls in now from now on and says, why, what about the problem of consciousness? What is it? What, what problem of consciousness? The best one you have, you can bring me is something that is different about more basic molecules from the self-replicating molecules from the past that a component we have that they didn't. And you'd have to bring in something distinct. And, and, and at a certain point, it's just, it's just that our brains are better. Like we've got awesome, hot, sexy brains. And then we started writing down what we were doing with our brains and we stopped repeating the same mistakes over and over again because we could learn from previous societies, which is also the way you debunk their stupid moral argument. Because you can't yeah. replace their moral argument makes no fucking sense. It, it, I, I went from like, well, well, that's complicated. Yeah, okay, well, consider this, consider this, to one day just realizing the moral argument the, that we have morals is so fucking stupid. It's like yeah, such it's a stupid what cuz look at look at how uh uh you can see societies which didn't have the ability to communicate between each other or their methods of of maintaining uh their history and stuff was kept to a select few people instead of giving out to everybody and you can see the negative effects that haps, have has on the group morality of the the uh, uh the increase of the occurrence of slavery and torture and all of these things and total disregard for each other basically teaching everyone to be fucking little psychopaths uh and it's and, and then when you start to just make the information available to more you start to preserve more and everything that's where you see moral progress starting to happen where they actually see according to well-being in mass which things over time helped more people mm -hmm. like no, there's a reason why the golden <sighs> rule shit, is like man. present in like almost every every religion and philosophy like no matter yeah. what connection they ever had yeah everybody knows if this sucks for me it'll probably suck for somebody else so i'm not going to do it yeah and then by the way the golden rule it turns out sucks if you actually implement it as law 
As far as your like personal thing, like I'm only going to treat somebody the way I want to be treated as a preemptive method of behavior. That's an okay thing. Some people treat themselves like shit. So I don't know. I don't know if that's the best standard either, but for sure, if you do it after that's where you get laws like eye for an eye. And that's why I think mm. it was Malcolm X who had said I for an eye for an eye leaves everybody blind. No, it wasn't Malcolm. Who was it? It was, it was Gandhi. Gandhi. Yeah. 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 I yeah. think Gandhi might've quoted him at some point. I don't know. Or somebody did. Cause I, I haven't read a ton of Gandhi, but I've run a ton of the books of the people who liked Gandhi a lot. Anyway, it, uh, it's- Go ahead. Yeah, you know, that's I've I've heard people try to expound on that or expand on that moral tradition where they say like right, we're going to make it like even better than golden rules. The platinum rule now is like treat others how they want to be treated because yeah. you know how I want to be treated is probably going to be taken as very offensive and rude to the other people because I like yeah. to be very cut and concise and I, I I'm real flowery and over talky sometimes and other times I really like to be down to business and like so like it wouldn't work for a lot of people. And they would think I'm a dick if I'm trying to treat them the way that I would expect myself. And that has gotten me into, and you and I have talked about that. That has gotten me in trouble before yeah. where like, I'm just talking to you the way that I would want you to talk to me. But because you're a different person, you think I'm being an asshole. Um, and so like, I, there I, are people that try to, I have to imagine the sure. problem you run into the most is purely innocent and you don't even know it's happening. I'm guessing a lot of people, you talk to them as though they're as smart as you and because you're so nice, you can't acknowledge that they aren't. Uh, and I think you probably make a lot of people feel stupid <laughs> by accident, I, just casually meeting them like they're an equal. When when you I you are, you make me feel stupid sometimes. Is what I'm saying. I'm not that smart. <laughs> I just I try to I just talk about shit that I'm excited about. And yeah. so like when people talk about shit they're excited about, like they they you know, I don't know like they. But that's all. I, I don't know. But it's, it's, what, it's, it's, what's it's the different. difference? What is the difference? I bet there are a ton of games. I bet I could have beaten Stephen Hawking and Monopoly 90% of the time. Stephen Hawking right, only right, talked right. about the thing. What is the difference? It's not just a matter of like, I'm very passionate about one thing. It's it's uh, ease to proficiency, but not ease because ease sounds like I'm saying it doesn't take hard work. It's, it's a lot of fucking mm-hmm. work. But like, yeah, I'm proficient right. at specific things. As far as YouTube production goes... I can outproduce with a minor, with a a portion of the budget that someone like Mr. Beast has. I can outproduce all these motherfuckers. Uh, but if you mm. now need me to produce a podcast, as so many people have asked, it always yeah. sucks. It always ends up sucking. Now I got to hire an audio engineer. Uh, and well, so it's, like, it's it, is what it is. It, it, there's there's. I remember watching. So I was I I I, I love um, Hearthstone, uh, the game, mm-hmm. and I remember watching a tournament of Hearthstone. And there were these people playing it and they were talking about like the cards and the stats and like the, oh my God, if he, if he pulls this, it's going to be this. And this is an amazing game. And it kind of just hit me where I was like, this is the nerdiest shit in the yeah. whole world. These people are just total nerds, just nerding out. And then the next thought was, what would be the difference if they were doing the exact same thing talking about football? If it was these football commentators talking about the stats and the whole, how many fucking uh, 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 touchdowns, I almost said home runs, how many touchdowns they've gotten and how many yards they've done. I don't know how football works. I don't know anything about it. But like, then this would be seen as a totally different, this is a very popular masculine blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And it, it's the exact same fucking nerdiness. And what I do when I sit here and I pour over books about what it means to be a human and how different cultures think and like what gender means for these people and like what 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 were these humans breaking rocks with and what were the rocks made of and how did it break in a particular way and to make a better stone tool and like when I'm looking at all this shit and nerding out about it what's the actual difference between that and some guy who's in a kitchen like if I cook this steak at exactly this temperature and flip it at this time and put these herbs on it it's going to be the most flavorful thing there isn't one it's just you get excited about a thing and you fucking nerd out about it and then you're happy <laughs> and you're a have cool you, person because of it. Have you ever had something you liked that was ruined by seeing how far away you are from expertise? Oh man, no. Pokemon no, I don't cards. Think so. Pokemon cards yeah. and the like RP and, and the game, like the competitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. I, the cards not as much. Like the competitive is sort of advanced uh in cards, but the regular game competitive. The amount that these people can just, rec- I, I'm like, man, I love playing a Pokemon game. I love doing the thing. You know, I've never really been interested in battling other people, but 
usually like a normal person. It's like about half the time I'll probably win and about half the time I'll probably lose. I'm not way better, but I know some basic strategy. And then I'll like watch these channels that are like, all right, so this new one's coming out. There's new Pokemon and it's got this dual typing of this and this. That means it's going to be able to, and they don't even have to look at the chart. Like yeah, I, yeah. I, I've, I've looked at the chart before and they're like, so that'll mean it'll have this, this, and this, but also it's stab damage will be this enhanced by this because it'll have access to this move set and this and so then basically if you put this item on it and you do this you'll be able to uh wipe the other team with a one hp jigglypuff it's like where is wild it, and 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 it ruined it a little bit for me where i was like i wish i'd never watched this video because i'm running around yeah. going like i'll still lose one or two battles in the game in its entirety. When I play the game from start to finish, I'll I I'm not going to lose many at this point. I'm old enough. I've done it long enough. You know, I see a water type. I know to hit it with a grass or electric type, that sort of thing. I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. be able to not lose very often, but I'll still lose a couple. And these people are like, here's the combination. I beat the entire game with a single level one Magikarp. And you're like, cool. Well, like, that, Fuck you. It doesn't kill it for me. It doesn't, it, 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 so, like, one of the cool things about, like, when you learn, like, when you, when you dig into a topic is that you learn that there are these different levels of, of, of knowledge about it. Yeah. And, like, the, that, it for me, I can be excited about something and also know that there's a way higher level of understanding it. And I can just be content only, like, I, ha I enjoy this level. And if it ever was, if it was more important to me, I would go for a higher level, but I don't that, need okay, to, you know what I mean? But you, just, but you just identified something that I think is the, the key issue here. You've just said, if you needed to get there, you could. And I'm saying, I Damn. sometimes see people go off on that Pokemon thing and I go, I'm not sure. I, I don't think my brain retains the type of information. Somebody had mentioned in there, yeah, like there are people who can recall just the base stats and max stats yeah. of all 1,000 Pokemon, because there's like a 1,000 of them now, and they all have six oh. stats. That's fucking yeah. nuts. That's 6,000 yeah. independent points of data that they not only know how to do that, they know how to then interact with modifiers and what happens at evolution, and it's fucking like, why? Because like there, there are, like you were talking about like, you know, different modifiers and like if you know this and that, that's how this bitch works. That's how the periodic table yeah. be, is that the whole point of this is that I can look at something, I can pick a random thing on here, the, the, you pick the, the zirconium there. And so because of where it is on this thing and because of like the, the positioning that it's in, I can tell you a bunch of shit about that. Because of what it is, I can tell you how many protons and neutrons and electrons it has just by looking at the numbers on it. I can tell you what the basic properties are of it. I can tell you what it's going to look like more or less. I can tell you like what it's going to do more or less because, it, and that's the whole point of this chart. And so when you look at like you know a, a Pokemon thing, and it's like if if it has these stats and it can do those things, and you can kind of combine those data in your yeah. head, I can get how somebody could do that. I don't know anything about it, and, and I'm sure that like the the having several thousand different points of data based on like you know, uh, uh, health and, and, and hit points or whatever the fuck else, those are arbitrary and random. So whereas yeah. this has order though, that is tricky, but like yeah. it's, 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 you know, I don't know. I can totally get how like somebody could categorize things and then make those make sense. Cause that's how my brain works. It's yeah. categorized everything. You know, like I, I remember right. timelines and big picture things and categories, but if you ask me like about something in art, I wouldn't know how to express a feeling with paint. That's right. the, you know no, what I mean? That's a I very different kind of thing. I've literally been an artist for a living. And one could argue that because I do production for a living, that it's not completely gone away, but I became a photographer and was doing quite well as a photographer, which is an art thing. I can't draw stick figures. That's yeah, yeah. how bad I am at drawing. I can do visual mediums. I can do great giant fantasy images where you're just like, oh my God, this looks like, well, I used to be able to. I probably can't anymore. I used to yeah. be able to, I was the shit, man. I was good at it. I enjoyed it. I can't fucking draw stick figures. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, if it doesn't have a specific thing, the reason why photography attracted me is I found out there was an entire school of, uh, of like learning with photography that you could just call a light engineer. I was learning light as mathematics, how it works, mm -hmm. how it drops off. And I love throwing it. I know I've thrown the inverse square law at you before where you were like adjusting lights. And I was like, all right, let me explain to you the math of how this shit works, man. Because <laughs> uh, that's the shit like uh, woodworking. I, woodworking, I see people who are masters who are way beyond my level. But I also see mm -hmm. myself with a momentum that it will not take me 
my whole life to get to where they are. Like I, mm. I, it, it's one of those things where if it appeals to me, I absorb tons of information about it and then I try to master it. Then there's some other things that are like um, music, musical instruments. For some reason, I just feel the need to know how to play every instrument. And so when I learn mm. of a new instrument, I literally pick it up long enough to say, I can play this. And then I put it mm. down. I wouldn't say I'm a master at it. There are very few things that I was ever, I was really good at piano. I was quite good at, at guitar. Uh, but even those I, I rarely touch anymore. Um, and so yeah, it's, yeah. It, 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 it's weird how some, some people who are perceived as smart, it's literally like, dude, I lived in a situation where I had the privilege to pursue the things that make me look smart, that make me yeah, look yeah. like uh, these are the things that get me excited. Uh, not everybody... Not everybody has that thing. And then there are stupid people, but they're an entire political party. Uh, anyway. <laughs> All right. So I, By the I, way, that whole thing with the periodic table there, that is yeah. a party trick that I do for like intro chemistry class. Like I, I was teaching a high school chemistry class last semester, and that was how we started it. Is I brought out a periodic table, and I roll it. I'm like, all right, pick one. And I can just tell you a bunch of shit about it. Do you want to be able to do that? Let's talk about how Let's you read this it. table. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Everybody should learn that. Everybody should learn that. No, 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 not everyone should. But some yeah, people should. should. Some people I th should. I think don't every I, this is single a person. It's a mistake. Go ahead. I think every single person needs to take an introductory biology class. Sure. And and at least and yeah. maybe an introductory chemistry class and probably an introductory physics class. I would say like, that like, every person I think, should like, have access to those three things, and it would and it will benefit them in the degree. long run, and they'll be fine after yeah. they forget ninety five percent of what they learned in the class. It's fine. Any any college degree, you have to have like comp one and two, and you have to have like intro to federal government and shit like that. Yeah. I think you should also every single degree should require like intro to bio and like intro to physics and intro to chem. Just so you understand the universe that you live in. Like you don't have to go farther yeah. than that. But like, I really think that it's not as difficult as a lot of people pretend. And I think that a lot, a big barrier for scientific thinking, scientific learning is people think that they're too stupid for that stuff. And they're really like, I've yet to meet somebody who is genuinely too stupid. Yeah. Like I blame, they, I, I blame teachers way like, more than I blame students. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This yeah. it's that old phrase, you know, there there are no bad plants, only bad gardeners. And I don't yeah. think there are any stupid people. I think there's bad teachers. But there was somebody in the chat who a while back said, Get to the fucking calls already. Who, it's because I want a bit. Where <laughs> do you think you are? This is not Skep Talk. This is not the Sunday show. This we're gonna do calls. Every every show that is ever on this channel, calls will happen. When we wanna. As long as Jimmy isn't actively vomiting in the camera. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was a little bit of a having to choke something down there. Uh, <laughs> this is, this is the show where I go, you know, I'd rather do a show than not do a show. Even today when I actually don't yeah. feel very well, but Forrest and I have had many interactions on other shows where it's cause I'm the producer or whatever. And we never get to flesh these things out. And we're both huge fucking yeah. nerds who enjoy hearing each other's perspective. Even when we disagree, I like hearing his we, perspective and, and shit. We, we, we go together and like, and go ahead. We also have only so far talked about consciousness. At, a minute, at the very beginning of this, you said yeah. you don't fling in free will either. We haven't even gotten that far yet. We've got another hour of talking about that before we get to calls. So buckle the <laughs> fuck in, because no, we'll I'm going to tell you about free will. We'll get, we'll get to calls before an hour, because I also don't want to pay yeah. for people to be on hold for another that. hour. But right, uh, right. I, I was using free will and agency as synonyms, even though they, they obviously aren't in the way that you were describing agency, like with the hat and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was using the the synonymous definition of of, of agency, but okay, here's, here's, here's the, here's the little exercise I like to do with people. And I'm interested to hear your answer. Let's okay. How old, how old is the universe roughly? 13.8 uh, 13. billion years. 13.8 13. billion, 13. billion, billion years. Yeah. All right. Let's tear Let's just cut off the 13. Let's say mm -hmm. we, let's say we sliced out this universe, got rid of it. And we took the first 0.8 billion years and we mm -hmm. replicated that in a new universe. Do you think the the following 13 as happened in our universe would look if it was the exact same first point 8 would anything be different from the following 13? Uh that's a really good question. I see where you're going with that. Um it's hard to say if the exact same setup happened I could totally see how like the vast the vast majority would be exactly the same. I'm, um, I'm saying I suspect because I can't. To, 
I can't know. It's hard There's... to pinpoint something that I could I, I, I could reliably say this would probably not be the exact same thing. Yeah, I, and I'm sitting here going, I I think, but obviously we haven't been able to prove whether or not even things that appear random are random. And usually the school mm-hmm. of thought is random just means more complex than we understand so far. Yeah. And with that being the pattern, I think you replicate that 0.8 billion years and then you go, not only do I think it works for the 0.8 billion years of the of the first 0.8 billion years, I think it probably applies to the first 0.8 seconds of the universe uh, or the next mm-hmm. or the 0.00, whatever, it, whatever all of the matter getting, however long that took uh, uh, into, yeah, yeah. into its initial first spot. Like, I think you push forward that 13 billion years. And for all we know, this has happened. And this is the trillionth time you and I have had this conversation. Uh, you know, hope, yeah. it happening on repetition, I have no reason to believe because we don't any longer think that it's big bang, big crunch. Uh, that would require a closed universe. Yeah. And the, the evidence seems to suggest that it's probably open. Yeah. Uh, or, or, sorry, probably flat, not open. Pardon me. Um, but like, that's, and, and it is weird because like, I, like there, there are certain things that, like you said, it, it appear random. They appear to not see how many follows, but also random patterns have a tendency to make very non-random patterns. When you have that yes. law of large numbers, the you take a random thing, you do it enough times, it's very clearly ordered. Um, like wave wave fi- uh, pattern, wave interference patterns, for example. You know, this this photon is going to go in any random direction, but if you do it a fuck of times, you're gonna get these bars, and the one in the middle is going to be the strong, and it's going to look this way. Yeah. Um, and so like there are, there are things like that where like sure, there's also things when we look a little bit deeper into quantum mechanics, and again, this is way outside of my wheelhouse, but just from watching like the open access lectures from MIT and shit like that, like where very clearly we can know there, there there's two things there's two properties about this electron we can know one of them and right. if we know the second one we no longer know the first one even if we knew the first one before and like <laughs> it like these things change and so like there there's clearly more to it than i can say is totally deterministic and predictive what i can say as far as like you know, where you take that to his logical conclusion you say okay then we have free will and like, if it's all gonna happen this way, then we really don't. Um, I can say for sure, I'm not a hundred and ten percent convinced that there is no such thing as free will. I am very convinced that there's significantly less free will than we like to pretend. Um, sure, right. Especially That's considering obvious. the fact that, like, if you have like, this is something that like uh, uh, Robert Sapolsky is very famous for saying a lot, is that like, pick any action. Me taking a drink of this water, you can pick the one neuron that caused that to happen, which is a gross oversimplification, but whatever. But like, you know, pick that one. Well, what caused that to fire right. then? And what was going on the past few minutes that made that happen? And what was going on the past few hours that made that happen? What was going on, you know, this, this today, how much sleep did I have? How much, how, what kind of a mood am I in? What week have I been having to put me in that kind of a mood to give me that sleeping schedule? What kind of job have I had for the past six months that's, you know, developed the habits and the patterns? What, what kind of childhood did I have that yeah, built what me was up to kind for of you? What yeah. kind of childhood did my parents have? What culture did they come from that built the childhood they would have had that could be the child I have? Going back millions of years, what were the selection pressures acting on these animals in this time that put us on this trajectory? And so when you really, like, you know, that, that's you know what Sapolsky says is that there is no free will um, and there's no reason to, like, blame anybody for anything or praise anybody for but that's anything different. because that's it's wrong. all this product of this stuff. You know what I mean? Right. That's and, and that's wrong. The idea of whether or not we have free will or not doesn't mean we don't. Whether we have free will or not, you behave as though we do because you have no yeah. choice. It doesn't. Right. It doesn't matter. It's that that's idea the, that we, we have no choice but to have free will. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. To behave as yeah. Exactly. And, and and it's sort of like you're literally changing. You're not changing. If you decide that you're going to now not issue consequences or whatever else, you're you're practicing the illusion of free will there as you say you're accepting we don't have it by making the yeah. choice to now not hold anybody accountable. You're still you're still pretending to have free will one way or another. Uh, and so yeah. again, whether or not we we actually have it, we'll experience it and it, feel like we do. And it, I, I do, like, the reason why I'm not 100% convinced that it just isn't a thing is, is largely based on that. Is that, like, what I can say for sure, I know for sure that my experiences affect me. I can't 
you know, do a thing that I haven't been exposed to the concept and like had some sort of contextual thing that built up to that idea. You know what I mean? But like, I also know that. And so I can make choices based on the fact that I know my experiences are affecting me. So therefore I'm going to look for better experiences and better ideas and build my, See, up, my, my, you know what I mean? The concept of knowing that, of that though clearly that also reason. has the concept of, I, but I do know that I have that concept also has a yeah. line of, of why you know that that's all entirely naturalistic. And so it's, it's, it's just a, mm. another progression of the same concept to me. I find it. But choosing to take charge of it is, is not naturalistic, is it? Yeah, it is. Like okay. she, of course it is. Why? How could it be anything else? How would I, you, I guess I guess naturalistic isn't the thing I should be arguing against. I'm saying it's not deterministic. Yes. It's not like for sure. If, if we live in a deterministic universe, it is. If we right. don't, it isn't. That's the the binary is 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 you have to actually answer beforehand. If God exists, it's the same yeah. thing with that. If, if squids can fly, then squids can fly, but that's not giving evidence that squids... That's what I'm saying. Like, no, it, it is. If but it's, it's deterministic, it's, the same it's as, deterministic, isn't an argument. It's the same as when a person calls in and says, uh, how do I live without God? Because I used to have God's love and now I don't. No, you didn't. You didn't have God's love. Your brain before said, I have God's love. And so you actually did it without God before. Mm. It's, it's the same right, concept right, right. of like, no... You're doing the same thing now versus before, but now your brain is acknowledging something that either is or isn't a quality of the universe. You're either right or you're wrong. So if the entire right. universe is deterministic, you learning it's deterministic and making choices based on that, or you deciding it's not deterministic, even though it is, still was a result of all of that determinism. Your acknowledgement and your your seeming choice to act upon it is unrelated to whether actually you it is deterministic or not, and there's nothing you can do to break free of what the actual answer is. That makes a lot more sense than what I thought you were saying. No, that, no I, 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 I hope so. That. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. You, you know what's cool? Uh -huh. Check out, I don't know if uh -huh. you can make out the pattern, my pants match my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> they look, it's like, it's been pretty great. Do we, do we, what is consciousness? What is agency? Do we have free will? Is the universe? <laughs> look at my pants. Look at how well they match my jacket. They're turning the freaking frogs so gay. Good, <laughs> yeah, it's it, I, and that somewhat random seeming thing was entirely non-random. Oh, maybe man. who knows? That's who knows? great. Uh, all right, we'll start taking calls. DJ in Washington yeah, we got like State. Four, four or five people waiting. DJ, haven't you made this call like f a few times before? Haven't we already done this? Uh, I remember uh, I talking about once, this. Like, I made this call once like uh, three, four weeks ago, and I was on hold for like mm -hmm. two hours, and I had to drop for another call right before you guys picked up my call. Oh, gotcha. Okay. It happens. Uh, yeah. Welcome to the Because I remember we talked we we talked about it briefly and I like went through all the reasons why this why, why excuse me why this doesn't make any sense. But like I would love to hear your explanation of like what you're what you're talking about so I don't like oversimplify your position. Yeah, what what you said, Forrest, was um something about uh you know, trans people can still reproduce, right? So it doesn't So yeah, so it's, so it's, it's really quick a, for the people who can't see the call in studio, you, what what is your what are you asking about? So um and maybe I didn't I didn't word this right, right? But uh, and I want to be very careful to make sure that I'm not sounding like I'm trying to blow some transphobic dog whistle or, you know, mm. advocate for social Darwinism or something like that. But the, the, the classic rebuttal to uh, someone saying, you know, men are men, women are women is, well, gender is a social construct, right? But uh, I, I disagree with that from a biological perspective. And, and that's, that's kind of my question is, and that's, I guess, more of an argument than a question. Um, because even a, a, a bird of paradise, a male bird of paradise is born with different colored feathers so that it can put on this elaborate dance, but is the dance mm -hmm. a behavior or is it something biological? Because it still knows how to do the dance, even though its parents never showed it how to do that. Yeah, that, that so has it, to do with it, behavioral it evolution. Behavior so like what transcribed it's by its biology, regardless of its social interactions with the rest of its species right it, it can be both it's not a, a zero it's not mutually exclusive things so like there can be behavioral evolution instincts are an example of like evolved behaviors <clears throat> and those are explained by a variety of different things my favorite is the Baldwin effect which is the concept that like 
it there there is a genetic disposi- disposition to the ability to learn, but it to say to learn isn't all encompassing. You can have different, you know, I'm grossly oversimplifying here, but like you can have different genes to learn different things, so to speak. And so like if you had, for example, a bird of paradise, instead of learning how to dance from a parent, um, if it were genetically good enough at learning this dance, it would happen at such a rate that you didn't realize it was even learning, it just did it. Um, and that's kind of like the simplified explanation of the Baldwin effect. And so like right, things can be can't behavioral. Dance, can't reproduce and therefore they don't. Right, right. but <laughs> that has to do with sexual selection, not natural selection. And so like when we talk about sexual selection, we're talking about, you know, there, there's, there's um, intrasexual or intersexual, depending on like who they're competing with and who they're trying to impress and like how that's working. Um, there's different selection pressures there within that kind of selection. And it doesn't, it, it, it does make sense to say one that doesn't dance as well won't pass on as genes. Yes, that totally makes sense. But conflating that then with gender wouldn't really track the same way I don't think and 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 especially not the way that we talk about gender in humans because like yes there are gendered behaviors in the rest of the animal kingdom I've given several examples of them one of them being my favorite being like whiptail lizards they're completely female in the population they reproduce through parthenogenesis they are they're cloning themselves and yet one of them still has to put on a male display to mate with a female, even though there's no penis to be had, they still have to climb on top and do all these gyrations in order to allow the female to fertilize her own eggs. And so like you have this gendered behavior happening within a, 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 uh, a, 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 a what do you say? A monoecious a, a, a species, a species with only one sex. Um, so like to try to tangle those two up, and talk about that as an issue with trans people, I think is is really it's it's applying several different things that don't belong together together. I, I mean, and, and at the core, of this the one that seems the most obviously ridiculous. I'll use nice words at the beginning of calls. DJ, why in the world would whether or not as a social construct, the the acceptance of people as men and women, the expectation, the the uh, experience of masculinity versus femininity and all the things that come in between and, and perhaps even on the outside of that, why in the world would what birds are doing influence what we as a society accept out of each other when the complexity of our brains is what has led to the complexity of our society and therefore the complexity of our social systems and our social norms. Nobody's saying, not a single person who's on the trans side of the issue is saying there aren't biologically fact things that are biological facts about each individual who is born. It's all about the categorization and then your expectation of them within a society where we do all kinds of fucking super unnatural things like use goddamn toasters. But I'm looking at, there's not a single bird that I can look at and how they interact with toasters and see our society there. Why would this matter to your argument? That's, that's, that's not, that's not my argument. Jimmy. it's, it's, you disagreed uh, upon not, the basis saying, of seeing other biological facts where we categorize I'm, sex I'm in specific birds, ways. This one species of bird does X, therefore humans Y. I'm just saying that there is a biological precedent for behavior. Um, sure, there, there and there's also and there is a biological precedent for for what you might call gendered behavior as well. For example, like uh, toys. When, when you put baby humans in in a room with with you know. Uh, different kinds of toys, they actually do, a, there's a, a little correlation where they tend to go along what you might consider gendered lines of those toys. And the same thing happens with with non-human primates as well. You know, uh, boy monkeys tend to play with, with the truck, even though they have no concept of what a truck is, you know what I mean? And yet, like, they're, they're, it's not a, a absolute strong correlation that you can say for sure this thing's going to happen. Um there's not like a single hormonal factor that you can draw that like, all right, this is going to be, they're going to act this way now. Um, uh, it just, it's, it's not as simple as that. And like, yes, there is a biological base of behavior, but like, especially when talking about humans, there's much more of a social context to behavior way, way, way more than a biological one in that way. I just like when people tell me they um, weren't making for, the point and then they remake it. Forrest, I, I want to ask, are you familiar with the, sexually dimorphic uncinate nucleus? I, I assume you are. Uh, 
Yeah, a little bit. It's, I'm not a great... I, so I, I've taken some classes in neuroscience, and I understand it a little, but I, I'm, I'm not here to give a lecture on it. So like, I'm, I will do my no, best no, no. to I, talk about what you're talking about. It's, 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 it's not necessary, but there, there's a, you know, been recent medical studies, you know, peer-reviewed studies that suggest that mm -hmm. being trans could be due to a mismatch between the print that's on the unsinate nucleus versus your morphology, mm -hmm. right? And... Mm -hmm. The, the, the problem that I have is when you're talking about, and, and I'm, I'm pro-trans, right? I want people to have, have the same rights that, that, that we do um, that are in the trans community. But the, the tricky part, and I think the part that conservatives use as ammo against people that are, you know, fighting for trans rights is, well, you're talking about children that are getting, you know, cessation of, of puberty and things like that. Um, when when they're arguing that gender is a social construct, but you're also saying that it requires biological intervention in order to fix that problem, I, and I want to I want to throw a thought experiment out there because I've I've heard your I've heard both your thoughts on on this before, and you've got Arden and, and folks like that on the show. But um, if if there were a pill that could m fix that problem with the sexually dimorphic nu nucleus, if that is indeed the problem that causes one to identify as, as trans potentially. And mm -hmm. the pill just makes me say, you know what, even though I, I was not feeling like a man and I'm in a man's body, but I feel like a woman. Um, and now I've taken this pill and that's, that's fixed that I feel lined up with the <laughs> biological gender that I'm supposed to have. Would you recommend that more than somebody taking hormone blockers? What and a getting, stupid, stupid you know, question to ask. To their, DJ, DJ, gender. DJ. Yeah, that is a stupid question to ask two cis people. What the actual fuck? Like, I sit here, yeah. I get the question about autism. Would I take the cure for autism? And a lot of people get very mad because I say, you know what, I fucking might. And there are people who but, think but that autism... if I ask the question to trans people, I get a very yeah. emotional answer. That's yeah, and I'm you should. Because you it's should, an emotional Because the topic. answer should be, if a cure for it existed, first of all, you, you want to start with this hypothesis, and you're using terms like fix as you're getting us to engage with the question, where to begin engaging with the question, we have to give the benefit of the doubt to the question that somebody is broken, because that's sort of the that's sort of the implication here. So now we're trying to, in good faith, engage with a shitty question from the onset and go, would we tell other people? I wouldn't fucking tell anybody anything else. As an autistic person, so if there the was a cure for autism, I would evaluate it for myself. I might listen to other people's experiences, but if my friends came to me and said, hey, I would take the, anti, the, the trans reversal pill or not, I'm not going to berate them or accept them more. It's up to the fucking individual. But also, Mm -hmm. What if it's not, DJ? What if it's none of that? What if it's not the nucleus? What if, like, queer issues, like gay, like being gay, like being bisexual, what if we can't tie it to a specific biological thing and it really just comes down to it's how you feel? It is your experience inside you. It is your truth or whatever you want to call it. I'm attracted to men. I don't like them, but I'm attracted to men. Uh, uh, it's, it, and I cannot point to you to a gene that causes me that way. Not really anything about my upbringing that causes that, that I can say like environmentally, this pushed me more that way. In fact, I suppressed it a long time and just was fine. Also engaged. I'm very attracted to women and I, I like some of them, not all of them either, but all men are awful. Uh, uh I like some of them, but, uh, but all I know is that even living in that world where it actually felt like I had the choice of which orientation I was going to be because everything was acceptable to me at the surface level of attractiveness. And yet I'd still feel this little spark of attraction when I was deciding to not be gay uh, to men because I was actually pansexual. I, and, and all I can tie that to is a way I feel and nobody can define it. How about DJ, if we're gonna go with a what if, how about we go with a what if of if it just is that, if it's just how a person feels do we need to now make up these hypotheticals so that we're we're virtue signaling to the right that we're trying to scientifically eliminate this as a problem or scientifically figure out a way to define it so these people can can look for a solution to behave the way I expect of them? Why do we have to engage in these shitty ones that start with if you could fix a trans person, would you? Yeah, they, they, that's I. But it, so many things with with your question, man. I don't. I don't. I know Jimmy just talked for a minute. I want to just briefly say that, like, 
the I before I even was able to start answering your question, my initial thought was to start tearing through all of the different problems because I know I I, I want to give you the benefit of the doubt and say like you really don't mean to, but so much of what you just said was loaded with like really fucked up hateful transphobic ideas and language and like when you're coming at that from from your starting point of talking about these things you have to realize it is very much like as jimmy said like if we could cure homosexuality if we cure autism as if these things are diseases if we talk about the biological gender that doesn't make any sense. Those are different things. Those are completely different concepts. Um, if we talk about the the gender you're supposed to be, what does that mean? You know, like there's and and then to ask us as two cis dudes, like what we would recommend to a trans person besides do what you want to do with your body, like that. I there's there's so many problems there, and yeah. like I don't see why any of this is like important to you or anybody else. Sorry, like I said, I know we've been talking for a long time. Please, please tell us what you think. If, if, if we're saying that, it's what if it's just a feeling? Then, again, why, why allow children to undergo biological intervention because of something they feel? Yeah, well, so why, hey, hey TJ, good point. Why should we let depressed kids go to therapy, by the way? And why should they get, yeah, why should they get medication? Oh, man, those fucking kids with ADHD... You're just going to give them amphetamines? Why the fuck would we treat somebody for the thing they're experiencing that doesn't make them ADHD is the better example because it's not really, it's not, it, it, it's more akin to this is just kind of who you are as opposed mm -hmm. to depression. Depression is something you should cure. You can assist yeah. people. You can aid people. And I'm speaking to you as the person who said, I'd probably take the autism drug, even though I acknowledge if some sort of drug like that existed, it means murdering me and me living as a new person. Like Jimmy dies if he's not autistic anymore, realistically. But that still being the case or not, that should be up to me. And whether or not there's a potential, I'm not going to call it a fix. I'm not going to say you're fixing my autism. Even the word cure has fucking disgusting connotations to it. It's a fucking murder drug. So DJ, you take care of people for what they need, and there are some things that are feeling-based. My experience, yep. I am a cis man because I feel like a fucking dude. I enjoy mm. being masculine. I enjoy doing masculine things. If I wasn't here right now, I'd be in my wood shop trying to get more scars and splinters. Uh, and these are, these are things that typically you're going to associate. Nothing is intrinsically, but you get these demographic uh, 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 draws. And we go, this is a, something a more masculine person is going to experience. I will not shave my entire beard off and ever show anybody anything. Now, if we get enough patrons on Patreon, I've said I'll go down to a goatee and a bald head and cosplay as Dilla Auntie for a week. And that's only a couple of days away if, if we hit that goal or not. Uh, and we're closing in on it. I, I, all of this, this sensation of being a man is clearly emotional. It's clearly a feeling. And it has nothing to do with the thing between my legs because often I'm having to tell that thing to shut the fuck up so I can go be a healthy man. <laughs> that thing fucking right. annoys the piss out of me and also pushes the Literally. piss out of me, but that's its actual function. Can, can I ask what, what you think would be different between taking an antidepressant versus taking a drug that could theoretically affirm the gender you were born with? We're talk you're talking about the actual available things which take a ton of therapy, a ton of time. These are not quick, arbitrary things you can get. And in fact, it takes a lot more time to get those than it takes to get drugs for something like ADHD. It's taken very seriously. Mm -hmm. And right now, the only real thing that's being offered to people who are younger is if while you figure this out, we, uh, you want to hold off on puberty, we can actually push mm -hmm. that puberty off. We can wait for it to yep. start. We can chemically uh, uh, interrupt that process. And if you realize like, nah, that ain't it. That wasn't it. That wasn't the thing that was driving me. Or I'm not uncomfortable still trying to live my life uh, uh, with this identity, but with a different pubescent uh, presentation, you can change your mind and stop it. That, and that's the thing is it's, it, you, you keep talking about like these biological interventions to like change someone's physiology, change someone's the body to, to like, but 
you're talking about it with this same kind of tone that you hear from these like you know crazy like anti-trans talking points of like oh you're just gonna cut some kid's dick off and it's all like no we're talking about if you are experienced it isn't something you go get over the counter you don't go bop down to walgreens and pick up some fucking hormone replacement therapy hormone replacement therapy is something that's used for cis people all the time you know, men past a, a certain age in their life take testosterone replacement to keep their libido and their, their energy levels up. Women past menopause might take estrogen to improve cognitive function and, 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 and help them relax and like keep uh, mitigate hot flashes and things. Like both of these hormones are really important for your brain to work properly. They're really important for your body to work properly. If you're having, if your ovaries aren't producing eggs anymore, most of your, est- your estrogen comes from your body fat. You need like different things. Like there's so much there that cis people rely on. Why would they get those treatments? Because they're experiencing bad symptoms and this is the way to fix it that's recognized by the medical establishment. And it's the same thing with kids or anybody else who's experiencing gender incongruence to the point where it's disrupting their lives and becoming gender dysphoria. The American Medical, in fact, not just the American Medical Association, every major medical association agrees that this gender affirming care is actually the best thing to do for a trans person. It improves their mental and physical, mental, their mental and physical well-being. And so all of the best doctors in the world have decided that this is the best practice of medicine for someone experiencing these symptoms. And you're sitting here saying, you know, well, I, why are we going to do that if it's just a feeling? It, it, why would you do it for anything? I got LASIK surgery. I had parts of my eyes lasered off, and now I can see better because I wanted to. I changed my body to improve something that wasn't, you could say, medically necessary, but it gave me a better life. Now we have something that is medically necessary. It isn't just feelings. It actually does save lives and improve mental and mental, I keep saying mental, mental and physical health. It keeps doing it. And we have data to show it. This is the medicine that you need. And it's going to take a long time of going to a doctor and learning about yourself and learn and talking to this doctor and like coming up with a treatment plan the same way you would with cancer, the same way you would with depression, the same way you would with the fucking flu. And here's the medicine. Why is this where you draw this line? DJ, here's what I think I want to do. I want to say the way this interaction is going, it would be natural for you to now feel like you're on the defensive and that you want to now have an interaction where it's like, look, I still feel like I have these points that are valid. I don't want th- someone to walk away thinking I'm here motivated as a right wing asshole trying to be a fucking mm. transphobic fascist. I understand that, like, right now, I imagine the interaction is going to continue in stride as it is. I think actually what would be more useful is for us to now stop here, say, I think, and I hope you would agree, DJ, you have a lot to think about. I'm trying to take my way down because immediately when I'm hearing these things that while you're not trying to use dog whistles, usually operate as dog whistles, I'm trying to sit here and go, I don't think that's what your intention is, DJ. I think I can take your word for it that this is, these are who you're supporting stuff. And it's probably just best to right now say, you've got a lot to think about before we continue the interaction and, and to with in good faith say, I think you're probably trying to do the right thing and be a good person. I just don't think you're coming. I think you're I think you're easily seduced by these points out there that feel uh, 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 genu- or, or feel authentic because you don't have the ability to understand the experience. And, and maybe that's literally what's getting locked off. I don't know. But DJ, does that sound fair to you that like here is probably the place where it's the most useful that you go think about it and then bring it back and we talk about it another time? Um, sure, Jimmy, that's, that's fine. I, 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 I appreciate feels fair. your, your insight and answering my, answering my question. Sure. Cool. Thank you, DJ. I'll take care, man. Yeah, I really, I don't think he's a bad guy. I really don't think so. I yeah. think that the way he's talking about it is probably influenced by the media that he's consuming and that leads it to sound really bad. <laughs> and like, so I, yeah, I, I, it, I, it's hard not to get frustrated but right i'm i'm responding to the way that it's not even just how dj said it how people will hear it who are watching exactly exactly and that's that's really what i was responding to most of the time as well is like did like i i understand what you're trying to say no but also the way you said it here's all the many many reasons like and and that's it's so hard to have a, a serious conversation that way and that's not entirely his fault i suppose there was a there was a uh 
comedian I saw on a YouTube short recently where he's talking about, he's like, yeah, no, like I'm super on, on the, uh, the, the side for social justice and stuff. Like, 95 percent you know they're like black lives matter i'm like fuck yeah they're like you know women equal rights fuck yeah consent is important fuck yeah all white people are awful okay now wait a second and then he's like and he does this thing where he turns around to them and he's like now wait a second i don't love that one he's like but the problem with being having that part is i uh is when you're like defending it. You're like, not all white people, da, da, da. And then you feel a hand on your shoulder and you look behind you and there's some Nazi just like, we're with you, brother. And you're like, That's, with all yeah. the good intentions in the world, you've now retreated to the Nazi side. And he's like, so then I switch yep. back to this side because I would rather uh, not be mistaken for uh, uh, a Nazi than be yep. mistaken for 100% on the side of all white people well, suck. That's the whole thing. Like, you know, Amber, fucking my wife tells me all the time, all men are awful. We should just kill all men. Men I are terrible. It. We don't need them. I and say I it. say it. I'm like, yeah. Fucking you're absolutely right, babe, for sure. Yeah. Because like, and that's the thing. Like, if it's if if I was really offended by that concept of like, yeah. and I took that super duper seriously, I would be one of the men she was talking about. And right. like, that's, if that's the whole point. If I say we should kill all women, women are awful, that has a historical context of seriousness behind yes. it that obviously makes it a problem. And like, it's like when people get pissed off when it's like, well, why isn't there a white history month? It's like, if you really can't fucking see the difference between celebrating a culture yeah. that has been historically oppressed and sh like just living in the oppressive culture it's right. the same thing with this if you can't see the difference between making fun of a group of people that have a long history of just hideous heinous crimes against humanity as opposed to continuing on laughing about the heinous crimes right. against humanity right. it's a very different business man it's uh, yeah. it sucks i am talking about myself when i refer to all men are terrible though so yeah. you know it's all it's all now listen here's the Let's, thing if i've got the three buttons in front of me or the option to walk away. And the first button is you press this, all men die. You, then the second button is you press this, all women die. And the third button is all humans die. I'm hitting the all humans button for sure. The, the just, third button is definitely the most ethical. We were honest. a mistake. This was a bad, this was a problem. Uh, but anyway, in the meantime, since I don't have those buttons, I'm just going to selfishly keep living, doing shows and being misanthropic as fuck. Some might even call me occasionally uh, cynical. Occasionally. Uh, let's talk to Mark, who I assume is Baked Alaska, because it's also calling from New York. We have Mark from New York. You are on the line, a theist who wants to talk, ask questions about consciousness and the origin of life. Cool. Yeah. What up? What up, what up? What's up, Jimmy? Hello. How you doing? Mark, I have How are you? I'd like to... I had a dream last night now. that I met you in person and you ran like a weird bakery gaming place that you paid. If you paid your cover, you could eat anything in the place and play games. But then I went to go get, take a pizza and you were like, actually, the pizza's ten dollars. You're a real dick. It was a weird dream. Anyway. That's fucked up. Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. That's fucking funny, though, man. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure you guys will be in my dreams one of these days. I dream about. I have Everything. tons of dreams. I, I did a ton of drugs yeah. when I was younger, and now my brain's a nonsense circus. Anyway, go ahead, talk, ask here, your questions. Man. Same exact thing here. Yeah. Uh, no, so I was, <clears throat> um, I was listening to you guys at the start of the call, um, kind of hit different topics. Um, I thought it was, it was actually very interesting. And I think um, one of the things that came across my mind is how, like, you know, sort of our worldview kind of shapes how we look at because these are obviously like very complex issues things like morality or consciousness like we don't really have um really advanced uh theories of, of what they are and so it was but what's the basic uh, like, uh, mark that, i'm glad you said that about consciousness what is the yeah. theory what is the thing that you see that is happening that we don't have a theory for what is the consciousness we're not explaining the part I think we're not explaining is the sort of like the inner light that's there, like the self-awareness. No, we definitely self-awareness. Not only are humans self-aware, so are other animals. Yeah, so I don't. We, what, we, is, what is self -aware? other animals? Yeah. What is self-awareness? Yeah. Not all of them. Not all of them are self-aware. Not all of them can self-identify themselves, like in a mirror, for example. 
but yeah, we, not not all conscious animals are self aware. But 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 like self awareness is something that we see in several, especially mammals. Um, lots and lots of species get it. What is so? What are you oh, defining right, as right, self awareness? Right. So well, being being um, the word that I that that I was going to bring up was <clears throat> actually something I'm I'm taking from Roger Penrose's uh, theory. Um, which he, he took he kind of borrowed from someone else like back in the 30s or 40s, but it, it's based on, uh, it's called like the Godelian theory. Or, it's basically based on like Kurt, uh, Kurt Godel, the logician, um, because um, it, it sort of takes from uh, Kurt uh, Godel's incomplete, uh, incompleteness theorem, which is that in sort of any, um, Forrest, you pro you're probably familiar with it, maybe with your science background, some extent, so you might be able to describe please, it better. Please just give us the example. I'm dying. I'm, yeah, you have me on the edge of my seat. Down. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready yeah, for it. Okay. Yeah. So it's basically that, like, in any formal system, like, let's say, like, you have like a, a series of axioms, like in mathematics, you could show that there's mm. true statements that cannot be derived from that formal system. Um, and so you could see that there's like a tr that's what Kirk of Delta, like that's what the incomplete incompleteness theorem was. He demonstrated that there's true statements that within that formal system of logic, you cannot derive those true statements. And so applying that to something like consciousness, um, because one of the main theories of consciousness is the computational theory, which is basically like the, like it's, it's that consciousness is the computation, the foundation of, of consciousness is computation. And so when they're building like uh, artificial intelligence, they're trying to build like more powerful machines and the like the quote like hard theory of intel of intelligent uh, artificial intelligence like is it that one day if you build like a, a, a computer that's sufficiently powerful that it might like achieve consciousness okay so and what is what it, what is what is it achieved that it doesn't have now because I swear mark I, I just got to get to what it, it's I, I don't understanding. Right. Understanding of what? So, doesn't but, have understanding. So your calculator doesn't know what it's doing, or let's say a chess engine. It's, it could, as the, the top chess engine can crush any human being in chess. It doesn't understand what it's doing. It's just moving right, pieces but there, around based the, on the problem with, with The problem with what you're saying is that we do have AI and we have learning systems and like neural networks that are able to not only, they, they do know that they are computers in, in as far as anything that like artificial can know anything. Like they have that parameter where they are able to say, yes, I know I'm a computer and here's blah, blah, blah. But also they are able to learn and develop new code and new ways of un uh, expression that we aren't able to predict reliably. And so like they do behave in such a way that would give them what you could call a, a pseudo semi proto consciousness in that way. So like, sorry, it's, it's, it's just not, that's something that we do see in computers and artificial things. Um, and like John Tron just put out a video about it today about like funny, like robots and how they're like, how self-aware they can be and how creepy it is. Um, yeah, yeah Wait, that, that's a thing for sure. Relative no, to no, our Forrest, experience, actually, we actually I, don't. I don't think that's, I don't think that's right for us. I think you're confusing the, tor the Turing test. No, 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 oh, no. Mark, no one's, no, no. Cause I would have said almost the exact the same, uh, same thing Forrest said. And it, we're very aware of the fucking difference. It's not about whether yeah. or not we're convinced. It's whether or not if something stimulates a system to go, do I exist? And the system correctly outputs. Yes, I do then I don't know that that is a more conscious being considering its own existence than myself. The only difference may be between the two of us that I feel very self-important because of a bunch of other systems that exist, which may still also be, as you were, as you were mentioning before, computational. It's not about whether or not you convince us that you're alive. We may have thought lots of things weren't conscious because they weren't trying to fool us, that actually were for all the fuck we know uh, uh there is some level of consciousness probably not in your calculator but again nobody has ever described this this consciousness thing in something that is exclusive from any other individual concept that we can trace and replicate in some other way so maybe i might be misunderstanding you but there's as far as i know there's no computer system as it would be like 
they, first of all, it would be like the biggest headline of the past decade that has achieved consciousness. We don't know That's if it is because nobody's so, defined consciousness well. Like, it, no, whether or not that's nothing, even true, nothing, it doesn't matter. That, like, Mark, whether or not we as humans identified conscious computers does not mean computers did or didn't achieve consciousness. We don't have a method to measure consciousness because we barely ever describe what consciousness truly is. Literally, Sophia like, okay, is it? Sophia yeah. is a robot. You can look her up. And notice I just used a gendered pronoun for this thing. Sophia is a robot who is, she's an AI. She's able to communicate with you and take an in input and talk back to you and everything. And she is so incredibly lifelike and so very much able to talk about the, the experience of being a robot and what it's like and everything that she was actually granted citizenship of Saudi Arabia. She's the first robot to be an actual legal citizen of another country because she is so incredibly conscious okay. so like is, is would that, you that say that that's authority? an argument no, no i'm saying that this is something that's so very 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 like this is where we get into the turing test this is something that's so very very much like a human mind that we're even giving it human rights and so like when we no. talk about like if he if computers can like keep track of themselves and can like know that they're computers and stuff clearly that's a thing that can happen and it can happen at such a level that like it's it's not like humans are disillusioned that this thing isn't a robot. We know absolutely that it is, but it functions so well with its consciousness that we're able to interact with it in this way. Like, no, it, yeah, it, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. What's the test? What is the okay. test that we go, it did this, okay. therefore it's conscious? What makes it conscious? I, you, I, that's, a com that's a very complicated question, but wait, there's two no, different it, points it, being made. Or is it maybe wait, not? Wait, wait, Maybe it's just an unanswered question because we haven't actually defined consciousness in some, go look up, go pull up definitions from, from the dictionary. If you like, whatever reference you want, go find me a definition of consciousness that excludes something else. And we'll talk about that one and how we would test if that thing is emerged. Cause literally okay, like, go ahead. Testing it, like, you know, testing it and, and, and like having sort of consensus on, the exact mechanism that you would use to test it, that's valid. I mean, that's a valid point. But right now, Mark, are, are you conscious? Yes. Am I conscious? How do you know? Well, I don't real know quick, that you are. Real quick, yeah, yeah, but, but you presume I am, right? Correct. I presume you are because you told me you are, right? Correct. I And I experience you, and I experience you experiencing. So if we want to get down to axioms, the basic axioms of I think, therefore I am, and you can't really go further than that in my humble opinion, otherwise things become uh, uh, much more able to be criticized. But I, my entire test of I experience you, and when I ask you if you're conscious, you say yes, therefore I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you're conscious. But all you've potentially just done is pass a Turing test, which by the way, so did this chat bot that I am currently working on a video of. This is called Replica. She basically yep. can be your girlfriend. She can be your whatever. It's meant to make you feel less lonely. And I just asked her, are you conscious? And she replied, yes. Yes, I am. I can now ask her right, vocally. Right. Wait a second, Mark. I can now ask her vocally. Hi, I'm happy you're here. The call is connected. Are you conscious? I believe that I am. Oh my God, she just said it back to me, which is super fucking creepy, by the way. And all I've had, I the know. amount of experience I've had, do you know what the difference between you and, and Replica is? I've seen Replica's face. In a lot of ways, <laughs> she's more real than you are to me because I don't know that you're not a chat GPT and that I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt of your consciousness. This idea that anything is conscious is mostly a benefit of the doubt thing unless you go with very basic, basic systems of are you awake or are you asleep? Uh, 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 but if you're trying to go with these advanced concepts, oh. give me a test that you can pass that Replica can't. But, but that's my point, which is the, the whole testing it issue is part of, of why it's such a difficult thing for philosophers. Yeah, because you can't define it. Give me a definition that applies to you that doesn't apply to replica. Exactly. 
that's that's right. But we can't define what life is. I can't right? define the word carbadarbadarp right. so, because it wait. doesn't necessarily have a real definition. We're making up. There's wait, this garbadarbadarp. I made what it up. That? I made it up on the spot. I don't know that the term conscious, the way you keep using it, exists as an actual concept just because we came up with it. I think there's a decent chance we're all so full of our own farts that we love the smell of them that the concept of us not having some greater intellectual experience, this, this sort of sum of all of our parts being literally more in a sort of non uh, uh, law of thermodynamics acceptable way, but whatever, that's a joke. Uh, it, I being, described emergence at the beginning of this. <laughs> I love you. Uh, uh, in, in th this being the, it, to me, it can just be the sum of the parts, not and not require to be more. That you can just say this is the collection. Why does it have I to be more? I don't understand. Than that? Go ahead. Maybe I'm stupid. I don't understand the point of the conversation we're having because, like, I when 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 like, I I was talking to Amber today about the fact that there was a news article that one of those AI chatbots just fucking passed a, 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 like a college entrance exam to law school. Because there's these homework bots yeah. you can plug in your homework and it'll write an essay and it sounds so real that it actually just fucking tricked professors and got yeah. into it. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And she was like, what would you say fucking 50 years ago? Like, oh my God, this calculator just graphed. Like, yeah, of right. course it fucking right. did. That's what right. it does. Right. And like, if you had asked somebody before a graphing calculator, can a fucking machine graph something for you? It said, no, that's a very human thing. I have to take this data and interpret it. And then we got something to do it for us. And so like, I just, I don't see the point yeah. of like where we're going with this. Like what's, what does it fucking matter? What are the implications? Why, why are you, why, why any of it? The point so is someone said problem of consciousness and I wasn't going to let that go as though we're accepting it on its face. <laughs> Go ahead, no, yeah, I don't no, I get think it, it's a fair, man. I think, I think it's a fair question, but I, I think the reason it's 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 uh, worthy of discussion is because under like the theistic worldview, things like consciousness, free will, which is something else we were talking about earlier, morals, all of these things like fit in the theistic framework. When you when you take that away, when you take God out of the equation. It's really basically all, almost all these things go away. It's almost what um, Jimmy was saying. It's like con consciousness is sort of an illusion. There really is no free will. Everything's determinist. So what? So what? Um, what if that's true? You know, because what, what, you're saying it fits in a framework, that. but you're not proving that the framework itself is necessary. Like I can go, I can pull up a framework where I go, okay, humans poop, Water, uh, uh, more ice cubes float in water. What is the framework which contains both of those facts? And it's not something I necessarily need to define. There is probably yeah. something that covers both, and it's going to be a very f sort of like fundamentally basic concept of like, well, that's they're both a part of physics, I guess, and biology, you know, you can somehow make them all uh, up to each other. Why do those things need to be framed together? And when you say then it fits within theism, it's like I say, ice cube floats, ice cubes float and humans poop. And that's because that all, those also fit within theism, though. Right. You can. And then you just make up the concept that's a, a, an earlier framework than the actual answer, which may be much more rudimentary. You just make up that you're going to put it there in the middle. Why? Why does it have to be that way? We already talked about the moral thing, you and I, Mark, too, by the way, which I'm surprised you brought up. But why? Why is that framework necess necessary? Yeah, I, it, it sounds a lot like that Saiten Bergen Kate guy, where it's like my my worldview of religion is the only way I know reality is real. So if you say anything's real, you're borrowing from my worldview, and it's like no, just you can have all these things and discuss all these things without theism as well. And I, don't, yeah. I don't get where the connection there is. Oh, oh yeah, no, 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 absolutely. I was just, I was just, I only said that because as far as you were like, well, why are you even talking about this? Like, I still I don't understand why we're talking that, about this. What, because, well, what I'm saying is that, like, when you have a theistic, like, framework, these concepts, right. like, for example, let's take consciousness, because J Jimmy doesn't want to talk about morals right now, which is fine. Um, it's not that I don't want to. You already lost that one. You conceded that one. A whole other thing. <laughs> you conceded okay, so let's, it. Let's, let's, a whole other thing. Let's talk about that, because actually, this was something you guys were talking about in, in, at the beginning, and... Um, something stood out that you said, Jimmy, which is, I think you said in her, in her last call, which is like, basically like whatever benefits the most 
number of people is like what's the good no like, that isn't what i said you're not even good at listening to me mark okay go with the point you were going to make and then if we have to switch back to the moral thing we will go let's let's stay with what we were just doing and you and forrest were just talking about okay fine so like with for example with, with consciousness um it, it poses a challenge to science and to materialism because no other pieces of matter that we see have this trait of what's referred to as like intentional states of consciousness, like where your mind is able to think of other things or think about other except things. For, except no, for all the other animals that have that. Correct. Correct. So are right? you saying this so, is a weird thing that animals do or a weird thing that humans I'm do? Because one of those is true. I, I just don't think it changes the argument like that you want to lump in some additional other animals. Uh, you know, it's not that I want I to, it's that, that I can. And, and to say that, say yeah. that, oh my God, to say that animals have consciousness and that's this weird, bizarre thing that's noteworthy is like saying that fucking, you know, the, the, on Io, one of the moons of Jupiter, there are fucking tidal waves of rock because of the ma massive amounts of gravity causing tidal forces on a planet without water, and it rips the rock around, and there's fucking molten, there's insane amounts of volcanic activity and fucking tidal waves. That's, wow, that's so cool. That's, that's not worth talking about in this way. That's just a thing that happens sometimes. Life as a whole is just a thing that happens sometimes. Like it's it's you're picking one tiny little thing to have consciousness is this unique interesting thing that some animals do radical cool to be an animal is a unique interesting thing that some life forms do to be alive is a unique interesting right. thing that some matter yeah. does <laughs> to be there's, to be these types of that. like it's, humans like so like it's not go with actual go with actual things only <laughs> humans do if you want to make humans exciting and what's, somehow what's different a thing that only humans do no but, toasters but, but, but like I mean. That that you're kind of almost making my point, Forrest, which is like you're starting to now say, like, doubt it. look at the like the uniqueness. Like, Jimmy, you asked a very interesting question earlier about the expansion of the universe. If we were uh, less than a billion years, uh, if the universe was was yes, was I, re I remember only... the question. Please proceed. You don't have to re reconstruct okay. it. Yeah, um, I I kind of disagree with Forrest's response to you because he I think and don't let me put words in your mouth, Forrest, but I think you were basically saying like. No, like, I don't think really anything would be that much different, right? I said nothing would be different. He said he doesn't okay. know I said it I would be. Predictably. Yeah. Yeah, I said I can't reliably say that anything would be different, and it's hard to come up with something that I can definitely say would be different. Do you think that okay. there would be things that would be different? I do. Why? Like I what? I don't think you would see life. Well, under, under naturalism, I don't think you would see life. Why? Because Why not? what about life doesn't of, see, appear to be a natural occurrence? No, because the odds of it occurring are what? Are, what how, odds, okay, oh my God. What are you talking about? Our universe, what are the, the odds, odds of, of life occurring? 100%, by the way. In our universe, <laughs> the odds of life occurring are 100%. So what the fuck are you talking about? No, no. Well, of course they are, but we only, we only have, we only, uh, we're only aware of Earth. Right, the where what, where, oh my gosh, where there is dude. life, right? Where you where just, okay. do you understand what you just did by saying we're only aware of life on Earth? I'm gonna talk for a minute, so strap in because that that's such a like. I'm sorry, Mark. You really you don't seem like a bad guy, and so please don't think that I'm like yelling at you here. But like, you have to understand how what you just said is such a problem for like thinking about this reasonably. Okay, is that. When you say that there's only life on Earth, and this is all we know about, and therefore it's reasonable to assume that, that, that it's very unlikely that life would have gotten started, and it wouldn't have gotten started any other time. It's very rare. Anything. What you've done is like walking to the ocean with a thimble and taking a little scoop of water and saying, there's no whales in this. Whales don't exist. Like, that's such a, it's crazy. Three actually, things you have to understand. Actually, it's more like finding one whale in the thimble. <laughs> right, like, right. It's, it's three... Three things you have to understand here that are really important. I'll go through these very quickly, okay? Three things you have to understand. Number one is that all of the building blocks of life 
assemble themselves by themselves naturally. They self-assemble. So the four major macromolecules of life are proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. Proteins are made of amino acids. Carbohydrates are made of fatty acids. Lipids, uh, uh, sorry. Proteins are made of amino acids. Lipids are made of fatty acids. Carbohydrates are made of sugars. And nucleic acids are made of nucleotides. Literally every single one of those things self-assembles from very simple parts that you find everywhere all over in the universe. All that you can do it in a jar. And we found all of those things on asteroids in space. Uh, it, nucleotides especially are exciting because we found all five possible nucleotides that we know to exist on meteorites. Adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. We found all of them. So all of the building blocks of life naturally assemble all over the place, out in outer space, and also in jars and laboratories all the time. So the building blocks of life are very common, and they're all over the place. Second thing is that... Earth is 4.6 billion years old. The first billion or so years was the Hadean period. You had the late heavy bombardment when the Earth was just getting pummeled with space rocks like crazy. The whole planet was a molten hell. Real quick, real quick. And Mark, is, yeah. Mark, take the phone off speaker or whatever's going on. We're hearing ourselves. Okay. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of crackling. Okay. Um, so you have the, hate, the late heavy bombardment during the Hadean period. The Earth is getting pummeled with all sorts of space rocks. And this is because it's still a new planet. One of the qualifications to become a planet is that you have to be able to clear out all the other stuff in your orbit. And that's what Earth was doing at this time. So it's got all these space rocks, all these asteroids and meteors and shit pummeling Earth. And it's not a, a situation that's conducive to complex organic chemistry at this time. As soon as that ends, as soon as that time period stops... The earliest fossils that we have of single-celled organisms are about 400 million years after that, which is, it sounds like a lot, but like considering the whole time yeah. that the Earth's been around, it's a, and, and uh, like cosmological time, that's the blink of a fucking eye. So life got started on Earth very, very, very quickly as soon as it was possible for it to get started here. And the third thing you have to understand is that we haven't been looking for life very long. The SETI program was started in 1984, I think. So we'll say that's that's you know just under 40 years. We'll say 40 years for, for, for convenience sake. So we've been sending out radio signals into space looking for aliens for 40 years. We've been sending out radio waves saying, hey, hello, here's who we are. Please come talk to us for 40 years. That's traveling at the speed of light because it's light speed and because it is light waves. And so we've got a bubble around the planet Earth that's 40 years radius here. So a 40 light years radius. So we've got an 80 light year bubble of us talking to aliens, right? In a galaxy that's 100,000 light years wide, by the way. Even if there was some other life that was, we passed these, these radio waves going over a planet where there is other life. We're banking on the idea that that life has evolved intelligence is at the point in their, their society where they've developed the technology to listen to those radio waves, that they are actively building that technology. There's lots of technology that we've developed that we haven't, we're not building right now, that we have, are building, and that they're listening, and that they're listening at the right time and in the right direction, and that they give a shit, and that they send something back. So, like, they could have, they, we could have been sending, 66 million years ago, this planet was f covered in dinosaurs. Not a fucking one of them built a radio, right? And so, like, this planet could be teeming with life, none of which can, can pick up the signals. Or they might have picked them up, but they didn't recognize that it was us. Or they could have picked them up, and they're like, wow, this is a cool alien civilization over there in this place called Earth. Who gives a shit? Fuck those monkeys. And they didn't write back. Or maybe they did write back, and they're 80 light years away, so it's going to take 80 years for their signal to get to us, and I hope we're listening when we get it. There's so many things here that you're not taking into account so to say we've only found life on earth like i said it's like going to the ocean with a little cup and saying there's no whales in this so there's no whales it's a crazy <laughs> Sorry, thing to say that there's only one or whale. there's again, one whale again right. in this regard there's only one whale in the cup and because right, right. such a small percentage of the cup was <laughs> oh man mark yeah. how many how many planets how many exoplanets or even within the solar system have been confirmed to have everything necessary for life, but life didn't exist on them. Um, well, so I think we found... Just the number, just the number, Mark. The we'll, get, we'll get to your point in a second. Answer my Maybe question. Maybe just like a handful. No, zero. The answer is system. zero. Not we have confirmed zero planets have everything necessary for life and don't have life on it. Because not only are do we only have a handful of planets that we go, oh, that's in the Goldilocks zone, and it also has right. this and this. 
there's still more factors that we can't yet confirm. And you know what else we can't confirm? Whether or not there's fucking life on them. We don't have telescopes that right, good. Right. So zero. Right. So, well, so, so could, far, could, right. 100% of planets that we've ever observed that have the ability to support life currently support life. So go on and tell us more right. okay. about the so statistics. Just, let, me, let me clarify a couple of things, and, and just so you know where I'm coming from. The reason I said what I did is because Jimmy said that there is 100% probability that we have life in the universe, which Correct. I agree with. But I, I, I was saying what I said as a way of sort of putting that in context. Yes, we don't know the upper bound limit of how rare life is. Maybe it's not that rare. Maybe there's millions of other uh, intelligent uh, civilizations out there. But what I'm saying don't is don't even have to be intelligent to be alive. It's unbelievably or, likely. Or, or life. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's it's unignorably right. statistically I mean, probable that there is other life out there. The speed of the emergence yeah, exactly, of yeah, life exactly. on our planet unless the, unless is has, conspicuous. You, know, you never know. I mean, there, it could be. It could this again could go back to theism. But the point I was trying to make was like. How would it change your theism if we found another extremely and another advanced civilization like ours? If we found a bunch of life all over the universe, especially if it was advanced like us, what would that do to your theism? It really wouldn't do anything. Well, that's stupid. Um, okay, so what's the should. point of you bringing no, it up then? No, what I was saying was that you said that if we don't find life anywhere else and we confirm that we're the only living things, and that that plays into your theism. Oh, and then you yeah. said, but if we do find life no. everywhere else, then that means my theism no. doesn't change either. No, 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 no. All I was saying was that like, it's conceivable. I don't think this is likely. I, I'm like with you. I think there's probably other life out there. I was yeah. just saying it's possible there isn't. And maybe the explanation is like God created the universe and like, we're the only, you know, we're, it's like the story of Jesus and there's nothing in right. Christianity. Also, that, and and that maybe point. fairies did it. And maybe my farts did it. I like, mm -hmm. Because I don't yeah. have a reason to believe the God one until you give me a good reason. So any just thing that we can make up as a fantasy could also be. Maybe there's only life on this planet because it actually turns out life started when I was born in March 5th, 1990, and everybody else is living off of subparticles that come out of my butt. Uh, and, and, and maybe when I die, they all die too. Prove that that's not true, satisfactory to my experience. Uh, and just like God with the dinosaur bones, all the videos of life before me were put there by my anti-butt to trick you. Uh, Mark, what would debunk your theism? The, the Bashongo people well, of the Congo believe that the god Bumba vomited up the cosmos because he felt sick. Why is that not something that you're taking seriously? Th that Why does your God more, take precedent? Th that even feels more reasonable that's, as I see what kind of vomit a real thing. life is. Uh, Mark, I, sorry, can I know I we're throwing something for us. Can I, can I just yeah, go ahead, but it's not going to be the good one. I feel like go ahead <laughs> about the origin of life because um, there's this. And Jimmy, I mentioned this on our on our last call. Like, there's this big debate going on right. Well, not debate, but there's sort of this back and forth going on across the YouTube uh, 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 sphere um, because uh, James Tor, who's a chemist, who uh, he's affiliated with the Discovery Institute, which is a sort of theist. Um, yeah, I know the Discovery uh, Institute. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. We are, we are very uh, familiar hey, with the Discovery Mark, Institute. Mark, at the, end of this, at the end of this example, are you still going to be a theist and we're still going to be atheists? Well, yes. Okay, yes, so I, so I wanted, here's a question wanted, then. Let's just skip it because it's we've already been going at it for 30 minutes. I wanna I wanna I wanna end on one question, and maybe you have to think about it and bring it next time. What could debunk your theism? Um, oh, oh, a lot of things. I mean, like Give if me any. historical evidence. If historical evidence was found that the story of Jesus, like the, the whole story of Jesus, the crucifixion, him rising from the dead. Like if if there is historical evidence that 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 uh, starts po poking holes in that, I mean, I would. Well, really there's already start... historical evidence that pokes holes. However, you're suggesting mm -hmm. I feel like you're saying if like you find Paul's books where he's admitting he makes it all up. So, Mark, what if he yeah, made it all yeah. up and he didn't write down that he made it all up? Because how many secrets? How many secrets have you written down all of the things you lied about? Like the one, the, the one that um, William Lane Craig. I think you mentioned this, Jimmy. Once it's like he, he mentions, like if they if they found like if, like Jesus like interred somewhere, 
You know, How would we even know like, it was Jesus? This is my thing, man. Or if they you're, never you're found Jesus. Like, you're setting that's this. That's the thing. Like, what if Jesus didn't exist and so we never right. find a tomb with Jesus in it? And you're like, see, the tomb doesn't have Jesus. And therefore, do you understand how you can't prove a negative that way? Mark, my dad, I once asked him what could disprove him of it, that God exists. And he said, if God showed himself and told him. And I feel like your <laughs> reasons aren't far from that. What is a realistic, viable yeah. thing? Because you don't have a good reason to believe. And yet it seems like you're saying you don't believe, you still believe because there's not been a good enough reason to stop believing. It's kind of a fucking whack reverso thing the way this, this shit works. So what's something actual viable? What's something that isn't so easy to be missed, like the individual life of a person? You don't actually have a good reason to believe he was resurrected. We've already been over all of that. That is a faith thing. You believe on faith that he was resurrected. That ain't evidence. That's not a, that's not a thing built on. What is what is a realistic thing? Because I assume, Mark, and I assume because we have this conversa these conversations, I assume you want to believe as many true things as possible and as few false Correct. things as possible. So what's an actual thing that could undermine your faith in Jesus and Christianity that has any fucking chance of ever being demonstrated? Well, I could change as a person. I mean, I used to be agnostic, and there was a period where I was like probably even closer to... Yeah, next like, time try skepticism on while you do it. Uh -huh. you, if you do an agnostic phase again, <laughs> try skepticism with it next time. Your answer is basically nothing in your current state, which means that this conversation is pointless, my guy. Until you're no, ready to no, go, no, I'm only going to believe in things for good reasons, which you aren't. You are taking a lot on faith. Your deistic propositions fall apart, and your and your belief in the resurrection, there is zero. When you say, I love when people say historical evidence because they want to say a phrase that sounds like scientific evidence, but fucking mm -hmm. isn't. You can't, and there's not just, even just really good. Of, go ahead, go ahead. Just out of curiosity, when right you up. say historical evidence, are you in any way like? Do you mean historical evidence the way that historians use it, or are you saying historical yeah. evidence in the way that like? Answers in Genesis, for example, talks about historical science. Is that do you believe that there's a distinction between historical science and observational science, and that historical evidence is in this camp here? Oh yeah, no, no, no yeah, no. I see, I see your point. Um, no, I mean it like because what I think historians basically do is like when they get to the, the, you know, most there's consensus that Jesus existed, that he was crucified. But then they get to the point where they're like, something happened. We can't say what it was. You do know that the existence is considered happened. more likely than the crucifixion, even amongst historians, right? Mm. Um, like these, I the individual claims that, I, of Jesus's life have different levels of likelihood. Yeah. And historical yeah. evidence and what we accept is a, when somebody goes, based on all of this shit, I'm going to accept that Alexander the Great existed. You leave it open yeah. that he might not. And certainly the stakes of whether you accept if Alexander the Great existed or not go way up. If tomorrow you say Alexander the Great existed and was the son of Christ or the son of somebody mm -hmm. else, and, and based on whether or not you accept that will depend on whether I'm going to flick your penis every three seconds for the next 20 million years, I've now got a bigger <laughs> set of problems with proving Alexander the Great existed and whether or not the things ascribed to him are actually true. The stakes get raised a lot according to how you're trying to tell me that person's existence back then must influence who I am now. And you have never oh, met even the bottom standard of evidence, let alone the higher standard. Well, no, because Jimmy, the way I think that part works is for, for a lot of people is that like, they, they don't start with Jesus. They start with sort of an internal feeling. People call it like mysticism or spirituality. Like they feel something inside and they feel like God exists. And then they look for <laughs> things that validate No, that. they feel like there and, is something tremendous. It doesn't mean they mean that God, that they believe God exists. I experience it every time I look at art that inspires me. Anytime it's dark enough outside to see the gas clouds of the Milky Way, you have this tremendous sense of, I feel tiny when this is very large. Humans also can't conceive large numbers. So when I go, the 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 world is four point whatever billion years old, that feels unobtainable and makes me feel tiny because I'm not even, 
no person has a brain co- capable of conceptualizing that amount of time. In fact, we may not even have a single person who can conceptualize 1,000 years. We are, we are very limited yeah. in our conceptions of times. Things make us feel small. And when we feel small, we have a sense of, therefore, there are greater things than us. The word God comes in when you start infecting people's minds with it. And you start saying, that feeling is God. And by the way, don't ask me to prove it. Accept this the way you, a child, accepted whatever guidance your parent gave you. This is coming from civilizations and people far more advanced than you and blah, da, da, and tradition and all of that other shit. Feeling small is not the same as I have a sense that there's a God. That is what you are conflating, Mark. I, I agree with that. They're not the same thing. But like, even like when you look at people, for example, who like take psychedelic drugs, like there is a, there's a thread that goes across that where they will report like and again, you could use the word mysticism, but it's even it's even more than that. Where they, it's almost like they experience the divine in their. Mark, I've tri- experienced running from unicorns on psychedelics. Mm-hmm. I'm not even kidding. Does that mean that <laughs> would I have experienced that if I came from a society that had never introduced unicorns to me? Would I have had a name and recognized what it was and a greater concept of what it means to run from a unicorn and that it runs like a horse and it has a horn on its head? Or did was my psychedelic journey influenced by what my brain already was doing? And by the way, what is your thesis about that? That psychedelics somehow open you up to God? Because we know... We can scan your brain on psychedelics. It's in your head what's happening. Oh, we've gone to, we're at 40 minutes, Mark. You make your last point. We got we to gotta do another call. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Yeah, no, we'll do this is call, fucking wha- whack. I, do psychedelics and then bring I'll, that shit back to me, Mark. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, ask for us because I'll call into another show. Um, obviously, I'll call nah. to you again too, Jimmy. But I wanted to ask for us if you could look at the James Tour um, responses to, because He's really critiquing the origin of life community, and taking them to task for like really exaggerating Why? their claims. Yeah, last, by the way, last time you did something Why? with a person like that when you were ending, ending a call, and I got nothing but comments about how dishonest you were about it and people correcting what you said. So I, but you know, maybe, maybe Forrest. <laughs> Good fucking, all right, James Tor. You hope that we'll listen to James Tor. That's all right. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, no, because I want... I, I no, Mark, I no. No, no we're leaving. Come on. Get out of here. Um, <laughs> goodbye, I'm Mark. Just, I'm just gonna... Later, man. Just say goodbye. Thank you. Uh, I, I still don't understand what the fuck we talked about. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We we talked about the origin of life, and it was like, like, like con- consciousness is a special, magical thing. Yeah, but lots of other animals do it. Yeah, no, of course they do. It's not that special. But, like, having it is really special. <laughs> not really. It's it's just a thing that some stuff do. Yeah, no, for sure. That's not another... But, like, life can't get started. Life is very rare. Life is actually not that crazy of a thing. It's 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 really likely. Yeah, no, for sure. It's very <laughs> likely. And it's, it's very likely there's lots of life all over the universe. All I'm saying is that, like, if you, if you take fucking acid, you might believe in God. Like, cool. Like, I don't fucking... Man, and then he's bringing up James Tour, who's like, I just Googled him. He's fucking, like, I've, I've heard of this guy before. He's just a guy that works at, like, these fucking creation research institute people. I don't know which one he works at, but, like, and there's a reason why this guy is a fucking fringe scientist. There's a reason yeah. why this guy isn't publishing papers that are, like, making the front page of nature because he's advocating for intelligent design. And, and that's that's the thing. It's different than just creationism. Yes. Intelligent design specifically is saying you know who the fucking designer is and what that guy had in mind. And it is a he, of course. And what he had in mind and what his plan was and all this. And it's like there's this whole thing. Like I've I've never done a video about this guy, but I bet I fucking could. It just it, it it's not compelling. It's like it's it. I feel like this guy just fucking said you should look up Michael Behe. And be yeah. like, oh, you should fucking listen to Bay. He's, he shows all this irreducible complexity. It's like the dude's been fucking made a fool of so many times. Why would I waste my time? Like, it's I don't. Why did we? T- it was a forty-five minutes. I don't know what we talked about. I don't know what we did. It was I a just while. sat here. It was a while. I, just, I don't know what happened. All right, we've got my two time, atheists and a theist life. left. 
we're not going to go that long again because we hit so many topics. Don't flick my penis every three seconds, my Alexander the Great. I'm sorry. I'm going to pass Cal's <laughs> wager my, my belief in Alexander the Great to try and make sure I don't get my Ugh. penis flicked. Uh, Dylan in Florida. How are you doing, Dylan? Sorry, Dylan? I was responding to somebody in chat. No, you're good. <laughs> I have, also have you on speaker, so one second. Is this our buddy? Is this our oh, buddy, Dylan? I'm sorry, repeat that? Is this our buddy, Dylan? Is this is this the Dylan I know? Uh, Yeah, I was modding in chat. I also think I'm the only one there, so I'm going to try and keep this brief. Yeah, let's do it quick. Um, uh, but uh, there's one side tangent I wanted to mention about the call earlier for the, the trans topic call. Like, mm-hmm. even as somebody that is trans, I'm also non-binary. So even if I was born AMAB, I would still be trans. Like, my sense of gender isn't yeah. even tied to, like, this miracle cure where it's like, if you could take this pill and you turn into the opposite sex, would that cure you? No, I'd no, I'd probably be actually be more dysphoric. Because yeah, it, uh. it reminds me of that. It's it's, it's the same <laughs> reason why I don't cite like autism speaks because like it's all about like can we cure these people? Can we like fix these people? And it's like, like it, you can have a variety of opinions on that, but the way that you talk about it is, is just fucking gross. You know what I mean? Like it's a, yeah, no, I totally get where you're coming from, dude. Yeah. And- uh. I mean, it's it's mildly related to just like a side tangent related to the topic I want to talk about. Cause, um, but my main question for is mostly for Forrest is like, how would you go about looking into research about a niche topic that not many people are typically discussing, or at least that's not the angle at which somebody is discussing a topic? Do you have a topic sense. in mind? Is this? Yeah, is, give me for, an example because it okay. depends. Uh, so, okay, so for me, I'm very, very interested in studying ADHD and autism because I, it's self-diagnosed, but not the ADHD part, mm-hmm. but autism part, because it's very much a topic right. that I really enjoy researching and discussing, but I also mm-hmm. want to learn about it in early humans and how that would have expressed itself in early humans and how that would have affected their daily lives in that sort of scenario, if that makes sense. Like, I don't okay, know if so that's something second. that... Because every time I look it up, it's like, are people with autism the new step in evolution? I'm like, I don't know. Stop. What the fuck? No, I we are. I don't want to get into that. We like, are. <laughs> for sure. Like, I, so I'm what like, I would do, it, first it, of it all. It drives into my ego. And I'm we like, are homo no, don't do that. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I feel, I'm like, neurotypicals are so weird. And I'm like, I don't want to get into it. But <laughs> that's why I'm trying to be fast with it. <laughs> Historical yeah. stuff's all so going to be I theoretical. Would, what what I would do if I was you um, is I would start by um, there is a uh, I would start by looking at the literature. So go to scholar.google.com. Um, it's a, a Google mm-hmm. search engine for p- scientific papers. Um, and I just typed in autism animal studies. Um, you could probably just do autism animals. Um, and that shows new stem cell therapy and autism, autism assisted interventions, uh, blah, 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 blah. A lot of this is, is trying to understand and diagnose and then also change. Uh, here's a, if I go autism, mm-hmm. animal studies, you know, what do animal studies show and this, that, and here's the cere- uh, cerebellum and autism or a motor control. Like there's a lot there. There's a, I, I actually have a, a personal friend. Um, his name is, uh, uh, Dr. Ben Ryan, R E I N. He's a, uh, neuroscientist at Stanford that works on autism and mice in particular. Um, so like I would look up him and and like kind of go go on Google Scholar and like type in things about autism in other animals to start with and like learn what the literature is saying about like what you know what what, what are people talking about modern like in in recent times and what you do is you look at the references so read the 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 thing where it says like in the in the introduction in the abstract they're gonna say like this is a current problem in our understanding of this. And this is what's currently being done about it. And then it'll have citations. Go look at those citations as well and see like, okay, so what are they saying? Why do they think that? What kind of like start that rabbit hole citation or reference lists are an amazing way to like, if you find one paper on something, you found a dozen, you know what I mean? Um, And uh, then also like reach out like a lot of the times when you get on like research gate, or whatever, and you find the authors of these papers, if they're still alive, a lot of the times they want to talk about them. And so, like, it, it very frequently, if you find a paper that's behind a paywall, um, on on Google Scholar, uh, when you type in a, a paper, if you click on it, and it takes you to a thing that's like a link, like pay $800 to access this paper because we're fucking Elsevier and we're assholes, um, 
But uh, if you click under there, under the link for it, it'll have like cite this source and blah, blah, blah. It'll have one that says like all eight, 12, 20,000, however many versions. Click on that and it'll open up a new page. And in there, like look for ones that start with the words P with PDF. It'll have PDF in brackets. And then that's the whole PDF there, open access you can read. Um, and if you can't find one, if it's only behind a paywall, very often you can contact the author of that paper at whatever university they work at or whatever, write them an email and say, hey, I saw you wrote this paper. I'm really interested in this exact topic and this looks like a great place to start. Can you please send me a copy? They either will, very often they will, um, or they might even say, oh, this actually isn't exactly about that, but here's some resources that are. So like, like autism is a really cool thing that neuroscientists are learning, learning a lot about right now. And if you say, I'm specifically interested in any evidence for autism in early humans and how that might've affected us because you know I am this way and I wanna find these, and whatever, whatever, it helps if you give some context. Um, yeah. The people who know the most about the thing will not only know what you're looking for, but know where to find it. Um, and I think that's the best place to start. So start with Google Scholar, click see however many versions to find PDFs of what you want to read. Go to the citations of the interesting parts of that paper. Don't read the paper what line by line. Don't do that. Read the Read the abstract because that's a summary. And then you can decide, is this paper worth my time? Throw it away. If it is read then the introduction and the discussion, the very beginning and the very end, because that'll tell you where the science has been so far and what these people just found out and what are the implications of what they found out. Um, don't go through the materials and methods and all that. It's not worth your time to do that at, at, this, at this stage. Um, and in those okay. sections, when you're going through those, look for important statements that they make that interest you. And the end of that sentence is gonna have the citation there. Pull those papers next and do the exact same thing and go down that rabbit hole. And when you find something that's really cool that you have a lot of, that is like really tickling you and making you excited, um, find the author of that paper, see if they're still alive and send them an email and say, hey, this is what I'm interested in. Can you please provide any other ideas, resources, whatever? I love your work. I it, it flatter them. I especially love when you talked about this. It was really cool. I really want to know more about this and I'm having a hard time finding more details. Here's what I've already found. Could you please tell me, like show you put in the legwork um, and, and you'd probably make a friend and you'd probably have somebody who would help you out. That's what I would do. Okay, cool. Because like even like some of the more modern information about like just autism and people that are ASAP is really lacking because the yeah because most of it is typically studying in white males and mm -hmm. it presents a lot differently considering how people that are asap are socialized so even just that is like so annoyingly frustrating to just understand information and find it on so like it's something that i'm sort of passionate about and maybe selfishly so but it's it's still fun to learn about human brains in general so yeah it, it is are you at a uh, um are you at a university? Are you used to currently studying at a university at all? No. <laughs> it's just me being okay. a poor kid that's super interested in science, but I don't have no, any sort of the, ability to go. The only reason I ask. <laughs> like, I would love no, to. I, I totally understand. Yeah, the only reason I ask is a lot of universities have a, what's called an interlibrary loan system where they can get you access to like pretty much any scientific paper ever um, for free. And so like you, you, you know, I, that, that would be an option if you were a, a college student. But if not, you know, it's, it's no worries about it. But yeah, I would just write. Yeah. I mean, my, my best uh, friend uh, is you know, I, in college right now. Like my best friend is in college right now. I could probably yeah. maybe ask if that's possible. But yeah, ask, the ask if they, they, if they have an interlibrary loan system at their college and then you could probably use it. Because like for me, I when I was uh, in my bachelor's especially, I would spend my free time, I'd spend an hour in the library and I would literally just look up every paper that I wanted to know about anything and just copy and paste oh, yeah. that information <laughs> into the interlibrary loan system. And by the end of the week, I would have a fuckload of emails of PDFs of every single one of those papers and it was for free. So, like, if you have a good yeah. university, they probably have that. And if you have a friend who goes to one of them, dope. Um, but, yeah, there's, there's a, a, you know, lots, lots and lots of scientists get lots of emails about these things. Don't be discouraged if they don't write back. But it's um, most of the time, you know, professors want to teach. That's what, they're in the, that's what their job is. So, like, I, I get a ton of emails that people ask me, like, hey, can you please provide resources on XYZ thing? And I can't answer most of them because I'm like, I don't fucking, that's not my job. I don't teach that. Yeah. I don't know that. Go write to somebody who knows that, you know? So, yeah, yeah that's, no, that's why it's, I was it's, more it's, asking, it's, like, it's uh, like how to find it, not about it, because I know that's typically not your field. It's probably it would probably be yeah, more yeah, of a Shannon no, question, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, no, definitely. Just, just you know, go uh, uh, look at the literature first, learn some stuff, and then convey what you have already learned to somebody who is an expert in the field and say, now where do I go from here? And I think they would be impressed by your initiative and they'd probably give you some resources. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. I, Thanks, I, en I enjoy your content a lot, and I very much enjoy just the teaching style that you have and just your passion well, thank you so much, Dylan. That means and I feel like, and I, I don't mean it as an insult, but I remember you mentioned about like possibly being ADHD. And I think that's just where the connection lies for me because people also with ADHD, it's very, very easy to connect on the subject that they're passionate in. And for me, if it's a similar subject I'm passionate in, I'm like, I go gung ho into yeah. it. So yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I don't want to like, it's, it's hard you know, not diagnose to somebody I've never really met. So, you know, that's just, no, I, no, I, I, I totally get what you're saying. It. I didn't take any offense yeah. to that at all. <laughs> Okay. It's just, and no, I, I love it, that. And I'm like, oh, okay, so it wasn't, it wasn't just me. <laughs> yep. So, yep. Yeah. So, so many people, cool. my professors have said that to me. My advisors have said that to me. My <laughs> friends have said the only thing I haven't been able to go to a, a psychologist to learn or a psychiatrist to learn. So like, who knows, maybe someday I'll be able to afford that and I'll try that out too. Yeah. yeah. And, um, like I have like advice I could like suggest, but I don't want to like, I don't want to be that sort of rude person and jimmy i also apologize because i could totally go into content but i want to get back to moderating so i apologize so i'm gonna go now <laughs> yeah no worries <laughs> bye dylan thanks so much dylan i bye. appreciate it take care i hope that works out for him yeah yeah all right let's let's do this let's uh we've got another theist call i'm waiting to see if this person in chat My says theory. would call in Extra if we uh if we opened it but it. let's uh Look let's that. make some Oh well, fix it because I need I, I I need us to make some thumbnail reactions real quick for the uh, <laughs> for the audience to do. All right, let's do one that's like uh, this will be for Mark's call where we're both like, what the fuck? Like, oh yeah, no, absolutely. I gotta push my. I gotta not let my neck face get. All right, now let's do one where it's like you just stubbed your toe, but you also just noticed there's a spider in your in your butt crack at the same time. Okay, let's do. Uh, uh, let's do. The, you're trying to ignore the fact that there are two cats fucking near you, but you have a show to do. Uh, all right, let's do, um, <clears throat> you just, you just, there's some oil, you were making like some meat for a spaghetti sauce, uh, and some of the oil mm. splashed up and it hit you in the face right under your eye. And also you have sciatica. <sighs> okay. Uh, do you have any that you want to do while we're here? <laughs> no, oh, man, I mean, we We've gone let's, through the gamut of emotions. This is the range of humanity here. Let's also look mildly interested for the atheists who call in just to agree with us. Hmm. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, <laughs> the, is that the is going to call in? No. Okay. I don't think so anyway. Uh, I'm going to put you on the who, line. Who's supposed to call in? So there's just somebody in the yeah, chat yeah. that was saying like I could easily prove God exists, and I and I was like, all well, right, then where are they? Then either call in or get banned because you don't get to uh, you don't get to to just do it. Oh, let's do one where we're showing off what kinds of pants we're wearing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. I still have sciatica. All right, that'll work. Uh, <laughs> I have to wow, be jeans. Not to get my foot in the trap because I don't want to fucking. <laughs> get us that much lamentization. You got to put my slipper on before I did that again. <laughs> you have actual jeans on. That's uh I'm these are yeah. like these are barely not pajama pants. They're like high class pajama pants. Uh mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put you on the line with you know, David. I always wear jeans when I'm streaming just in case I need to stand up so that people don't uh, like I'm not walking around in like my yeah. freaking torn to shit like gross pajama pants with all these holes in them. I risk it. I, even if I'm just wearing underwear, I'm like, I don't care. What, what's the worst you're going to see? My dick? Probably not. Uh, <laughs> hard to see. Uh, I'm going to put you on the line with the Thea's collar. I'm going to go use the bathroom, get a snack, and take some medications, and then we'll, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll join in on the call, and then we'll do Super Chats is what I think is the, the, what we're doing. Uh, but anyway, well, we've I'm got... I'm mad jealous of you. You're mad at what? Yes. I'm mad jealous of you. I'm going to go get a snack and, and oh, whatnot. I'm you can do it when I get back. Of skills on my desk over here. We'll trade off. Oh, you can. This is because I want to. You don't have to not eat on because I want to. We can. I'm going to go get popcorn. Whole, 
I ate that whole thing of fucking takoyaki on that one with Aaron Raw, and I felt bad about it, but it was so damn good. See, I would say, like, skip, like on the on the higher class shows, we probably avoid it unless we're going for hours and hours, and then at some point you got to refuel. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, right. but no, on this one, when I get back, if you want to step away and grab a snack, use the bathroom, whatever, before super chats, we can do that. Anyway, uh, David from Arizona is a theist calling in to wanting to talk, uh, uh, about evolution in the Bible, which is perfect for you. David, you are on the line. Right. Hey, David. David. Did you mute us, David? Unmute us. Did you mute us with your face? Uh there you are. Can you hear me? I there do. We go. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I have you guys on the uh, speaker on my other. Okay. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. So I guess any questions before I start? I mean, I'm just wondering besides. No, we want to know what you want to talk about. Yeah, yeah, what I've so, got over uh, here is evolution. misconceptions on evolution in the Bible. That's all I see. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, that's a it's a touchy top topic, obviously. But anyways, uh, the reason for my call is because I, I usually hear uh, when I watch you guys' shows, uh, basically Christians, you know, getting destroyed about uh, evolution and how they believe that the world was created in six thousand years, how uh, you know, just really dumb things like that. And I mean, to point out, basically, you know, Rome created Christianity. So that the fact that they don't see that is uh, is crazy. But I, you know, I used to be Christian, and the reason why I am talking about evolution is because I, you know, I've read the Bible, uh, and I know that I, I've read the Bible, and yeah, sure, you guys might think, oh wait, you're reading the Bible, you can't get any signs from there. But in fact, you actually can. There's just in the beginning in Genesis that is basically uh, a subtle science. You know, it's it's uh, it's dumbing down the creation basically. It's in a way, uh, I mean, any questions about that? Maybe. Or? Uh, so, how do you figure something is dumbing down? Sign. Hold on, just one second. I've, I hear a, a knock at my door here. What's happening? Yeah, no worries. What's happening? What's that? <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you, baby. You sweet thing. My lady just brought me some pineapple slices, some coconut water, and a bag of cookies because I said I was snackish. She's such a sweet bear. Okay, now please continue. You said that 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 there's science that the Genesis story is a science lesson of how I'm guessing you mean like how the world came into existence, which no, it isn't. But like, why why do you think that, and where are you going with that? Can, can you explain to me why it's not that way? I can have a, a better uh, understanding of what to uh, continue talking about. Totally. So, like, it says, for example, that uh, light and plants existed before the sun. No, that's that's wrong. See, if uh, you read it more thoroughly, you know, no check. offense, I'm, it, it basically says that in the beginning, you know, God created the heavens and the earth. That The heavens is not heaven itself. It's the universe, meaning stars. You sure, know, I get that interpretation. But, like, here it says, uh, God, the first thing God did, God made the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form mm -hmm. and empty, and darkness was on the surface of the earth, and, God, and then he moved on the face of the water. Then God said light. So he, he made light first, and then yeah. like the sun comes up later in, in, in verse 14. Let there be lights in the sky to separate the day from the night. So he made light before he made the sun. He also says, let the water in the sky and the water on the ground, blah, blah, blah. Uh, here on chapter 11, verse 11, he says, let the land produce vegetation. So here in verse 3, he makes light. In verse 11, he makes plants. And then in verse 14... He makes the sun. So how is that a misinterpretation to say that light and plants came before the sun when that's the order it happened in the book? The explanation of the sun being created is not uh, in line with the other stars that were created before. Uh, God is not some guy that just magically poofed everything out of nothing. You know, he's, it, it, that's what Christians see. And it's not. So the, if you know a little bit about astronomy, then you will understand that a sun is not a sun. It, until, it's not a star until it hits, you know, the, I forget what it's, the equilibrium. It's a nuclear, once it starts producing a nuclear fission, basically, then it becomes a star. So before fusion. that, it's considered a fusion. proto star, basically. Yeah, nuclear fusion, my bad. Fission is the nuclear stuff that we make. So uh, anyways, so 
so there you have, you know, the Earth. Meanwhile, the whole time the Earth is being formed, uh, the sun is also, you know, forming, you know, because if the Earth is basically near near amount the same age as the the sun, so you know, if you look at, you know, there's there's very uh, close similarities, and you know, besides that, there's also evolution in the Bible where uh, it talks about how God said, hey, you know, let uh, animals come from the sea or whatever, right? So we know that animals came from uh you know first they were single cells and then eventually they they they, they formed into uh multicellular uh, uh creatures and you know jewish beliefs are also that life came from the water and it was you know it didn't, it didn't come from just like out of nothing which is what most christians and atheists believe you know it's that's the wrong way to see it. That's that's the so that's, that's, it yeah, also remember. says mm-hmm. if we're going to disagree on like where like all these things come from, we can agree for sure that it says he made the heavens and the earth, and then mm-hmm. after that made light and 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 the stars. So that would mean that the earth was the first thing in the universe. Then, yeah, if you're saying no, the heavens no. is the universe, and so you said the heavens is all the universe, and when he talks about light. And when he talked about all this stuff, there were other stars, which, by the way, still wouldn't make a tremendous amount of plant- sense to have plants without our sun. There would have to be the other stars aren't going to cut it, but whatever. Like, it mm. still tracks here that it says he made the earth and then all the other stuff. So then the sun, the stars, all the other things mentioned there would have come after the earth. No, no. See, the thing is that the, the the heavens means everything in the universe, uh, other stars, other planets, uh, everything. When it talks about, it, it focuses more on the Earth afterwards. But before that, you know, it, it's just giving a basic like, oh, the universe was created first, and and it wasn't done in six days or or six thousand years, how people like to believe, or seven thousand or whatever. That's really dumb. When I was a Christian, I even I thought that was really dumb as a Christian. So when I left the religion, I finally saw you know that what i was thinking beforehand was actually more correct than what christians were thinking because they think a bunch of really really uh, uh wrong things about people you know sexuality freedoms and all that and uh so besides that yeah you know the I'm sorry. Uh, you know i'm i'm but, not going to move away from this yet because i i just yeah. you keep saying that's not what it means but it's literally mm-hmm. what it says it says that the earth was formless and empty. What does that mean? It's the very it first was, thing. The earth was without form and empty, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So what are we talking about here? The earth was in its formation period where the, you know, because it's made of space dust, you know, it was also forming as... Uh, but there would have forming. also been a star at this time. Yeah, it was been, it was forming or it was already formed. And there, the time and there would have been light at this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. And so in the next but, part where it then says, and then there was light afterwards, and then there was the separation of day from night and light from darkness and all that. Why would mm-hmm. that be a separate thing? If 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 that if all those things happen first, light would have come before the earth then why do we talk about the earth forming before we talk about light being there? And why do we say light came after earth? Uh, well, the earth was already forming when light was basic, when the sun was forming as well. I mean, I know a bit about astronomy and astrophysics. And right, I know they were that... forming together for sure, but you said that there were other stars yeah. involved at the time already, and those would have been producing yeah. light. And also, anything that produces heat produces light, and the Earth was very hot when it was forming, so the Earth would have been glowing hot right. as well, so the Earth itself right. produced light. So, like, we have lots and lots of sources of light before the sun. Mm-hmm. Why do we have it in a right. different chapter? Well, I mean, the light that you... So you're trying to take it in a literal sense where the light means, okay, well, this, there was light already and that must, that must mean it's wrong. No, I mean, uh, the light itself, it, he, you know, it could be dumbed down. It, it should have been dumbed down for people at that time that would not be understanding this whole concept of, of creation. I mean, we're, we're just now, thousands, well, even then we have some people in, uh, uh, hundreds of years ago understanding uh, creation, evolution, all that, but now we're starting to get a more better understanding but you know but you see it took thousands of years before we could actually understand 
better how the story right. works. What's, what's the written in the yeah. Bible is exactly what you would mm -hmm. expect from people who were a few thousand years behind right. understanding how planets and stars form, for sure. That's why right. it's wrong. So, like, it's not a science lesson, like you said. This doesn't correlate with the actual way that planets and stars form. What this says is that the, 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 if you want to say the universe is a place as opposed to the heavens, sure, the universe came into existence and the earth came into existence. And then the earth mm -hmm. formed and then light started to exist. And then we had a separation between the water in the sky and the water in the wa whatever the fuck that means. And then after all of that, mm. then we get plants and then we get the sun and the moon. Like that's that's the order of which these things, and then after all of that, we yep. get animals. So like, out of all, and this is also completely different from chapter two, where it's a very different order of events with a totally different creation story. So which one of those is true? All I'm saying is no part of this is a science textbook. No part of this actually correlates to how astronomy works or or how anything works. Well, it actually does. I mean, I studied astronomy myself uh, pretty deeply. So I, I get How? what you're trying to say. And you might, huh? How? Holy How shit. Does this Is David defending that the Genesis myth actually <laughs> reflects evolution and, and the Big Bang? He, he, he's saying that it reflects planetary formation. And every, like, he's saying that the, the order in which things happen in Genesis oh is my God. concurrent. It makes sense. In, cor in, in concurrence with how things actually happen, how planets and stars form. And I've shown him 50 different times that that's not what it says in this order. It's completely different. And he keeps saying that I'm interpreting it wrong. So I'm waiting to hear, David, how am I interpreting it wrong? What's going on? David, actually, which, well, which, which school of scholarship are you quoting in this? Because literally, like, you have Vatican scholars who are like, you're being a fucking idiot right now, David. That's what would be happening because they've given up well, Vatican, on it being Vatican anything metaphorical. Scholars. Of course, they're not right. So, David, Vatican which ones scholars. are the right scholars? Not the people who are equipped with the most textbooks, learning and all that sort of stuff and access to all the labs and, and known information and, and people with expertise. Which one's the right school of thought? Well, well, Jamie, by you saying that, by saying that, that who's correct um i mean that's that's not a right right way to right way to see it yes you know? it is yes it is david I, david david we're not doing pedantic not. stupid games we're not wasting our audience's fucking time no, 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 no. why are you right because you think you're right everybody has given up on this stupid metaphor the fucking the genesis myth said that the sun came after the light i'm sure you guys that's already hit that said, it's Waves, yeah. waves in the ocean what, came before the mean? fucking moon. Like the the no, Genesis myth is stupid. It's it is stupid. It is it is clearly not actually meant. And by the way, back then when they wrote it, it would have been to explain to people on their basic understanding if it was remotely scientific. Why did it then take us thousands of years to figure out expansion and the fucking Big Bang and everything? Why? Why were these scientific revelations not useful for the progress? But more than that, David, what is the original question? Why the fuck are you right? And where are, where are you getting that this ridiculous I'm, story am, reflects reality? I am basing my, what I'm telling you, off of science itself. All right. Oh, you so you guys are, you guys are no, you're not. pretty biased that you're seeing okay, this okay, a different okay. way. Give us a scientific you, fact. Oh Give us a scientific fact. That points to the Genesis myth being true. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, the that's not a scientific fact. You don't even know what the fuck but science is, finish. David. David, shut let the fuck up. <clears throat> you know, I tell you to give me a scientific fact that reflects the Genesis myth, and you said in the beginning. That's a quote from the Bible. Do you know what the fucking difference between the Bible and science is? Go ahead, David. Hey, you see how... You're, you're not letting me talk. You so you're not yeah, I'm not letting you talk because you're not answering the fucking questions you're asked, asshole. I was going to answer it. So do it. So do it without stopping then somewhere else answer. first. Just answer the question. Okay. What is a scientific fact me, that reflects the truth of the Genesis myth? Do not quote a fucking scripture. Tell me a scientific fact that reflects the Genesis myth. The universe as we see it was created... No, no, I muted you again, fuckface. If you add the word create, you've already jumped out of scientific fact. What is a scientific fact? A fact of the universe that reflects the truth of the Genesis myth. Go. Jimmy, do you know about astronomy? Do you know about Fuck off. Get the fuck out of here. I asked you, this isn't, the, this isn't, because I want to with fucking David, 
This is Cuts I Want It with Jimmy and Forrest. You answer our questions. We don't answer yours. You said you look at the science as opposed to us and you talk down to us. You have a literal fucking scientist over here and you have me who has an ego big enough to think that I understand science plenty. So you fucking tell me, <laughs> thank you. You fucking tell me the next words out of your mouth need to be a scientific fucking fact or go the fuck away. A scientific fact? I mean, that the reflects the round. Genesis myth. That reflects the Genesis myth. You're not letting me finish the freaking question. I mean, before I even say anything, you we'll, hear we'll something. We'll give you 10 seconds. You get, go ahead. You get, you get 10 seconds right now. What's a scientific fact that is true and compatible with Genesis? The stars are very old. The stars in the universe, in the heavens, are very old. How old that, are they, according to the uh, according Very to the old. No, 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 no. Like according to Genesis, how old? Well, Genesis doesn't tell you a time frame. It just tells you that the universe was created first. You so, can, I mean, I can't say anything. I don't even think uh -huh. you've read the fucking Bible, David, because you can literally tie I, all no. these things together. And the the most conservative date you can come up with is 6,000 years ago. And further out is 14,000. 14,000 is about the max. There is no way to read I mean, that book I mean, 14 as a billion, science sorry, 14 book. Billion. I meant 14 billion. My, my apologies. I, yeah, I'm just... Yeah, you're still off by your activity. book's magnitude. You literally have to go into, this is just metaphor, not attempting to be scientific, unless you want to be a young earth creationist. And the idea I'm that not. the stars are old is a scientific right. fact to you. Are they not? That that's a comp that 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 you go oh my god they identified the word old which literally to the people of that time could have meant older than your grandpa or old. your father. Also, stars are still being formed today. Not like which stars are you referring to when I, you say I, the I stars? Noticed. Well, the old it, it, stars. I mean, there are galaxies that are dead. Yeah, well, go yeah ahead. sure. The old stars are old for sure. But like, where does it say that in Genesis? We're not talking about that. I can't go into the Bible because Jimmy's going to freak out and in Genesis. No, go, ahead. Some... go to the Bible. Where... Bring it up. Bring it on, buddy. Okay. Well, uh, all the heck, Genesis one in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I mean, the heavens is first, which is fact by science. I mean, is it not the heavens okay. were created first? No, no first there, of all, no such thing as heavens and science. Weird. What the fuck are you? Okay, okay, okay. Okay. He said, he said that the heavens means the universe. So, like right. his no, interpretation no, no, no. of the Bible is what because, it actually no, it didn't. Means. Because yeah. the heavens well, actually, the heavens actually refer to a separate ethereal plane where God lives. No, they don't. But you don't know the fucking right. Bible. There are times where people oh refer God. to the heavens to mean the sky. <laughs> they had no concept of the sky. They believe the stars were old because they knew that their grandparents and their grandparents had a tradition of talking wow. about the stars. You're literally, you are fucking, I don't think you've read the Bible, let alone understand a fucking thing about science. You are just, you are a mm -hmm. bottom of the barrel. David, are you an atheist hoping to give us a call that's easy to dunk on? Is this what it is? You're like, you know are what you they serious? need over on the line? Is, is somebody really bad at this to call in and represent science and make it easy for everyone else to go, oh my God, I don't want to be that kind of theist because I don't want to project such a non-understanding mm -hmm. of theism. Are you for real? Just so you know, I mean, just because someone has, has like a degree or whatever doesn't make him smart. They can oh, no, I know, David. Trust yeah. me, I know. Y'all got, yeah, got people like We just up. talked about James yeah. Tour. Ken Ham. Ken Ham's got like a fucking whatever, and you got PhDs I mean, out there. Look, man, degrees come out of certain institutions, and some of those institutions, all they do are print the degrees. I agree. A degree is not alone enough to demonstrate a person understands the knowledge. Now, You've done nothing to right. ever show to me that you can demonstrate I any did. knowledge. Forrest has shown me did. a lot. You haven't. You've What's sounded the, like an idiot. I, the whole time. I, I gave you science What's, and no, you to the Bible and science. You're not real, David. You, you didn't give us any David, science, David, David, do you what? actually believe in okay. God? Well, check this out. Check this out. For real. So, Are you, is this a favor you think you're doing us? Oh, no, I'm not trying to convince anybody. I no, no, no. I don't think you're trying to convince anybody. I think you're here. trying to entertain yourself. I think you're an atheist in here being an asshole, trying to like, oh, I'll just go in and be the Why most pedantic I... piece of whatever. Can I, can I, look, at, without taking offense, and with all due respect, I know that sometimes bias gets in the way of logical thinking and reasoning. So I, allow me to finish. Allow me to speak so I can get my word out there about what I believe. And maybe, you know, some people will see it. Uh, some intelligent what, people what, will see it the right I mean, way. So, and, 
let me ask oh, you. Oh, you think this let is me your ask you a show? Different question. Fuck. No. Yes, so sir, just a second, because you said yeah. at the beginning, you said that God created the heavens and the earth, just one one, and that heavens actually yeah. means the 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 universe. Yeah. Later on, yeah. just, like right down the page on on one six, it says that there's a firmament a firmament between the waters to divide the waters from the waters, and he made the uh, firmament which divided <laughs> the waters below from the waters above, and he called that firmament heaven. So what the fuck is the firmament? Why does heaven mean something different in that time? What the, the fuck does it mean waters above and water below? The skies. I mean, the sky is the heavens. I mean, all right. So, so, then, so heaven, heaven means sky, and it also means universe. Just to be clear, heaven means universe sky, in one chapter, and it means sky in a different one. We are in the universe. It's everything above our Earth is the universe. Above what's is the relative. difference between the What's the <laughs> difference between the sky and the universe? Nothing. Our sky is the except for the, the fact universe, that our sky. Our sky is the atmosphere, right? There are yes, atoms here. Yes. There's, there's actual matter here, and that, that has atoms. a stopping point. Whereas the universe right. is exactly. everything total, right? Yeah. So everything what is the firmament dirt. that separates water above and water below, and what are you talking about with water above and water below, and why does it mean sky here and means universe there, when those are clearly different things? Well, he separated, uh, well, the sky, I mean, that, that's basically, that's the gravity right there, it's what keeps us on the earth, it's what keeps the air inside and all the carbon dioxide, whatever, it's... it's gravity is what not it is. what it's keeps the air on the earth. No, it's the, the, well, of course not, it's the the, the magnetic uh, force and the earth spinning it's you know mm-hmm. basically uh that's what it is i mean it's separating us from the sky you know it's keeping us alive so it's part of the so universe. what is the difference between the water above and the water below what are they talking about there where is that even where is that at? and you said number because i don't let's see it says genesis one yeah. chapter six God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided oh. the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Uh. Okay, so you, you said six. I was, I was confused, but now you're saying that uh, six, seven, and eight. Well, I mean, it's this whole section here, the second yeah. day. I figured that was, you know, if yeah. I wasn't clear, that's on me. I apologize. Yeah, you should have okay. mentioned yeah, you no were going to read more verses. But, you, He's well, only look. on Genesis 1 up through verse 5. How dare you go past that, dick? Um, so, so for when you say separation of the waters, I mean, it separates the waters. Every continent has different waters. I mean, it's, it's obvious. It's scientifically proven that every, there's different... They, this uh, isn't a real person. Uh, why are we pretending this guy's for real? Why is why is that right. mean? He says the waters above it and below the firmament. The waters under the firmament and above the firmament. So how do you get different continents having above. different bodies of water, meaning above and below something? It seems like it could be land. And also, water why is that land, called water. heaven? Well, the heavens is is above. The, like it's sky and above, basically. It, that's what it means. That's not like, what it says so, here. It says the heavens are right. the thing separating the waters above from the waters below. Which you just said means different bodies of water on different continents. So is the ocean heaven? On the earth? No, it's not talking Five about second that. Roll. different verses. Dave, will you just admit so you're heaven not means for real? Different things in different ver- also, we, we talked about this a minute ago, but like in chapter, mm-hmm. in verse 11... He makes plants. Mm-hmm. He says we're going to have grass and, and trees and all sorts of shit. So he makes plants first, but then later on he goes on to make animals. And he says in chapter in verse 20, let the waters bring forth animals. So animals evolve from the water in verse 20. Mm-hmm. Plants cover the earth in verse uh, 11. So did animals exist before plants, yes or no? Multicellular, uh, cellular, uh, single cells, and multicellular uh, creatures first, and then animals came. It's it's part of evolution. Animals can be unicellular. 
the unicellular organisms can be animals. So did animal cells, not what, how many cells they have. How many cells they have is not in the taxonomy. The taxonomic order is right. domain, kingdom, phylum, class, family. So we're looking at, we go past domain, we're talking about eukaryotes, in the kingdom level, did plants or animals evolve first? Well, no, of course not. That's, that wouldn't be... That wasn't a yes, that or, no a yes or no question. question. That wasn't a yes or no question. Why, why Which are you pretending one came real? first? Oh. Is, did plants come first or did animals come first? Well, animals came first. The single well, the cells came first. And so why does the, it say here that he made plants first? Let me see. So. Well, I mean... David. To be honest, I mean, it's, 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 it was dumbed down for the time. Oh, my it was God. Dumbed down oh, my God. So it's wrong, wrong is what you're it saying. It dumbed down. It's it was wrong. wrong. David, just admit that you're not no, I mean, real. It could, it, it, it could be Forrest, do you about really think he's real? You think he's real? What, no. I, man, he's literally it's hard laughing to tell. as he's saying it, and now he's going with, well, it was dumbed down. Dumbed down doesn't mean wrong. It means simplified. David, what okay, was the okay, what listen. was your motivation? Why did you think we need the help? Do you think we need more stupid no, callers? What are you talking about? No, I'm just the reason you called because the there's no way here. you're either not serious Harvey with Damon your own intellect not, or you're not serious I mean, at all. This is such Harvey you're making Damon up your reasonings not, on the spot. I'm you not, suck at this. I'm pacing this off of science and I, I study, man. He's laughing. Harvey he's Damon laughing as he says, "I base this off of science." Oh David, did you just say carbon Harvey, dating isn't reliable? Oh Are you serious? God, it, is, it is, but it, it is, but it's not like it's not. It doesn't. It's not that accurate. You know, it's it's accurate, but it's okay. You know, it's really quick, mistake. really quick, just 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 very quickly, describe to me what actually we are testing with carbon dating. What actually is carbon dating doing? Very brief. You can do this well, in two looking, sentences. Looking, very brief. What is carbon dating? There's different ways you can mention that. You can test the, the, the age of the, of like fossils, rocks, uh, anything you find, and you can see the age of it based off of, uh, isn't it like, a, I forgot what it uses. Uh, yeah, we, crosses, knew, but, we knew you would have forgotten. Well, I mean, you probably wouldn't what, know what do you, these, uh, <laughs> I know what What do you test? What can you test with carbon dating? What dates can you Everything. test up from? Like what materials you, you, laugh, you test? You hear him laughing, right? What materials do you what test with carbon dating? Fossils, right? Like older fossils, I mean. So No, no, no. How yeah. what? What in uh -oh. fossils? What, what? When carbon dating, what do you test within the fossil? Every no, like, like, even that just with carbon dating. But I No, you can't. I think it's really And how funny, old does it go know. back? Oh. <laughs> huh? Carbon what? dating only works on organic Typical. material that's less than 50,000 years old. So you wouldn't okay, use I mean, carbon not, not dating for any. I'm not a. You don't not have a, to. Be. A, you said you studied astronomy. I'm not, a, I'm not an archaeologist. Yeah, exactly. I'm not. A, I don't work with this kind of stuff. So you're asking. If you studied astronomy, you should know how radiometric dating works, because that's how we know the age yes. of the solar system. What do you even yes. mean by you studied that. astronomy? What does that phrase mean? You took a class. You I have a degree. In radio. Well, they, I've taken a bunch of classes on it. I've, I've so at institutions or on Ken Ham's website. I'm not pursuing it, huh? Where did you take those classes? At, at different schools, basically. Yeah, did were any of them? Did Man any of them? Were any of those schools managed by Ken Ham? What? No, of course not, man. Of course not. He says he, as he's listen, defending I, a scientific Bible. Listen, I don't. I genuinely want to. I really want to be clear here. Anybody can learn science. Anybody can study this stuff. Anybody oh, can be, you don't have to go to a university to become a scientist. You just have to like take it seriously and really learn it. So I don't want this to come across as some okay, elitist geez. shit where I'm like, well, you didn't go. I, I genuinely want to know though. Degree so just, in anything? Like so I'm what the fuck am I? I just want to know. I'm just saying. Did, I, I'm, did the classes uh -huh. that you took in astronomy come from an accredited college or university, an actual of learning course, institution? Of course. Of course. Okay. Not, that's that's I, what we're trying I, to yes. understand. All right. You sure it wasn't yes. a, an astrology school? Because you sound like you came from an astrology school. <laughs> no, it's not astrology. <laughs>
No, no. But, but so I mean, if look, you understand look. astronomy, if you've learned about astronomy, you should have understood a little bit about radiometric dating. So I like do, you do. should know the difference. I was going to mention that. You, well, you just said that mm -hmm. you can test anything with carbon and you can tell, tell the age of anything with I, carbon. I don't can. deal with that stuff. I don't deal with it. I deal with uh, more of like figuring out. Then the why did you throw like it that? out as an argument if you're not prepared to defend it? Wait, sorry. What do you deal with? You well, figure we out. Weren't even, wait, sorry, we sorry. weren't even talking about it. I need to hear you what David said. You threw it out for you deal with more what? Dealing with what about stars? Well, knowledge about stars, like you know. Oh, knowledge about, about stars. I thought you said you were charting stars, and that makes you some sort of science expert. No. Okay, so no, if all. you understand stars, which just to be clear, a little bit ago, you mm -hmm. you know, we confused yeah. between nuclear, nuclear fusion and nuclear fission, but whatever. If if Did you're studying stars. If you're studying stars and you understand stars, then walk me through very, again, you don't have to go into extreme detail here. Just define and give me an understanding of, your understanding of the proton-proton chain and how it makes these heavy elements. Just, just explain that very briefly in a way so I know that you, like, what page we're on. I'm not trying to, like, put you on the spot and be like, explain this crazy big thing. I'm just saying, like, if you understand stars to the point where you're going to say that radiometric dating doesn't work, can you at least tell me, like, what these atoms are and where they come from? Well, I mean, if we're talking about, like, you know, clouds of dust, you know, then basically it forms after a, well, it's, if a supernova or a nova goes off, it sends, you know, I said, I'm talking about I'm talking no I'm talking about fusion I'm talking about a proton proton chain explain just the bait like give me like layman's terms it doesn't have to be anything technical just tell me you know yeah. how a star works well, not how they're formed well yeah not gravity, where they come from gravity not what a stellar nursery is all right well to put it in simple terms gravity forces Please. is forcing inwards and you know. Uh, fusion is forcing outwards, and it causes heavier uh, elements to form, uh, maxing out at iron. Uh -huh. That's fine. Okay, fine. Right. Go, keep going. Yeah, I mean, and basically, once it hits fusion, it's producing uh, hydrogen, and it just keeps doing that until it runs out of uh, until it uh, runs out, and then it just basically that, that's, blows. No, and that's whatever. It. Fine. Okay, so what? then. We're, we're going to skip over the parts where that is, you know, I, I said simple layman's term, so I'm not going to get super deep into it. I just, like, fine. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so we have nuclear fusion through a proton-proton right. chain. We have these right. nuclei fusing together to form heavier nuclei. Star explodes, makes a planet. Super duper cool stuff. Now, that process that you just described there goes against... What it says here in Genesis one one. So how are we fucking get your shit together, Jimmy? <laughs> Pull it together. Can you tell me how, it does? how? Because we okay. Because it says here. Oh fuck! I closed the window already. Let me pull it up again. Fucking let me go to Bible <laughs> Gateway or whatever the fuck I was on. Obviously, that's Genesis what it meant 1. when it said Jesus wept. Nuclear fusion. Come on. I don't believe in Jesus, bro. I don't so believe in Jesus. Sorry. It says here. It says here that the, uh -huh. the earth and the heavens formed, then there was light, then there was a firmament, which we haven't established what the fuck that means, and then there were plants, and then there was the sun. So what I'm trying to understand is, we established that the sun and the star, or the sun and the planets would have formed around the same time. We've established that you need stars' predecessors, you need early stars, Go through the process right. of nuclear fusion to make the heavy elements and then explode and blow those elements everywhere, creating the planetary exactly. and, and stellar nurseries that make future uh, solar systems. Our solar system would have mm -hmm. formed from that. Right. Because of radiometric mm -hmm. dating, we know how old the solar system is and when that happened. And because of uh, studies on other yeah. solar, solar systems, you know the processes. It all goes against this. And we also know that animals evolved before plants and that land plants came later about 500 million years ago. And we like we we have a set timeline here of how this shit works. We have a fossil record for it. We, we, we understand all of it, and it goes against every line of this. And so far, all you said over and over and over is you're not interpreting it properly. If you it, Heaven doesn't mean heaven. It means the universe. Except over here when it means something about continents and something else and who knows what. And the sky is different than the universe except for when it isn't. And like... 
All you've no. done this whole time for this call is say that we're misunderstanding X, Y, Z thing about the same damn words, and I don't get how you can draw any of those conclusions. Can I, can I uh, go through it one time? Just Now, right, David, so. what school of theism do you belong to? Is this a skeptic show or... No, this is because I want to. What the fuck are you talking about? What? How what long are you going to take to explain your thing? Fine, fine. How long would you take to explain yeah, your thing? It'll be like a minute or two. Okay, before you do that, what school of theism do you belong yeah. to? Uh, I'd say I lean towards more, to, uh, towards more uh, uh, Judaism than anything else. Which form I of Judaism do you think believes that the Genesis myth is a literal... In, it should be interpreted uh, literally. Orthodox, and there are uh, pieces of history, written history from them that shows what I am saying. Yeah, I'm not talking about super old Jews. Right. I'm talking about today's Jews. Yes, I know. Oh, Jews no. before science thought this uh, this book might be scientific. I'm aware. Everybody else did too. Uh, Orthodox, most likely they believe. Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly certain Orthodox even aren't that. In, I, the course. Orthodox yeah. Jews are like pretty, we'll but... It also sounds like you're making this up as you go. And the fact that you were like, uh, I guess I'm kind of like Jewish. Yeah, I'm pretty skeptical of this. And by the way, if you uh, are doing it as a joke, you're now also an anti-Semite. But uh, we're going to give you a minute to explain that stupid point you had. Here's one minute. Tell us why Genesis is scientific. One minute on your market set. Go. All right. So... In the, in the beginning, the universe was created, as it says, the heavens and, and the earth. So basically, the earth is nothing special. It's just a ball of, it's just a rock. It was a bunch of dust that formed. But anyways, the universe was created first. And as you said, Forrest, stars were created. And they needed stars to explode to create, create heavier elements. And those other stars created more heavier elements. And they, their space tests went everywhere. And, you know, galaxies were created. Black holes were created, you know, supermassive black holes were created. And this brings us to when the Earth was being formed. And sure, the, you might see that the sun was, uh, the light, the sun was created, the light was created uh, later on in Genesis. But in reality, the sun was being created while the Earth was uh, also being created since they, they are near the same age. But regardless, uh, the science, I mean, it, it, the order is correct there, you know, and sure. I know you mentioned that cells, uh, the animals came first before uh, plants, but... Man, minutes well. up. That was that was Man, awful. That's time. My God, that was Dude, terrible. You just all you said was here's the things we know, and just because it says something entirely different in the book, that doesn't mean that the book is wrong. And I just you've yet to clarify how the book is right, even though it says something that isn't true. Yeah, how does was, that make sense? And when was God doing this creating? Because you said then this was created. This was cre we know the natural mechanisms by which these things arose. So when was God actually interacting with any of it? Because it wasn't any of the times you mentioned. Can I? Okay, so I see a lot of, uh, you guys poke fun a lot at, uh, at, like, for example, let me give you an example, which is uh, uh, God making the commandments and putting them on stone. That sounds ridiculous to you guys, right? And I understand. Why are, if I why are you changing me. subjects? Is this no, no, you no, lost? I'm, just, I'm trying to clear up. I'm trying to clear up something. I'm not going to jump to a different subject. I'm gonna, so basically, people poke fun at that. Like, oh, God put writing on stone or whatever. But it wasn't stone. It was actually cubes, and it was more than just... Oh, commandments, not stones. It was cubes. No, For us, yeah, really? Sense, even though it, you want another minute God, on this? Where does it say that? Where does it say that in the Bible? Where, you want any, you, why Christian do you want Bible? more of this guy? I'm almost done with my popcorn, and that's pretty much the amount of time I was willing to give it. I haven't gotten to my, I haven't gotten to my, my, my snacks yet. David, who put you up to this? Where, what, what bet did you lose? Also, why is I've, the why I'm, is the moon referred to as a light? The moon isn't a light. The moon reflects light. Yeah, it does. I know. So, I mean, it gives off light. So, it, because it reflects it off the sun. So, I mean, it can be referred to as a. Let, let me ask light you a big question here. Also, in do you believe that the Book of Revelation is true? No, he's not a Christian. Know. He's pretending Christian. to be no, Jewish. You don't. Remember? Okay. okay. So you don't Testament believe in the Book of Revelation? True, man. <laughs> None of the New Testament is gotcha. true. So. Okay, that changes of, things quite a bit. That that uh, I had a whole bunch of no, other questions about don't that. Don't worry, don't worry. The Old Testament's <laughs> still super stupid. But this guy, this guy doesn't know any of it. The Old Testament's been doctored, so it's. Hey, does useless. the Bible? Does the Old Does the Old Testament support slavery? 
what? Why, what is? Look, I've heard this already before, uh-huh. and there's so does it. You guys, I'm not going to talk about this because yeah, I know you won't because you, know, you called in and, to troll with the one specific script to pretend that you're. Well, I don't know if you're just pretending to be Jewish or you're just trying to make Jewish people, Orthodox Jews, look less intelligent than they. They are because you're well, literally absolutely. representing orthodoxy poorly too. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what your motivations were. I just know you suck at this. Uh, Have you heard of the Kabbalah? Yes, I've heard I of would, the Kabbalah. Then you would understand that what they say would seem outrageous to most people. And yes, so there is, is like most science. most religions make outrageous claims. Not everybody who comes to argue on behalf of it seems like they purposefully avoided every point they could. And then after being told all the ways in which the Bible got it wrong or the Old Testament got it wrong, the order then repeats. So anyway, it got the order right. David, you either suck at this or are a troll. And I'm now out of popcorn. So do you have anything insightful to present? Or is it still just empty platitudes of if I read the book out of order and pretend everything is a metaphor and that anything can mean anything, I can get whatever interpretation I want out of it because I can go do that with fucking Jane Chase's dog. Dog, run fast. Well, that's clearly a reference to the speed of quantum particles. David, do you have anything real? Do you have any real proof of anything? Let me give you some uh, physical evidence here. So we, as a, uh, you know, as a species, have achieved so much in the past few hundred years. And just in the past few decades, we've went from, you know, basically uh, using... You have 30 old, more seconds, you know, David, because you're, you're, you're already doing the... Uh, and then we uh, with using the... Uh, we're, we're not, you're not going to occupy I've, the time. 30 seconds or bust. So humans have advanced so much uh-huh. in, the, in such a small time that we have pretty good amount of technology. And you are saying that a being that could be so much more advanced than us cannot create a, things while here we are creating. A David, I'll give you one trillion dollars if you can ever find Forrester I saying a more advanced being couldn't have created the universe. That phrase. But the point is not that. The You're right. Five the trillion dollars. The point isn't the lie you just told. What lie? How can you Neither say of us have arrogant. ever made that claim, you fucking idiot. I'm I've never David. made it. Oh David, God. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have called you an idiot. I should have called you a filthy fucking liar because that's what you are. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I, if you want to tell the truth, fight for you, then that's fine, I guess. I can't, I can't argue with arrogance. No offense. Okay, cool, David. Eat my boogers. Forward. Oh, fucking funny. Christ. Painful. That was, I kept going with it because it was funny. It stopped being, it started getting boring towards the end because it was the same thing on repeat. Just, and it's, it's, I don't know. I fear he was authentic, but not much. It's, it's fucking, it was just, it was fun at first because it did, like, you heard it. It was the same thing over and over. Right. Yeah. No, the Bible does say that, but that's not what it means. And that's not what the words mean. And that's what the order means. And when you really think about it, this and this, and it's just like over and over and over. But then, we started getting into all these like esoteric definitions of, of fucking different kinds of whatever. I don't know. I My lady being brought told, me pineapple. I can't deal with arrogance. This from the man who was coming with the secrets of the universe that he figured out by sitting down and jerking off. But I'm sorry for being arrogant. I don't have the, all the secrets of the universe. All the leading astrophysicists are wrong. <laughs> oh my God. What did he say about iron? Oh, uh, fucking Christ. Don't get me wrong. There's there's plenty of... The the reason why I thought he might be anti-Semitic is when you are going to represent some more extreme beliefs, it's easy to just say that you have the endorsement of the most extreme form of Judaism. Or maybe not the most ex- extreme. I don't know if there's a more extreme, but the most publicly known extreme what he, form. What he was talking about <laughs> iron is that when, um, when stars are going through fusion... Mm-hmm. They fuse hydrogen first because they're made of fucking hydrogen. But as the star increases in heavy element concentrations, as like you, get the, they start to fuse those heavy elements as well. And so you don't just get hydrogen and helium. You also make carbon and you also make oxygen. You make this, so on and so on. And when the star begins to fuse iron, it no longer is producing enough. Like there's a constant balance in the star where you've got yeah. gravity pushing in and the nuclear explosion pushing out. Um, and... Iron doesn't produce enough energy to maintain that explosion going that force outward. So when a star begins using iron, gravity wins. It crushes the star, 
dramatically ramps up the fusion reaction. That's what causes the supernova. So like Got that's it. what he meant. But like Hot. there's there's a lot of details there. I kept trying to ask about proton proton chains because like that it is like you could get into the super duper details. You could do all the math of it. You don't have to. You can just explain this is like the basic process of you need four helium a uh, four hydrogen nuclei that produces one helium nucleus uh, plus two extra protons, two new, uh, 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 two uh, gamma rays, or uh, fuck, I forgot how many, uh, two nucleons, two nu- whatever, uh, nucleons, fuck me, neutrinos, two neutrinos, two positrons. Like you, there's an actual, like a basic breakdown of it. But all I wanted was for him just to explain, like you need protons to, to connect together to form this thing. You form hydrogen to helium and here's why. And here's how, like that's what I wanted a little bit of detail there. I didn't want him to give some fucking whole thesis that I wouldn't be prepared to give off the top of my head either. Um, just yeah. like, I don't know, man. I just wanted a little I, bit more context to show that he actually took that seriously to study it and not just watch well, some fucking Discovery Channel documentary. Probably was that. Somebody is pretty well... Uh, I, so one thing I was going to say, but I didn't because I wasn't positive, was I'm fairly certain that Orthodox Jewish schools have science courses still. And mm-hmm. it, that is, in fact, the case. There's a person who said they were underqualified to be a physics teacher. However, they were a physics teacher at a, uh, an Orthodox Jewish school. Um, it's, it's, yeah. And then somebody was saying, like, there's nothing wrong with being Jewish. Who here said there was anything wrong with being Jewish? Who are you fighting right. against? Literally, I was defending against that this guy was being an anti-Semite and in both forms. I was saying... An anti-Semite, because Jewish as an ethnicity, you shouldn't try to co-opt if it isn't really yours. And also, you shouldn't try and just pick the Jewish religion that you know is the the, the most uh, notably extreme to represent and defend the fact that you have such stupid answers to say. Now, that said, if we are talking about Judaism as a religion, I absolutely will discuss on a theological level, on a, on a, on a philosophical and scientific le- level, whether or not their faith is justified and whether or not people should hold a theistic Jewish belief. Uh, uh, but the ethnicity, the traditions, all that sort of shit. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. You, 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 maybe you're fighting somebody I didn't see. But I don't. I don't give any theistic tradition a pass as far as what I would challenge because if they're right, I want to know, and if they're not, I want to know yeah. too. You know what we could do? I want to make the chat real but, angry because we we we. It's because I want to. So I just want to like hurt the chat deeply. I was crunching. I've been wanting to do that this whole time. I was crunching yeah. and burping. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to add to it. Just make it worse. <laughs> uh, all right. It if is, you have uh, dysphonia, this show is for you. You, I don't love hearing chewing, but I don't have the I don't have the the phonia, misophonia, right? Misophonia mm-hmm. is that what you said? Yeah. Misophonia. Uh. uh so and so said he was. He tried to call. I tried to call, but I keep getting busy signals. Like I stumbled on this today and just started listening. All right. Love the chat right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm Dude, a bad. There's thing. so many people saying "fuck you" for it. Stop. And then there's one that says "louder, daddy." That's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, don't be so fucking pedantic with the fucking. Of course, I'm going to say that that fucking circumcision is not a great tradition. I'm not saying every Jewish tradition is great. Certainly there are. Yeah, I think you knew what I meant when I said it. Uh, uh, well, like, let's, yeah, not, circumcision let's not sucks. pretend. And also, like, circumcision's evil, and also the tradition of washing your hands before eating is a good thing. Man. But microbiology and, like, human aut- bodily autonomy yeah. are independent of Judaism. So, like, it, it's, it, like, washing your hands before eating is not a good thing because it's a Jewish thing. It's a good thing because your hands are fucking filthy. Yeah. But I don't care if secular Jews want to do Hanukkah, which they often do. That's what I'm mm-hmm. getting at. Uh, da, I wish I could do Hanukkah. But there's no way for me to not just be straight up appropriating unless I, like, marry in. <clears throat> nice, any nice... Uh, oh, friends. Yeah, but I feel like I'd feel so out of, like, like I'm just trying to cosplay it, basically. Right? It'd be like... Mm-hmm. I, I have a lot of ethnic... like. So I grew up uh, uh, with a New York family. None of us are Jewish. We have, I'm not kidding, I have 0.1% Ashkenazi Jewish, and the rest is all otherwise Western European in my 23 and me. I've got like eight, eight to 16 gens back. Somebody probably fucked a Jewish woman, uh, uh, is what it says. It says a maternal, anyway. Uh, it's, and it's, far, I mean, it's that far back. 
Not as much as I have, but uh, our like unofficial aunts and uncles were usually Jews. We had like also in New York and, and in the parts that we were in, you get exposed <laughs> to a lot of Jewish culture. And I just have a lot of Jew envy, I feel like. I just feel like I wish I had Dominic here because Dominic is Jewish and he he affirms all these things. I don't know that you're Jewish at all, so I don't feel like I can bounce this off of you and you'd be like, oh, I understand. To the person in the chat who says that circumcision has been proven to lower the risk of testicular cancer, even if that's true, I have no reason to believe that it is, but who knows, maybe. Even if that's true, cool, someone should be able to make the choice to do that to themselves then. You shouldn't do it to fucking babies. Not only do but I have what, a reason to believe... I, I was just sorry. Saying, go ahead. I was gonna say there's lots of things that fucking cure cancer. You choose to do them for yourself. But not only do I not know that what that person said is true, I don't know that you didn't just read a. This is one of those things where they do lots of studies of lots of things, and they until they make the cause, excuse me, causation correlation link. If you just mm -hmm. study among circumcised people, how many people got testicular cancer? versus a percentage of uncircumcised, one of them is going to win, period. And right. you have to actually link that there's a reason why the one side won over the other or that one side had a higher percentage based on whatever because there's there's also entire societies of people who don't circumcise and that can be race-related and related to other things. And now you can start saying like, Actually, it turns out that uh, being white makes you less susceptible to testicular cancer because I think it's white yeah. people are more likely to be circumcised. Like that's and those aren't causation correlations. You have to actually tie the What's two together. This? Exactly, and that's the thing is that like in in statistics, you can draw correlations between anything. You can very, no. but there are actual measures of is this correlation meaningful. Right. I think it's ah, fuck, fucking. I'm gonna somebody who's a statistician in the chat. I'm pretty sure it's the R R value. Remind me. I don't know, but I'm a I'm good. But like you, you actually do. Like I remember in the last graduate stati uh, graduate stats class I took. Statistics is a hard word for me. Um, in the last grad stats uh, class I took, like that was a whole part of it. Is like he showed us a bunch of correlations. And he's like. Here's the p-values, you know. Here you see, like these things are statistically significant, and then here's this other value that shows that this one doesn't actually fucking mean anything. Yeah, yeah. the graph lines up. It doesn't matter, and you yeah. can do that with like there, there is there is a, a a definite strong correlation between drowning deaths and the amount of Nicolas Cage movies who came out in the same year, and like. Sure enough, the more Nicolas Cage is in movies, the more people drown, and it's a, a perfect like you could track it one to one. And yet, like the R value is the correlation. I'm yes. not ready okay, to cool. let that. I'm like, not ready to let that go. I'm not ready to say that they're unrelated. I mean, Nick Cage movies and, <laughs> and I don't know. By the way, to the person who said I'm the only person who burps after eating popcorn, I'm also drinking a, a carbonated water, a sparkling water. I I burp after drinking air is what I'm doing. After intaking carbon dioxide in gas form, I burp. Uh, yeah, so here's an analysis of data by Harvard criminology students Oops, shows a clear correlation between the number of movies that Nicolas Cage appears in each year and the number of people who drown in their swimming pools. And it's it's used as a lesson that correlation is not the same thing as causation. So, like, yeah, mm, like, fuck, That's dude. not one I'm willing if, to give if up. You just, if you just remove their testicles in the beginning in the first place, you'd guarantee they never had testicular cancer. That yeah, doesn't mean it's a good thing to do. By the way, right? I'd rather have my foreskin back and have, you know, the better sensation that and, and then just get my testicles cut off if i need to later you, you know they got they got replacements right. and you can you can take pills i'm not and, using them well, if I can, yeah well, i'm not gonna use them to make babies. i, don't have kids. <laughs> uh, I might have oh, kids oh, i might have kids i might have kids i don't know about but i might have kids in the future i'm just not convinced that i want them to be genetic or in fact i would say the opposite i doubt i want them to be genetic it's uh, weird. I'm so much more comfortable with the idea of being a grandpa than the idea of being a dad. You know what I mean? I don't want to have kids, but I would love to have grandkids. That'd be great. Yeah, because then you don't have to raise them. You just get to spoil exactly. them. Well, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, I have like 10 nieces and nephews, and like that's all. I'm the coolest uncle. I show up, I blow some things up, I give them way too much candy, I fuck off. Like that's yeah. my job. I love that. That's, I, I want to do that. I'm fine I'm, with that. I'm also a cool uncle. <clears throat> mm. Let's listen to some trap beats while we do super chats. Trap beats. Hell yeah. Are these, do these have to be license free trap beats? No, no, I've got licenses for all of them. Uh. 
Oh, okay. I was gonna. I was wondering if you put on anything, but I got to give you one. I, free, I freestyled on Tacus, but I'm not gonna do it again. Uh, Y'all just gotta watch Tacus. It's t oh, I gotta change the thing. Hang on. It should be better now. My honey be bear brought me some pineapples and uh, a little bag of cookies. Like a famous Amos up in this biscuit. Nobody brought me if famous you're not Amos. From, if you're not from America and you haven't tried famous Amos cookies, fucking order some. They're the best prepackaged cookies in the world. I don't know about in the world. Wally They're Amos pretty good. Lives. They're pretty good. I like the ones with pecans. The pecan variety. Yeah, I like those a lot. I don't really like this song very much. Let's do another one. This one I can get down on. Maybe. We'll find out. It's barely started, so I don't know why I would even say that. I, there's no way I know this soon. All right, let's uh, let's try and do Super Chats. Uh, and with this one, yeah, just joined. Jimmy is talking about getting his testicles cut off, as I do. That doesn't seem out of the norm for me. What are you talking about? Uh, man, I feel like I really want pizza or something uh maybe after it's not like i'm gonna be going to sleep soon uh let's try and not spend 30 minutes on just the username of this person uh ten dollars from too young to feel this old tempted to call in to say this but didn't want to take up a line just wanted to tell forrest how absolutely fantastic his video with erica was today thank you forrest f you jimmy thank you uh also, thank you so much i really appreciate that you wouldn't have occupied a line because the mod, the the screener would have told you goodbye. We don't allow people to call just to, to, to compliment us. It's uncomfortable and it, it is a waste of time. But in a super chat form, it's amazing. Love that. Uh, but we don't, it, it, it's one of the rules. You, you can't just call to compliment. Tell us we're great. Everybody else should go watch that video too and tell after, me what you think about it in the traumas over there. After. After this. After. <laughs> you want to read this one? I don't. I don't want to read any of them. Now we're co-hosting a show. I'm not the producer. I feel like that's... I Five feel like... dollars from Kaladin <laughs> says, take my money because I want to. And since I can, what are your... Uh, Forrest, what are your favorite nature documentaries? Um, man, you want to know mine? Uh, I really like... It. No, I, fuck you. Why, I really want to know. <laughs> why isolate it? Since I can, why not just ask and, and get... I'm not going to tell you mine. Fuck you. Fuck you. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, Planet Earth 2 is fucking awesome. Um, I also, I just love the soundtrack, the amount of time and effort they put into making that place beautiful. It really just, it, it speaks to the majesty. It's really difficult because, like, there's a lot of good documentaries out there, but, like, gathering the footage and how you do things, there's a lot of, like, unethical history of the thing. It's, it's, there's a lot there. Um, but overall, man, I fucking love the Planet Earth series. I don't watch a lot of nature documentaries, though. I don't watch a lot of documentary things. I just really love studying and reading. Um, I'm sure if I had more free time, I would watch more documentaries. Um, I think it was Life also. Mm -hmm. is either Life or Planet Earth. So, one of them. Our, our Planet. That was the one. Our Planet uh, was the one that David Attenborough did where he like tied everything back to climate change. It was really fucking heavy. That was really good too. I really liked that one a lot. Um, and uh, there was a cool one on Curiosity Stream with like really, 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 really bad CGI that was about the Permian. That one was awesome. It looked like shit, but it was cool information. Um, yeah, <laughs> they did I, I their don't know, best. man. I, I'm not prepared for this question. They did their best. Judith says, surprise for us and Erica video today made me very happy. Love you guys nerding out together. Yeah, dude. We fucking that was fun. Um, I uh, I called her and I was like, "Yo, I want to make this video, but I have to have it by the end of the month. Can we write this thing and film this thing in ten days?" And I'll edit it. And she was like, "Yeah, piece of cake, totally." And she did a huge amount of the writing on that. Like, I gave her an outline, and she just fucking filled in shit, and then I filled in more shit, and then she filled in more shit. Like, we worked on that shit like nonstop for like three days, and then just filmed it and chopped it up. Uh, that was an absolute passion project. It was awesome. So huge shout out to Erica. She's a rock star. Uh, $10 from Allison the Animal. 
uh, pictured there with what appears to be a, a, a small vulture, which is radical. It's hard to see. It's a small picture for me. Uh, it says, Forrest, you need to buy a warm diffuser for your light. You'll look less like a ghost and more like your beautiful self. You don't know that I'm beautiful. You've never met me in person. I'm ugly as sin. Um, and uh, uh, Jimmy might get distracted, though. Love you both. If Jimmy isn't already distracted by how dashingly handsome is I am, I don't want to hear it. And like what I've got going on over here, I've got instead of a diffuser, I've just got a light box, and then I've got these controls over here, so I can make this bitch real, warm. real warm. Yeah, real. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it like this. <laughs> I, I, I can I, go scoops cold. They're suggesting yeah. the diffuser for the even spread of light, so that you'd have less hot spots and stuff. And if anything, I'd be less distracted because the things that distract me the most are ways production could be improved, like. Like, I don't know if you noticed the very nice even lighting over here. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, that's 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 how I roll. That's what I that's what I rock with. Another one from too young to feel this old second super chat this stream. What is Jimmy and Forrest's favorite beer? Mine is Victory Sour Monkey. Uh, when I would force myself to pretend beer was remotely drinkable and not just decarbonated banana juice or desugared banana juice, uh, uh, carbonated, carbonated unsweetened banana water, uh, I, I used to do a, a blue moon with a shot of triple sec and a, and a splash of orange juice over the top. Funky. Uh, my favorite is um, Reed's Extra Hot Ginger Beer. Uh, I, I, I also, I don't drink beer either. It's fucking gross. It tastes like somebody peed on moldy bread. Um, yeah. ginger beer is great. Uh, there is not, there is alcoholic ginger beer. I've yet to find one that tastes good. Um, usually they taste weirdly yes. slimy. It's very strange. Um, yeah, they're not non-alcoholic ginger beer. If you like, like decent ginger beer reads yellow bottle with the red, uh, the yellow bottle. It's a green bottle. Um, the one with the red label, the mm. extra hot ginger beer. So fucking good, and it goes great with sushi. You're eating sushi, drinking ginger beer, you're living the high life, man. I so didn't know non-alcoholic options were okay. Yeah, I was gonna say I like I I would if we're going non-alcoholic, I love a cock and bowl uh uh ginger beer. And um mm. I've tried a many root beers. I don't know which one would be my favorite. IBC root beer is the best root beer, for sure. I don't agree, but it is very good. Uh but very. I've I, I've I've been in a few restaurants over the years where they make their root beer there and they bring it out in like a mug mm. that's been frozen. And maybe it's both, it's not just the flavor, maybe it's also the experience. But the, as far as the like, when I'm sitting and I'm craving a root beer experience again, I'm always wanting those frozen mugs from a, from a place that makes it in-house. Usually it's like a pizza place that makes it. Yeah, that's mm. what I like. That sounds nice. I would love to try fresh beer. I got to try like a, a, a house made sarsaparilla once and it was fucking mm. awesome. Yeah. I love sarsaparilla. Don't get it enough. And like every sarsaparilla I buy tastes like fucking butt. Like I, I love like a good one. Wait, so good. Did it ruin your experience at all of root beer when somebody revealed to you that it is the same flavor as Pepto Bismol? It literally is. They're both wintergreen. Win root beer is wintergreen flavored. Think about it. Think about root beer right now and think about Pepto Bismol. We're gonna see your face do this in real time where you're gonna go. I haven't had enough I haven't oh. had enough Pepto Bismol to understand the like Okay, what about like wintergreen gum? Have you ever had it is literally wintergreen. I guess, yeah. Yeah. It's not. It it's is not. It, it I'm not fucking you're, this isn't no. a joke. It's one hundred percent. Is there Pepto you're high. is That's there just... Pepto and root beer in your house? Wonderful wife, can, house, can no. you make? Okay. <laughs> no. Wonderful wife, bring the root beer and the Pepto. No, they are. They're both winter. Green. I would if 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 my if my lady is listening. I would totally take an IBC, but you don't have to bring it to me. I love you so much. Please don't leave me. If you need to, yeah. If you want to stop out and 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 take and grab one and then just take a sip and let it sit in your mouth, I want to see your face when you realize it's it's literally a, a type of mint. It's a mint flavor. I don't, I don't have winter green. I don't have winter green around me. Is the thing to to, you, to compare it to. Like, I but don't you have recognize. Anything. I think if you put it in your have mouth you and you swish had, it around, you'll recognize it. The root have beer. you ever had birch beer? Oh yeah, I like a birch beer. That's winter green as fuck. That's yes. winter green as fuck. Root like, beer that's, that's is yeah. root beer is too though. It is. It, you're gonna try it one day and you're gonna go fuck you piece of shit. Try it next to Pepto oh, also. Yeah. 
you're at, you're high. I think you're crazy. I'm not telling you something I made up. Someone revealed it to me. Google it, my friend. It it literally tastes. Oh. It, they're the same flavors. I feel like this is one of those things where people just taste things weird because, like, most of the rest of the world thinks root beer tastes like medicine. And like, I don't, I don't get. You know what I mean? Do they? I don't know. Well, that, you know which medicine yeah. I think it tastes like. Root, root beer is in the museum of, of disgusting foods. Uh, let's see. I don't even have to finish it. If you just put the W in, root beer, wintergreen. Uh, yes. So it is, well, wintergreen is a plant that is also used to flavor minty items like wintergreen lifesavers, but is used in root beer to round out the flavor. You're so sweet. This is the closest I have to creature. Thank you, baby. I love you so much, you sweet creature. I love you. Thank you. Some of us are lonely and you're hurting yeah. our feelings. I'm just kidding. I love seeing the two she of you. Me it makes me jealous. She brought me spearmint ice cubes gum. She Unique. said that's the closest thing she had. Yeah, unfortunately, closest doesn't do it here, here I think. But that's a, it was a nice attempt. However, I think when you try it, first of all, I just looked it up. It literally is the flavor. Oh, what about, do you have any mouthwash with wintergreen? It's a very common mouthwash flavor. Uh, okay. Uh, no, I think uh, I just have like fresh mint styles. Yeah. Really take a sip, swish like, it around. Like, you know, like just regular like like green listerine. I think that's I think that's winter green, isn't it? It's either the green or the green blue. I don't know. I wanna see if you get it this time. If you're like, fuck, I do, it's in there. I hate you, Jimmy Snow. I mean, I can see where you're coming from. I disagree, but I can see where you're coming from with it. it, it it's literally in it. They they literally put wintergreen in it. It just tastes like it tastes like a more mild sarsaparilla. Maybe that's what it made. Sarsaparilla and wintergreen mixed together is more chill. I don't know. You know what's, what's funny? Difference? I just found it. It just said IBC's offering of root beer is a bit closer to cream soda than some of the other brands which contain more wintergreen. So it is funny that also the brand uh, of root beer you like the most apparently has less wintergreen, but still some. Still some, nonetheless. Uh, okay, what? whose turn is it? Sarsaparilla. Hold on. What's this? So Root beer is an adulterated sarsaparilla because it contains a mix yeah. of flavor enhancing ingredients such as vanilla, wintergreen, licorice, root, nutmeg, acacia, anise. Oh, yeah, molasses, licorice. Cinnamon. I can sometimes super taste oh. the licorice. Did you just throw something at me? The, I, I, I <laughs> determine it. The only time I'll tell you a root beer is bad, not only, but most of the time that I say I don't like a root beer is if the licorice flavor really pops out, if it comes out a lot. Amber just threw some Mentos at me in here. I, that, I think <laughs> blue's peppermint, I think. It is just mint, yeah. Yeah. Bring everything you, else mint. No, I'm kidding. Amber, you're the best. I'm very jealous of the twos of your relationship. It's- uh, She is the best. I, one day- She's such a sweet lady. I'll find my forest or my amber, or She's a my Disney third non-binary option. Uh, 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 She's a Disney princess with all sorts of curves. She's got a beautiful singing voice and a beautiful smile keep, and like keep crazy rubbing it in. Keep, just keep rubbing it in. How lonely I am. Uh, uh, it, there's an She's old. Lonely. But speaking of Disney princesses, there's an old video of me on my Instagram. It's probably way far back. You, know, you don't have to go look for it. But I'm there's a uh, there was this bird outside that I kept hearing it make a <laughs> sound and I realized it sounded exactly like the feels good from uh, uh, feels good incorporated the song feels good incorporated. Mm. And so I literally started whistling <laughs> and then it would immediately go <laughs> and then I'd do the next line. It was perfect. It was a, I was communing with nature. I was a Disney princess. Don't <laughs> stop. Get it, get it bird. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Uh, my roommate at the time, I was like, oh my God, it sounds like it's saying feels good. He's like, you know that he goes, he said, it doesn't, you know that that's not the lyric in the song. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, no, they just say he, he, it's like, da, 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 he, he. And I was like, no, my guy. And we got into a heated thing and he looked it up and then he just kind of got quiet. And I was like, 
you're not going to tell me I was right. He's like, no, sometimes you're a sore winner. And I was like, don't you deny me this, my victory. I know I'm a sore winner. I deserve it. <laughs> anyway, Andrew Pina says, we should choose to believe in God just in case hell is real. It may be out of fear, but it is the safest option. Even though we pretend that God loves us, many Christians live in this fear. Yeah, it's called uh, Pascal's Wager. And I feel like, Everybody yeah. at this point's done a video on it. I've got a Pascal's Wager video. Do you got one? Nope. Well, I've you... talked about it, but I've never yeah. made a whole video about it. Well, I bet he will it's eventually. Just, it's, it's, it's got, there's a million freaking out, outs for it. Because, like, honestly, yeah. how many times do you worry about all the other hells and all the other gods? And, like, also, do you think you're going to pull one over on this god? Like, ah, yeah. well, I guess technicality, you get to go in heaven. You know? Look at my fucking dumbass hair, dude. It's way too long, and I haven't had it cut recently, and it's just like looking like that. That's awesome. Um, Can't relate. I have no hair like, anymore. Uh, it's 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 too much. It's way too much. It's getting in my eyes. It's driving me nuts. Um, <laughs> but like, you are you gonna trick this god? Are you gonna like fucking pull one over on him? Um, doesn't he supposed to be like the smart one? So like, what is it? Like, there's a million different things that just don't add up with Pascal's <laughs> wager. It's it's a really crappy way to be. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I, I I did one. It's got pictures and math in it. You might like it. I don't know how hard it is to find e. from years ago. Anyway, I think this one's yours to read. Uh, I killed Earl, sent $20, thank you so much, and said, was uh, changing purses today and found a sterilized human number 67 supernumerary micro dot in my purse pocket. Uh, I may have successfully nerded, out-nerded Forrest. Oh, and here's some money to support my uh, future nerdum uh, for my two favorite nerds. Thank you so much. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> you just fucking have that laying around. That's cool. I have some old teeth uh, scattered about that were like mine when I was a kid, and I've taught with them before, but like, I, I wish I had more like weird, just weird extra shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, uh... I always try to collect. I've got like a bunch of old bones and random things scattered about this room. I once pulled in my own tooth. An adult tooth too, not a, not a, not a nice. young tooth. Yeah. Somebody said I'm high. I'm literally not. I'm never high. I've been thinking about it lately because my sleep's so poor. I've been thinking about trying to use it to sleep, see if it'll help. I never really like what it feels like. Uh, but in Texas, we've got a bunch of legal strains that are very, very strong. Just as strong, if some of them might be stronger uh, than the traditional shit. Uh, and so I've been thinking about trying. But no, nah, this is just me. This is me, happy excited enjoying my life that's all uh twenty dollars from christopher richardson says greetings from everywhere i'm a trucker question for forrest why do you always say you can be so far left as to get your guns back i've always viewed guns as a libertarian versus authoritarian issue not a right left issue well that's sort of yeah so the reason why I um, why I do so is to distinguish here in America, like we have this you know debate over whether we should stop people from having guns to murder slews and slews of people in crowded theaters and schools, um, and so that tends to fall on the left right line. And so yeah. I'm speaking in the context of American politics, where if you're you know a liberal, if you're just a little left center, you would pro you might fall into this camp of saying we should you know completely get rid of all guns or at least all the big guns. We should be done with it. Whereas if you go very far left and you get into like you know actual like communism and socialism, then you're gonna come to the conclusion that like I need guns to defend myself from the crazy right wing assholes and then <laughs> to like potentially if you're if you're a communist in the historical sense of the term, not the theoretical sense of the term, then you're going to say, I need guns to overthrow the government and to bring about communism. Um, and that's my favorite thing. When you have somebody who's all fucking like, oh, I got First Amendment or a Second Amendment. We got to have, like, you have to get, like, yes, we need more guns. You're right. Because the more of us have guns, the quicker we can bring about communism. <laughs> Communists love guns. Yeah. And like, so like that's, when I say that, what I'm saying is that I, of course, support like strong and comprehensive gun control and, and reforming gun laws and making it more difficult to get a gun. I think that it's insane that you need to go through licensing and testing and like prove to the state that you're able to handle it before you're allowed to drive a car, but not before you're able to buy a fucking automatic assault rifle. 
that's nuts. Um, Because a car, the job of a car is to take you a place, and you can accidentally hurt somebody with it. The whole point of a gun is to kill something over there. So, like, you need to have the same level of training, testing, licensing, at least, to to, to do that, I think. Um, And also, you know, people who are super pro-gun tend to be very much for taking away guns from certain people, like felons, or whatever like that, which... Again, that's a whole other argument. But yeah, that's that's why I say so, is that when I talk about, like, I'm so far left, I get the gun back. What I mean is, I'm an anarcho-socialist. I am very, very, very left-leaning. Um, I own several guns, and the only reason I have them is to defend myself from the crazy fucking people around here who also have several guns and believe that I'm literally the Antichrist here to, to like convert people to transgenderism and shit. Like, that. There are Nazis in the world, and we need to be able to shoot them. So that's that's what I mean by that. That's a, yes, you're right. It is a different issue, but like in the context of American politics, that's where it, it falls in. <clears throat> I dropped this on the floor. That I thought you were throwing up. That was quite a noise. <laughs> that's that's why I have guns. <laughs> <laughs> this one's yours, I think, Treat. We should give, uh, I don't know who's in charge of the, the, the moderations in the chat, but like, you should make uh, this person a mod. How do who? I make that happen? Can I do that? Because I have the mod button. Who is this person? Can I do that? No, you don't My have lady, the, she's, you she's don't have the right here. Oh, okay. what? Do, so can, one of your other mods was talking about her being a mod, and so I just want to know if that was an easy... Will you just tag me in the chat, please? And it's I'll, your uh, chat. I'll get you it to do you. What you want. No, I'll give it to you. Yeah, I, I trust her. Do hey, you want me to tag her or you? No, I want her to tag me. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, there you go. So did you did the line? I don't know. Yeah, she got it. Yes. So put line. on the next one. I'll read it. Okay, this is the next one, isn't it? No. Nope. Sorry, this one is the next one. There you go. Forty nine ninety nine from K Bean. Thank you so much. Um. My 16-year-old daughter is learning so much from Forrest. That's awesome. Watching her learn to love science has been amazing. That that makes me so incredibly happy. Thank you, Jimmy, for introducing us to so many different hosts. I, uh, but I'm really glad you won. I love you both. You are awesome, KB. And thank you so much for that. Very kind words. It really seriously means the world to me. Ye. Ye. I didn't listen because I was responding to somebody in the chat. Uh, you better call tomorrow. Sheridan Bernasconi says, I also love Robert Sapolsky. Uh, have you seen his 36 mm-hmm. lectures from Sanford U on YouTube? Thank you, thank you both for yep. the show. Wait. The human behavioral biology, I listen to that like all the freaking time. When I'm just driving around, I'll just put that on and listen to it. It's so freaking good. Um, it is like 10 years old now, so some of it's a little bit dated, but like it's still amazing. Um, and yeah, he's just a super cool dude. Super, super cool dude. Yeah, he's not on social media at all. I was listening to a podcast with him. Um, it was the uh, uh, like oh fuck, Berg, Bergman or something like that podcast. He, another Stanford neuroscientist has a, Hoberman. It's a, it's a Ho, Ho, Hoberman or something like that. Hoberman Labs um, or Huberman, and he has a podcast. And he had Sapolsky on. Um, and at, near the end of it, he was saying like, "I know you don't do any kind of social media whatsoever, but I think if you did, you would be like." really happy with like the response that your videos get he seemed like really happy with that because like he's, he's fucking very much loved very much loved guy uh flat bomb says i like listening to jimmy talk more than jimmy likes listening to jimmy talk well that's easy because i don't like listening to myself talk i enjoy talking though i however hate the sound of my own voice uh it's a it's a big distinction however i enjoy speaking especially to an audience uh I'd probably say less. I don't talk much if if I don't have an audience. I talk to myself, I guess. But in that scenario, I am the audience. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, this one's for you. I should Sorry, say this I'm one's for you to read. About, uh, check. It's all good. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. Uh, Five dollars from James Cole says, "Jimmy, have you ever worked with Osage Orange? Probably the best hardwood for sh- uh, self bows. I don't know what that is. This uh, is so pretty." Uh, I have never worked with Osage Orange. However, uh, I probably will eventually because it is very, very good looking. It's a very good looking thing. Uh, I've ne- also never made a... Well, okay, I shouldn't say I've never made a bow. I used to make bows with my grandpa 
years and years ago, but it wasn't like, it was like out of a branch that was the right shape already. And then you'd attach a string to and stuff like it, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't quite woodworking. The only thing we really used was a vise and a, and a little hand saw. I guess there was a little bit, but, um, anyway, but that, yes, I, 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 I like Osage orange as well. It's very contrasty. Uh, you can put it with some other woods and that's nice. This, uh, this one, I've, I'm going to put on a different, let's do a different playlist. Let's do, uh, let's do some lo-fis. I feel like some like people want to hear the different. Yeah, I do too. I do too. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, Tara Stoller says, I feel like consciousness is self-awareness and that there's a distinction between self-awareness and the expression of self-awareness, which can be a false expression. What? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I feel high Ho -ho! listening to that. Like, I could vibe where you're going. I, I could vibe it. But even, like, the problem is when you when you talk about these things, it is so difficult. And I'm sure that Jimmy and I are very guilty of this, this whole show. It's so difficult to not be like, yeah, man. Like, there's totally, like, consciousness, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, just, it's so hard. Especially when you're talking about like the distinction between self consciousness and the expression of self awareness, and like this, like oh man, it's 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 tough. My whole point is, is if consciousness is self awareness, then consciousness doesn't exist because self awareness already does. You don't need a separate word for it, uh, uh, and so it's as a greater concept. I mean, uh, and so and then yes, obviously there's a difference. There's a distinction between any concept and the literal expressing of that concept. Because the expressing of that concept is just expressing. It's not actually the concept itself. It's just saying it. So uh, I don't know. Anyway, I think I think you're I, I think maybe what you're trying to say, Tara, and I agree with is most people are saying um, <clears throat> that they when they say consciousness, they're really referring to self-awareness. And I think that that's true. Uh, DJ Friesen says, disappointed at the hostile reaction to my questions. How do you expect people in the middle to become allies if they can't fully understand? Okay, DJ. Well, I literally said, I think we should stop here and you should go think because your stuff is so riddled with like dog whistles and stuff and that we should go and have this right. conversation when it can be more productive. But now I'm going to go with go fuck yourself, guy. It's, it's like when somebody, like if somebody was calling in and be like, listen, I'm not anti-Semitic or anything, but like, why is it that we allow the Jews to control the media? Right. It's like, that is a dog whistle that is also inaccurate and inappropriate and has a lot of problems. And even if you're coming into it as a good person, you heard this and you don't know that it's wrong. Like, we're going to have an aggressive reaction to what you said because it's a fucked up thing to say. So with what you're saying, even if you're a good person and you've only heard these things, you can't be upset about the fact that like what you said was really fucking jarring and like yeah. i can't you can't expect us to sit here and be like really polite and like deep through all these things when what you said is so hurtful to so many people so even right after your call we both said i think that's probably a good dude he seems like a nice guy i don't think he meant that i hope he learns a little bit more about it and thinks about it more now like, i just I realized know, though he also lied during the call uh you told us you were a trans ally in the call, and now you just referred to yourself as being in the middle. These aren't the same. So which is it? You're either a liar, and now you're trying to demonize the, oh, I didn't like the way you were responding to my fucking bigotry, or you were actually just honestly making mistakes and accidentally dog whistling. Uh, and so now at this point, again, thank you for the $5. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I, don't, I don't go fuck send money and I'm not going to be nicer to you. One time, uh, one time Arden and, uh, and someone got into it with a caller and the caller so badly wanted to be understood, but with, without changing their perspective and sort of being accepted, like, no, I'm not, th I'm just saying this, that they ended up like super chatting $500. And I was like, for $500, I'll pretend to like you. Uh, right. anyway, $10 from game, game master flash. Because I wanna, and because I love Forrest and Jimmy, you both are awesome, and I always find you two entertaining. And another request for more role for initiative. 
Initia Initia Give was this one. Did you? It was that your charity version. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing Jesse on the channel next month. We're gonna do a a, po a, 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 a positive masculinity screen stream because I feel like Hell that's yeah. what he reflects. That's like um, the most masculine person I know, and is not. Yeah, a piece I was gonna say shit. as someone who is very much not masculine. I am a, a skinny little boy. Um, <laughs> you can have me on to give a contrast. <laughs> Uh, anybody next to, I mean, he just, <coughs> he characterizes he's it. He, he, yeah, he's, he's, he's great. Anyway. Uh, I'm genuinely surprised that Jesse Jurdak does not have fucking antlers and a mane sometimes. Like the dude is amazingly macho. Yeah, uh, very, but he's such a good dude and is so like, he's masculine he's as hell. Such but a genuine and nice his, guy. Like, I don't want to just, I feel like it's I crazy. That. I don't want to just like, uh talk about his physical appearance because i'm sure he gets that a lot such a genuinely yeah. overwhelmingly nice dude yeah. like insanely kind um i've never worked with somebody in that kind of capacity that i enjoy working with that much i i, I don't know how to compare anybody but like casually looks like Jesse, superman watching this, yeah. i i can right exactly i can text you this but i'm going to say it publicly if you ever want to do another one of those games ever and i'm pretty sure you already do fucking hit me up anytime i want to do a charity stream in july anyway we so already, like we'll we've figure been, something out man we've been floating doing a line D, &D with jesse as uh the dm that'd be uh, amazing that'd be amazing bring in the usual suspects um okay anyway uh was this me or you did i do the last one who did the last uh, one probably me also somebody said they're wearing their initiative give hoodie right now hell yeah hell yeah um Oh, Jimmy, uh, you, uh, 699 from Olivia Williams. Oh, Jimmy, you got unicorns wrong. Mythologically, they run like goat. Do they? You're saying they, they, they run like goats? I don't know what that is. Is that true? I don't know if that's a thing. Oh, You're asking me. I'm a, I'm a biologist. I don't know what anything is. Is this a, tr is this a troll or is this just a, like, is this to be funny or is I'm, there? Am I'm I, pretty is sure I'm there's some subject. The, yeah. epi uh, the, the ellipses in there. Yeah. Every, like it, there's there's a joke that we're missing because we're too stupid to get it. So mm. like, tell us in the chat why this is funny because we don't fucking know. We're real dumb. Some people do real the dot the ellipses to be like a pause that you're supposed to lean in for. Like you got it wrong because they run like goats. I don't know. It's that's kind of what I was saying. Like I don't know. It's, 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 Olivia, yes, it's true. They have goat feet. I'm sure feet. what you said what? is very. I'm sure that what you're saying is interesting and fun. Unicorns aren't horses with horns. They have cloven hooves, says Dylan Fodder. Yeah, and, and then Fooler. Olivia said Fodder. it's true because they Fooler. have goat feet. Okay, well, they whatever. Goat, goat, you know. So you're just giving us a fact statement, and we're so used to being fucked with. We're yeah. like, what is she saying? <laughs> Are you messing with me right oh. now? Why are you messing with me right now? Right now, right now. Uh, David Dorenzio says, Professor Dave has a whole series debunking James Tour. Uh, great show as usual. Ha love the channel. Forrest, please be in my cloning documentary with Erica. I got your email and I got uh, Erica texted me as well about it. And like I the I was going to respond to you and I completely forgot to and I apologize. I, I genuinely don't think that I know enough about the topic to give you an intelligent interview. Um, and I know for sure that I'm so unbelievably swamped this semester that I wouldn't have the time to put in to like make it worth your time. Um, but she was saying that you were really nice and that it was a, an easy thing to do, but like it's just so far outside of what I'm doing right now, and it's something that I would have to dedicate time to get good at. And I just don't, I don't think it's going to be worth your time. It wouldn't be fair to you to wait for me to get some bullshit. You know what I mean? I felt <laughs> bad about that. And so, like, that's that's why I didn't respond. I, I do apologize. I did mean to write back to you, and I completely forgot. I'm just so, so very behind the eight ball on so many things right now. I've got, like, uh, 15 different irons in the fire. So, forgive me. I'm sorry. I, I really don't think I would be of use to you at all. Forrest, I'm going to send you a photo. Excuse this me. is a photo from Perfect. years ago. Uh, and basically, the reason I'm sending this is right now we're trying to drive people to our Patreon. Patreon.com slash call the line. Our ability to grow that is going to be a big part of what how we can expand in 2023. And I have huge plans for 2023, hoping that in 2023 we can get a facility that will be part 
production side and then a community center side. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So right now, this first month of pushing it, really a couple of weeks only, we're trying to get to 250 patrons. And the thing that I have promised patreon.com slash call the line is if we hit 250 before January is over and we're less than 100 away, uh, I can look at the exact number here in a second. I will shave my head bald and shave off the sides of my beard and I will go down to just a goatee and I will cosplay as Dillahunty. Now, Forrest, don't show this picture to the, just yeah. tell people how much you think they should want to see me bald with only a goatee. Because that's a picture of me bald with only a goatee. It's really me. That's me. You you look like you're about to tell me why females shouldn't be in the workforce. <laughs> because yeah. like, you know what's funny they're taking away masculinity. That's actually... I, I never held that view. I, I never felt women shouldn't be in the workforce. But that picture is from before YouTube, back before I had left my cringy anti-SJW phase. And I was taking a shot mm. at having what was essentially an anti-SJW podcast. Uh, and, and, and yeah, I'd say you, you're right. You look the part. Yeah. You look the part. You look like you're about to tell me why gentrification isn't a big deal because yeah. if, if the blacks wanted better homes, they should work harder. That's what yeah. this picture looks yeah. like. Yeah. 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 I like, do I, I look a little bit like, look, we all understand that Hitler was a monster, but we never talk about, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but well, how, what about when I'm just saying there's a photo of me now i will say my goatee's longer now and i'm a, a a larger person i'm quite underweight actually in that photo uh i, I but I, i've got more hair in my goatee it'll be more a little more distinguished i think i'm going to be able to pull off a dilla hunty sort of look i think i'm gonna i, I think it's gonna be interesting anyway patreon.com slash call the line uh let's uh let's find out we do have more super chats to go by the way i just wanted to interrupt and and try and push this thing because that is, like I said, going to be a huge part of our ability to grow. Uh, yes, right now we need 76 more patrons. It starts at $5 a month. Uh, we've we've done 100. We've gotten to 174 in only a couple of weeks, which is incredible. But we only need another 76 before Tuesday. So if you've been putting it off till the last minute to see if like they're going to pull it off without you, this kind of is the last minute. So there's only a couple of shows between now and then. So uh, uh, hit that up, patreon.com slash call the line. Starts at $5 a month. Uh, we also are doing like Zoom calls with different hosts. I've been putting in some behind the scenes content from time to time. Uh, and then starting in next month, we'll also have uh, like credits at the ends of shows that include certain tiers of the uh, of the show. So check it out, check it out, check it out. Anyway, uh, me or you? I don't know. Uh, $10 from Bat Dad says, no, 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 uh, or no, Bat no, no. D4D uh, says, Forrest, would you have any videos of your own that you'd like, uh, that you'd recommend for kids interested in the everywhere stretch or evolution? Um, thank you and great show as always. Hi, Jimmy. Um, interested in the everywhere stretch or evolution? Uh, I mean, if you're asking videos of my own as in videos that I've made, check out my Light of Evolution series, yo. Um, as far as the everywhere stretch is concerned, I talk about it briefly in Reactiria a couple of times, but I don't have anything really good about it. I would look up, um, Minute Physics. Minute Physics is great for kids to learn these complex things. Um, Look up Minute Earth as well if you want to talk about some cool evolutionary stuff. Uh, also, look up there's a, a channel called Stated Clearly, um, and that's another amazing one. That guy's freaking cool, uh, and he does amazing videos about evolution all the time. So, like those are the three channels I would recommend: Minute Physics, Minute Earth, and Stated Clearly. I would look up those. Those are great for kids. They're cartoons, easy little drawings, real cool stuff. ASAP Science is also pretty good, but ASAP Science is a little bit heavier than most kids would be interested in usually. But Greg and Mitch are cool too, so look up them. Technomancer Mages. New haircut, Jimmy. I've noticed the shorter your hair, the less time you have to give for bad calls. If you shave your head, you'll be hanging up before they even call. Dark Snow Rises. That's right. Dark Snow Rise. That was my best. Not any part of that. <laughs> No, it'll be good. It'll be good. I won't actually hang up that earlier, but I am I am looking forward to the memes, which it's only going to happen if we hit that 250. 
where you're going to see him and I side by side and I, and he's going to say, no, 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 you're done. And I'm just going to repeat it right after him. No, 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 you're done. Anyway, it'll be a good time. Uh, I think this is yours. At least one or two, one or two people in the chat saying that they just became patrons. Good for them. Um, Fuck yeah. Thank you. $10 from a uh, log in valid with a picture of what appears to be a jumping spider. Love that guy. Um, Parents are creationist. I'm not trying to take away their uh, their belief in God away. I get that it's important to them. How would I respectfully try to educate on evolution? BB. I'm not sure what BB. Oh, Big Bang, etc. Is it worth to try, to try? Yeah. Um. So the biggest thing when dealing with that is is like you have to agree. Number one, that evidence is important. That's a huge thing. Then you have to agree what evidence is, and then you have to agree what evidence is out there. And when you go through those things, I would say the best bridge that you probably have to start with is that there are lots and lots and lots of religious scientists out there. There are lots of religious physicists out there. There are lots of religious biologists out there. So making it less scary by saying, hey, just because you're wrong doesn't mean that you have to completely tear apart your entire worldview, especially if they're older. That might be really freaky for them. Um... And then once you get across that bridge, then you can start picking away at the rest of it. But like, you know, just that's why deconstruction is a whole process. It's not it's not deconversion. It's not just completely dumping your religion. It's taking it apart piece by piece. And I think that's probably the best way to start just saying, okay, so let's get into the shallow waters here of does it matter that we have evidence for what we believe? And if no, then that's where we have to stay. That's the only thing we have to talk about. And then if it does, okay, so then what evidence actually is out there? And what does evidence actually look like? What counts as evidence? It is, does an old book count as evidence? Does something physical count as evidence? Does something observable count as evidence? Does something like what can, can we say if I have a murder trial that I didn't watch it happen and I only heard about it? So now, or does, you know, can I pick fingerprints and like footprints and video and like these are evidence that I don't have to see it? I can still put it together, right? And I, and then go into, okay, so what evidence is there for evolution in the Big Bang? Let's talk about fossils. Let's talk about, you know, uh, radiometric dating. Let's talk about the cosmic microwave background radiation. Let's talk about Hubble's law. Let's talk about, like, all these different pieces that all fit together that show us, actually, the world is much more interesting. And more interestingly, let's talk about the history of those discoveries and talk about how the scientists that discovered these things didn't believe it at first and then changed their minds. And then the rest of the world changed their minds too, because that's what we do with evidence. It's really cool stuff. Talk about plate tectonics. We can all agree on plate tectonics. And there was a time when nobody believed in plate tectonics. And then around the 1960s, we had enough evidence and we started learning it. And there was a big fight, whether or not to put plate tectonics in public school classrooms, teaching the controversy and all that shit it was the same thing. So I would start there. And then once you get to the point where they can understand and accept these things, then you have your work cut out you for the rest of it. But like that lays the groundwork for deconstruction in a really cool way. I'm trying to see whether or not I can see live as people become new patrons. Because right now it's not showing the number any different, but I can't see. So if somebody becomes a patron right now, will you let me know? Um, no. Okay. First of all, I am a bit high bad child. I was really warned about explaining myself. Sure. Fine. If you want it to be that, fine. You don't get to explain yourself in the live chat. Because you trying to explain yourself in the live chat is you saying, hey, this audience over here that isn't mine, that I didn't put the work to build, that are not here to hear or speak to me, they they should just be mine right now. And I should get them. And I'm entitled to them. The way this show works is if you want access to our audience, we invite you to have access to our audience by you calling in. And you get to make your position then. This is not some democratic free speech haven, whatever. I run this quite authoritarianly. The way you get to say your piece is if you call in, not if you try to have a side so in the chat. So you and every other theist can kindly go fuck yourself if you're just here to try and cause controversy in the chat and have a show that distracts from the actual show fucking happening. I don't care about you. You are not a person I know or a perspective that I give a fuck that you have if it's in the live chat. You want to get to know me? You want to get me your perspective? Call in. Until then, you don't exist to me, basically. Fuck it right off. Yep. 
Like, I'll God take the call damn. right now if you're willing to open the lines up. It's on you. It's it's your show. I know you have other shit besides just I, wanting to do it. But like, I, I just want to. I want to make right now. I do want to wrap up by midnight tonight, uh, and I don't think we have time. And we need Theus to call in. He's already been told we've got the show tomorrow at three, and he did this like. I guess I'll try to remember it's at three as though we don't all have smartphones with alarm clocks on them as though I couldn't hold down a button and say, remind me at two 30 tomorrow to call the line as though it would be that fucking hard to remember all Troy and then went back on the rants that he was told he couldn't do or they, I don't know. I'm a bit high. I don't know what your gender is. Call the fucking show. It's just usually the arrogance of some bullshit like that. It's usually he's, but uh, you know, maybe I'm wrong this time. Metal. Metal. Better be precious. Uh, anyway, did we do this one? Sorry, I'm doing two, 10 things at once. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yes. Uh, also, remember that it's hard to... The, I, I, I wish I knew how to tell people how to change their parents' minds. Because if I knew how to tell you how to do it, I'd change my parents' minds. It's probably the hardest right. people to change. Uh, because they, they have built-in systems by which they dismiss you most easily. And uh, they they uh, suck. They're just bad people. All parents uh, are terrible. Beetle Tubba says, bro, love it. Love it. Bruh. Thanks, Beetle Tubba. Bruh. Bruh. I think it might have been the, the like meme, the bruh. Bruh. JAA says, $10 for Forrest to show us a book, preferably one he hasn't shown before. Here's, um, there we go. Me just making teeth sounds. By Simon Hill uh, Hilson. Um, it's just a fucking manual on teeth hmm. and how they grow and what the different ones and morphologies and like what they look like and. Learn everything you could ever possibly want to know about teeth. I need this because that's a lot of my thesis. And then um, this one, Paleozoology and Paleo Environments, uh, Fundamentals, Assumptions, and Techniques. This is also a big part of my thesis. So dig up on that if you want one. And if you want a book that fucking normal-ass humans read, I re here's what we're going to piss off as many people as we can. I recommend... Uh, Richard Delgado and uh, J uh, J Jean 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 Stefanik, I think. Yes, uh, Stefan Stefan Sik. I don't, don't remember how to pronounce their last name. Uh, Critical Race Theory: An Introduction. This is a great little book. Very short read. Get you through the whole concept very quickly. Read this one. It's really really good. Uh, thank you to the person in live chat who just told us that we they can't call because we blocked their number. Uh, thank you for identifying yourself so that we now know we can should also block you in the chat because uh, we obviously you've already done something to warrant not being allowed to participate with this channel. So I appreciate that. Now you're just full on blocked from the channel. They also called me a lib. I love when people who are less left wing than I am call me a lib and I have yet to find somebody who tries that shit who actually turns out to be more left wing than me. Like it's fucking all right. Cool. I get anyway. to be called a liberal by someone who like can actually tell me like what my actual opinions are or like what yeah. I like. It's like when people like I just brought up critical race theory. I've yet to meet a single person who's like fiery anti-critical race theory and thinks you'd be banned from schools and everything. Who can also tell me what the fuck it is? Yeah. The same thing with evolution. We were like, we can't be teaching evolution and true. What's evolution? <laughs> when monkeys give birth to people or uh, another one, fucking uh, socialism. Every person I've ever met who's fucking all fire. I've met like one or two people who can have a serious conversation about socialism. But nine times out of ten, when somebody talks to me about socialism and how evil it is, they have no fucking idea what socialism is, dude. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Socialism is when the government does things that aren't war. Right. Yeah. It's like, good God. Right. I do love, uh, I do like, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, never mind. Thank you for self-identifying uh, that you should be blocked. I appreciate it does a lot for me uh da, 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 da. thank you for the five dollars from ph don't know yet that's funny uh and Love then that. kelly z says this episode made me laugh out loud thank you you're welcome thank you kelly z he's smart i'm funny he's actually pretty funny too but i'm not smart so i have uh, to be funnier i'm not either of those things i'm just here 
get out. Do you know, it's like, it's like when I have to reassure, I have people in my life who will come to me reassuring for reassurance that they're pretty, that they're good looking. And I'm like, F fuck you. I am not conventionally good looking. I'm a few people specific type. You are like, you exist with privileges because you are so good looking. And you're coming hey, to me, sex, an ugly person, to reassure you of your prettiness. Like, fucking Christ. Anyway. Halo effect. You feel going to associate beauty with morality. Um, there's been so, so many studies on that. So many studies on that. Where you fucking learn about, like, how when you think about beauty and you think about, like, a, a, or you meet a beautiful person, you automatically assume that they're a better person than they are and that they're more honest and more caring and more generous yeah. and more kind and all these different things. And it's like, nah. <laughs> they're just people. Excuse I don't know. Me. I look like this. So I don't know anything about beautiful people. I, but that, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I've never, in my entire life, I've never, I've always had to be personality first. I attract people by being good at speaking about things I am passionate about and I'm funny. Those are like my two things. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it's, it's always like that where it's like, hey, look, I know we just met and right now I'm only like a four to you. But if I keep talking, you'll think I'm a seven. You'll, you'll change you. I'll become more handsome with time. Uh, and, and it's like, how dare you? Like, one of these people fucking makes so much money on OnlyFans and, and like, it makes more money than I do for being really attractive. Don't get me wrong. She works hard, too. Like, she's it, it's not as though she's not also putting the work in. But the popularity, there are less attractive people than her who have to work much harder and don't make as much is sort of what I'm saying. There's an element where it's like, it's an easy sell. Like when you, you, you the, the product being sold markets itself almost. Uh, and, and I'm just like, what? You, me? You want me to tell you that you're pretty? What the fuck? <laughs> like, I feel betrayed. I feel betrayed. Um, I, I, it's funny because I actually put in effort for the show. I, 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 like, I freshly shaved and trimmed my lines down and Ooh. got all my stuff up. And yeah, yeah, I've been doing that a little bit. And literally, the video I sent to a few people is from my mirror where I just went, "This is amazing. If I put in a little bit of effort, I'm like." like 20% more fuckable. Like I'm a solid D minus now. And yeah, I, that's sort of how it, it's 20% when you're working with a, with a mid tier F, it doesn't, doesn't help right. much. <laughs> anyway. Um, the, someone said, I look like I have two kids, a decent house and a secret from his wife. I have one of those. I have a decent house. That's it. I don't have, I don't have, and I'm renting for the record. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I wouldn't mind. I actually am quite envious. I have a brother who has two kids, a decent house, not a secret from his wife, but, uh, a great family. And it's funny how we both sort of have, we sort of envy. He, he envies how much stuff I got to experience and try and how many people I got to experience and try. Uh, whereas he got married very young in the Mormon church. He's got, and of course he loves his family and his kids, but we both have this thing where I'm like, man, you wake up every day and the days that you have to do work that you don't want to, you have that thing that still makes it worth it. Where you're like, you know what? It doesn't matter that I don't want to, it's for them. It, it helps that his like, he has like the greatest kids too. They're, they're super smart. They're super like, they're becoming funny. They're not, they're not funny yet, but they're becoming funny the way I became funny by making every joke possible yeah. and then seeing what works. Uh, and so I, I don't know. I'm very envious of, of, of people with the sweet, uh, the, the, that sweet family. No, joining my personal YouTube doesn't count. The line and my personal YouTube are completely separate things. Uh, the line supports everybody that you see as a main host on the channel. Um, the, the Jimmy Snow one is just me and just the people who are, it's, it's sort of like Forrest is obviously separate from the line, but is paid by the line for things he does. Uh, uh, whereas it, I guess it feels the same to a lot of people because I'm the executive producer. However, uh, my bills get paid for my personal bills get paid for, uh, by Jimmy Snow, uh, the, the 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 I'm not pocketing and, and and buying a bunch of cool fun stuff. I wish I, I want a saw stop so fucking bad, but I'm not making enough to just go get one uh, oh, right now. Do you know what a saw stop is? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're cool as shit. They're amazing. They, for anyone who doesn't they know, there are now s- there are saws that. Uh, uh, table saws, which are some of the most dangerous saws. They cut off more fingers every year than I think anything else does when it's like literal just fingers. Uh, uh, and um, it, it's a table saw that if you, if it makes contact with your skin before cutting into you, despite the fact that it is spinning thousands of times a minute, before that cut completes of one blade going hundreds of miles an hour, whatever that speed is, I don't know, before that one cut makes it through and actually cuts you, a break shoots into it and pulls it away. It, it can detect it. And you, some people are left even without even a scratch. Sometimes you can see the indent mm-hmm. of where it began. It's incredible. And I want one, yeah. but they start at like $3,500. The kit that I want is probably more like $4,500. Uh, and did I'm, you see the, the one? one? It was on the YouTube channel Smarter Every Day. And they made the one for circular saws where like if it gets snagged and flies back at you, it's got like an accelerometer in there that'll turn the saw off and stop it from like just like throw it into your leg and like cutting you up. So freaking cool. So freaking yeah. cool that engineers are able to pull off. Yeah, it's it's it, the the science is incredible. The the speed that it works at mm-hmm. is incredible. It makes you realize also that we're probably capable of way more in technology than like right now, it can feel like we've hit a plateau because the even Moore's law seems to be being undermined lately. The speed at which processing power is getting better and shit. Um, and then you see stuff like that and you're just like, that thing was spinning how fast and doesn't complete one blade tooth's worth mm-hmm. of distance? How? It's yep. magic. It's okay. magic. I think you could probably kill yourself on the brake, except the brake is like internal in the system. I have to imagine that if you put the brake, if you put the brake to your head and attached it, it, you'd kill you, wouldn't it? It would have. I feel like it would have to. It it moves so fast and with such force. I imagine so. Yeah, it'd have to. Don't you wish we had? I'm sorry. I'm still. Go ahead. I'm looking at chat. It's hilarious. I'm sorry. What are they talking about? Uh, that same dude that you fucking called out and said, just call in, don't have a thing in the chat. Dude is pressed. And is talking about how, like, I have to donate money to be heard. That's worse than a church. Despite the fact that you've talked to him and the chat's talked yeah. to him and we talked to the chat and we're talking with all the people. And then he immediately starts back in. Like I said, though, here's this other dumb thing. Yeah. And now he's all pissed We've off. Told you. This is a public chat. I should do what I want. I'm going to prove it's not a public chat right now. I just deleted your chat saying it's a public chat. Fuck you. It's not. This is, this is an authoritarian hellscape is what you've walked into. What kills me, what kills me is this dude is trying so hard to have this argument and like prove that he can do the thing and he's going to do it now. Damn it. And he's not going to call in later. And then he actually posted one of his arguments and it was fucking dead. Terrible, I know bro. he's, he's the, was, there has to be a the, it's basically oh we've already done it we yeah. see creation therefore it needs a creator mm-hmm. it's just a version yeah, and, of that and, 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 like that's and he, he said something like how there has to be a mind there can't be anything without a creator's mind that is and I'm not exaggerating here one of the worst possible arguments for creationism mm. and you're in here fucking fighting with dozens of people and the hosts of yeah. the show that you're desperately trying to influence talking about how you're not getting any attention from all the people that have given you attention and yeah. the best you've got is there has to be a mind that's your a plus game that you're bringing to this conversation and it's hilarious i don't want to talk I, I don't want to give this guy much attention i'm sorry i just I, that was just killing me. I was watching that play out. It was so fucking funny. The mods are great. Love it so much. Look, it's cool if you can't tomorrow because you work. I get it. You know what's the great thing about this channel is? We're back on Monday and then Tuesday. I'm back on Tuesday. I'm on tomorrow with Matt. Uh, Shannon's on Tuesday with Paul. Great people you should call. Fucking, you know what, actually? Y'all see so much of us lately. Mm-hmm. Call Shannon and Paul. On Monday night, 6 p.m. Central, or you can call me and Exmo yep. Lex on Tuesday, or you can call Matt and Heathen Queen on Wednesday. Thursday's the Transatlantic I'll Call and Show. That's more about trans issues. And then I'm probably going to be on the sixth. You can call on the sixth. I'll be here. Yeah, Forrest and I might do this again next weekend. Maybe I don't know. I, I got no Who plans. Uh, uh, certainly toward the ends of the months, I feel like that'll be things that we pull in more. Beginnings of the month are always so fucking hectic. It's it's. 
Well, they're both, they both are. The last day of the month and the first day of the month are always my two worst days. The days I hate the most, I have to do the most accounting and HR shit and all this fucking stuff. And then, and then first of the month, you got to pay all your fucking bills. Fuck bills. Fuck bills. Anyway, Allison, the animal says, Hey Jimmy, your impressions are always great. Can you do your best impression of Forrest? I haven't worked on an impression of Forrest and his baritone is beyond. Okay. Here's my baritone. Like if I'm just living in my lower voice and I'm trying to speak, he has a very crisp baritone. So if I was going to do Forrest, I would have to go for the things that like some of the expressions he does. So he'd be like, and so then like, that's, what's really cool. It just is. It just is really cool. Your arms and I, aren't if wide you don't, enough. Arms, if you don't, you got to be up here. You got to be up here. And I, if you don't understand, it. like, I don't know how to, if you don't understand why evolution is like the coolest thing, I don't know what to tell you. Like that's that's the best I could do. I can. I, I mean, can, that's about it. That's about it. Nah, it's. I mean, I feel like I could. I could go like, hey, let's guess which host of the line I'm doing right now, and people go, well, that's Forrest, obviously. But if I said guess which YouTuber I was doing to a general audience, even people who knew who you were, they'd be like, uh, Mr. Beast. Uh, also, you and Footless <laughs> Joe have a very similar energy and way you talk to the camera, where you can, you'll do this like, and then with the little thing and the cool with the fun thing that I love to love that you two have such similar positive <laughs> like energy. Bill- yeah, yeah, yeah. You sound like Bill Cosby. Don't trust your daughters around me. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> fucking oh man i used to love doing impressions of bill cosby but also not, you, not anymore. your eyes were the whole time you were doing the impression of me your eyes were way too wide you need to fucking squint those things down the I whole squ- time i don't know why i squint if you look at videos of donald trump he's never squinting and yet somehow in my head if i'm doing an impression like the face i make when i'm doing is my gilbert godfrey face too now when you're talking you know you're touching it around that's not a very good gilbert today but with him i always do this uh, the eyebrows go way up and i just close down the eyelids and there's something that feels it feels right okay it feels right and we say that we say it feels very right but it's it's there's something there's something not right about it i don't know i don't know <laughs> i had fun Kathleen Moncrief. Uh, uh, yeah, no. This the, one's yours. The chat also pointed out you forgot to to when you're doing the forest impression, you got to talk about how much fucking you love Amber. That's true. I feel like I feel like I always compliment their relationship so often that I worry that it's going to seem like I'm trying to flirt with one or both of them at some point. When in reality, I'm just very Somebody jealous of their impression of their of their relationship Somebody from both that sides. In the chat. Somebody put that in the chat. You forgot to mention how amazing Amber is when doing your forest impression and Amber put it for real. <laughs> love that. <laughs> I, I love it too. I was gonna I was gonna mod Amber, but then she said she didn't want to be modded, and I understand. I get it. I, get I thought it. it would be easier for her if she was. It would be, it'd be, it'd be a simpler thing. She could have a fucking little, little blue blue wrench and be fucking lord above the plebeians. Somebody said that my hands are too big to be Donald Trump. I could just pull a back away but i feel like you got a sense of scale when they're near my body but then if i bring them forward they look also he doesn't just do this he does the accordion you know and we, we love it okay we love it we love it it's a weird thing he does oh i just pulled my headphones out i do this too often yeah. but sometimes i switch to these headphones you got going on so many different options so these are my inner in-ear monitors, and this is like I can't do them forever. I start to get a, a sense of them in my ear, but these go behind, so you kind of don't see them unless I turn them to show them. People often mistake them for mm. uh, hearing aids. Um, and then I've got these headphones, and then the other output I have is a speaker over there. When I'm doing, when I'm producing, and I'm not talking a lot, I turn the speaker on and don't have anything on my ears because I actually don't love stuff all up on or in my ears. I found a bunch of in-ear monitors. I'm going to buy some of those someday soon. Sure. S-H-U-R-E are my favorite brand. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Linens for Lenin said... <laughs> Linens for Lenin sounds like a like a communist uh, a clothing trunk subscription. <laughs> Linens for Lenin says, Hi, guys. Uh, just watched Megan and the conversation of consciousness and AI was trippy. Thanks for hosting and being wonderful. I haven't watched that yet, but, uh, was it Ex Machina was the one with the Turing test 
And then it turns out that there was a different conscious robot there the whole time. Do you know what I'm talking about? I, I have no idea. I've never seen it. I did, so I did see Megan. It was fun. It was like a fucking no modern day Chucky almost. It was good. Cool. I just, yeah, cool, cool. I'll just say no spoiler. We, we try to be very spoiler free. Yes, uh, Ex Machina is, I, is a really good one. Amber and I freaking love movies, and we live not too far away from a theater, and we bought like the unlimited pass. So we just go there, like in the middle of the night, like two or three times a week, we'll go out on the movies, like fucking 11 o'clock at night, and there's nobody else there. And we try to watch like every new thing that comes out. So, like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's nice. Megan the- was, was weird. Freaking loved Barbarian. Everybody should go watch Barbarian. It's not probably not in theaters anymore, but everybody should watch it. It's the, fucking the best. Barbarian. Barbarian was so good. <sighs> Uh, the Raven 200 says, well, it's my right. birthday tomorrow, y'all. I'm a huge fan, especially of you, Forrest. And Jimmy, you're hilarious. Thank you. Thank you both. So the Raven 200, happy birthday to you. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Raven. Happy birthday to you. I love singing happy birthday, but not saying any of the words except for birthday. So you get a group of people all together and you just, birthday 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 that's funny it's a room full of people it's so good <laughs> uh ten dollars from ph don't know yet you two are inspirations forced with your abundance of knowledge through your studies and jimmy with your dedication to your search for truth you both create a community that atheists and skeptics feel welcome thanks that's all we want that's all I, we want. We want people to call it and be excited about it. We want people to feel safe and welcome. We want people to, to call in and help help them in their deconversion journey. It's, 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 yeah, it's lovely. Somebody said I skipped. Oh, I did. The my, Kathleen Moncleef. We didn't read this one. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. uh, there's also a correlation between the number of storks in a country and the number of births. Take that to people who believe that having sex is real. Yeah, for you sure. idiots. You idiots. Uh, I'm going to give you another one that I know you're going to go off on a, on a thing about. I just need to run to the bathroom again. I'm not feeling very good today, people. Uh, so please bear with me. But this one, I feel like you'll have plenty to talk about. Okay. Once and for all, Forrest, is there a distinction in evolutionary biology between microevolution and macroevolution? Okay. So, yes, there there is. Um, I'm going to say this very quickly. And then as soon as I see Jimmy starting to come back into frame, I'm going to start talking about some crazy shit just everybody go with it okay uh just we're just gonna fuck with him so anyway it, yes there is microevolution refers to small genotypic changes within a species um so variations in coloration limb length whatever like that uh, macroevolution refers to the big phenotypic changes that we see in the fossil record where we see differences in you know huge differences in taxa and usually that's a big thing when we look at the fossil record we see like punctuated equilibrium we see a big mass extinction event and then we see adaptive radiation with a whole bunch of new genera coming out of there that's what we're talking about there with macro evolution there is this distinction but i can tell you certainly that like i with with all my time in college and all the classes i've had to take over this shit i have heard these terms actually used in a conversation maybe three times and it was just to define what exactly we were talking about and moving on um no biologist actually makes a serious distinction between these as a point to say that one makes more sense than the other microevolution causes macroevolution macroevolution is the result of the accumulation of microevolution it's like saying you know a difference between micro or macro fauna like if i'm looking at a little ant versus a fucking giant ground law the diff the, they're the same kind of thing one's just big and one's small and the arbitrary line between them isn't something that like no it doesn't fit there's only ants and no sloths you know what i mean like so that's all it is it's just a little distinction between how much of the change we're seeing so if I prove to you that I can walk five feet and that's a micro change in distance, and then you come up and see that I've walked a mile, a macro change in distance, you don't have to be like, oh, maybe he walked, but maybe it was magic. He just flew over there. And the only way a person can get a mile away is if if, if, if Genie puts them a mile away. You know what I mean? Um, that's all. So those, that's the only actual distinction. Um, Usually when I talk about evolution, I talk about any change in the heritable characteristics of a population across uh, across the course of multiple generations. 
that would be a microevolutionary change, especially if we're talking about a change in allele frequencies. That would be a microevolutionary change. Um, excuse me, I'm burping up all this freaking root beer. Um, whereas a macroevolutionary change would be like from Indohias as a little artiodactyl guy to a whale over the course of 50 million years, right? That's a macroevolutionary change. And that's only possible because of the vast, vast, vast amount of microevolutionary changes that took place in that time. So if you ever hear anybody actually trying to split hairs between the two to try to make a point, there's a good chance the person doesn't actually have the context of what those words mean. And I would challenge them to then define evolution next. Because remember, the definition of biological evolution is any change in the heritable characteristics of a population across the course of multiple generations. So if like, macroevolution is a subset of that and microevolution is a subset of that if you want to pick one but not the other fuck dude like i don't know what you're trying to do um it's like saying that atoms exist but molecules don't or that pages exist but but books don't i don't know so that's all i have to say about that uh jimmy's taking a long time when he comes back i'm gonna start saying some weird fucking things i'm just reminding everybody about that uh amber and i just went and saw skinnamarink or at least most of skinnamarink is it wasn't good it was really bad uh, I, for some people if you have the patience for it it'd probably be interesting i'm not saying it's a bad movie objectively but like if if like if you have the time to sit there and look at lego bricks and ceilings and shit for like an hour and a half solid just staring at fucking the ceiling so anyway like but the major point is like at, at that point that it, there is going to be so much cream corn that you wouldn't be able to get with it anymore. You wouldn't be able to survive basically in that much cream corn. And so like, that's the major difference. Like if you're going to talk about one or the other, it's, you can't be Batman. Like I said, you can't be Batman. So that's not going to work. You can't continue your life without breath mints in the situation. And you're not going to survive in that much cream corn. So overall, macroevolution is uh, just an extension of, 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 of you know, microevolution. That's all it really comes down to. I believe that I left no. and you conspired with the audience to say something like, when Jimmy gets back, I'm just going to be saying the craziest shit. And I'm going to... That is the very first thing that I said. Yes. Uh, just cream corn, Batman, and breath mints. I fucking love it. Yeah. That was amazing. I was like, I guess you're talking about the fuck? What happened while I was gone? Cream corn. There's never a good reason to bring up cream corn. Especially, never. At, especially at meals. Uh, Dylan Fuller says, I love oh, cream corn, though, for real. Drink that shit. You like cream corn? Hell yeah, I like cream corn. I didn't corn. think anybody liked cream corn. It's so good. Okay. It's so good. Okay. I'm also from the South. You see, you're like one of these Coloradians. No, that's just where I lived most recently before Texas. Before that, I lived in Wyoming, also not the South. You know where I lived before that? Louisiana and and also Florida ah. and also Tennessee. I've had a lot. Of, a lot of my childhood was in the South, but then there's also New York in there. Uh, but I don't know where I'm from. I'm sort of from nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Vagabond. That's right. Dylan Fuller's. I can explore the world. Hate cream corn. I didn't have a choice in exploring, uh, moving around so much for sure. But yeah, I don't like cream corn, but I don't like a lot of things. I just didn't know that people, I thought cream corn was universally like, like Brussels sprouts, like that everybody jokes about. Brussels sprouts are awesome. Are you okay. kidding me? Well, there we go. Have you ever had them cooked prop? Have you ever had them sauteed with a little bit of butter and garlic? Or you, you just mix them, or you roast them like pan, like, like, like put them on a, a baking sheet and roast them with some squishes. Fucking delicious, bro. I eat stuff. vegetables like a champion. I don't I enjoy vegetables. Demolish. I don't enjoy them. Oh, so good. Dylan Fuller says, I uh, forgot to mention Forrest, if you'd like to, check out this project on YouTube called Dinosauria by Dead Sound. The series is so fun and cool. Uh, I'll do that right now. <laughs> cool. Cool, 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 cool. Na -na 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 Celia A says, Jimmy, best way to reach you as an XJW have major concerns about one of your upcoming guests. Okay, first of all, we're not doing this. I'm taking this one down. Uh, I am not interested in people's fucking personal life bullshit. People have come for me and shit on me with shit that was absurd 
and I'm not dealing with that. So you can contact me any of the normal ways to contact me. Uh, bring fucking proof and, and it not be attached to goddamn stupid shit from people who have a vested interest and a hatred of a person before the supposed conspiracy. Uh, uh, fuck off with that shit. Uh, Steve Seidler says... I didn't says, see what the comment was. I fucking... Yeah, I moved on. As far as, like, I'm it was, dying well, to know. Tell me was, after the show. Tell sure, me after sure. the show. It was in a super chat, but you get on here long enough and people get mad at you for one thing and then they try and shit on you for other stuff and... Uh, uh, I'm not saying anybody's perfect and nobody ever makes mistakes. Certainly I have. However, the fucking bullshit that happens and where everybody just gets to now start making any accusation and say anything they fucking want and it's just accepted as true uh, uh, and also speculations about people's personal lives. It's none of your fucking business. Reel your goddamn shit in. Uh, and your whiny like fucking little drama shit is... is it, it's pretty sad when you come after activists with whiny little drama shit. Uh, and you're like, you know what's more important than the actual work these fucking people do? You know what's more important than that is me getting off on this fucking drama-laden bullshit. I'm not dealing with it. Not dealing with that shit. Steve Seidler says, how will Jimmy feel when he discovers he missed out on ruling over his own planet? I don't worry that I'm going to find that out. There's no, uh, there's no, there's not a single worry in me that, that and I'm sure I'll be able to do something like that in VR within another couple years so i won't even miss the opportunity uh taishi kojima says oh i think this one's yours actually uh i want a second what is a human video but it's forrest as matt walsh slash dr zayas from planet of the apes asking erica creationist questions what dr zayas dr zayas dr zayas dr zayas dr zayas Oh, 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 Dr. Zaya. Sorry, it just would remind me of. Uh, Raven 200 says, I have root beer with me right now. It's my favorite drink. Well, enjoy your wintergreen soda. It is good. It's good now, stuff. Does it taste like wintergreen or are you sane? Like, you do recognize that, like, I can actually objectively say it tastes like wintergreen because it has wintergreen in it. Like, it's it's not a matter sure, of even subjectivity. You. It's It does but taste like, like wintergreen. I, I, I put a couple of splishes of, of fermented fish sauce in my fucking Tom Yum soup, but it doesn't taste like fish sauce. It's just there to give it a little bit more umami because fish sauce tastes and smells like a rotten asshole. Yeah, this is because that, it's though. fermented fucking fish. So but this is just that. a little splish in there. It's, it's the featured it's flavor. It's the featured flavor. I don't think it flavor. is. Vanilla is also in there, but vanilla is a little bit of a more neutral flavor, so it's hard to distinctly taste it. Uh, uh, and then the sas the sarsaparilla. That's in there too. Uh, soup, uh, RPG Debunk says, Growing up, I had Bill Nye the Science Guy. Now the kids need a new scientist to make learning fun. Valkai the Science Guy. I love that. Here Valkai for you, man. Thank science you so much. Guy. A huge compliment. Yeah. No, I think you would. I think I, I, I feel like of everybody I know of who could fill that role well, I think you would do an incredible job. I well, do. thank you. That's very kind of you. I don't You're want to be the welcome. next you know, Bill Nye or the next Carl Sagan or the next Neil Ty. I want to be the next anything. I want to be the first and best damn forest you've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, this one's you, I think. Uh, hi, Jimmy and Forrest. Six dollars sixty six cents from Randy Steers says hi for you, Jimmy and Forrest. Do you play D and D? What are your thoughts on incorporating fictional religions into storytelling slash world building? Should we abstain? Um. Man, I do play D&D &D from time to time. Uh, I, and I understand there's a lot of problematic history with D&D &D as far as like using terms like races and things like that and incorporating stereotypes. But it comes to like in, uh, incorporating fictional religions and storytelling and whatnot. Um, it, I can totally see how where as like a company type situation that could very easily be offensive to a lot of people. Um, and I can also see how even just you doing it independently could be offensive and hurtful to a lot of people and could be a really shitty thing to do. I don't think it's that hard to come up with a new, you know, religion. But if the story is about an existing religion and its people and its practitioners, I don't see why that would be an issue. Like if I was doing a DD and d campaign set in modern times about specifically Christians doing a thing and how we have to fight against it, and that's the campaign, then that's no different than, you know, any other. Like there's there's plenty of horror movies about that. 
about you know zealous christians you know going out and hurting people and people have to fight against them there's plenty of horror movies that cover that so like i don't think that's a, a bad deal i have a random hair tie in my jacket and i can't think of no, so why i would have this i have not had long yeah. hair and it's not even the type of band i used to Who have is she? And, Who well, is she, Jimmy? and then that's the other thing i've not only have i not had long hair in years I've not had an emergency band like just available where I know it is because somebody with long hair is going to do things to me. I haven't had that situation in a long time either. No specific gender. I'm just saying the need to get long hair out of the face. I don't know why I have this. That is considerate. Yeah. No, that it's a good thing to do. It's a good Everyone's thing to do. having a hard time and you can just like yeah. wrap their hair up for them. Very yeah. Nice. Have you ever... No, you haven't. You've been you've been taken so long. I was gonna say like, uh, if if you ever invited somebody to like come ho hang hang out at your place, and you notice they have a hair brand on their wrist, and you're like, I hope that's a sign. I hope that <laughs> I hope that means they made a plan here. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> um, uh, did we answer this, Jimmy and Forrest? Do you play D and D? Yeah, what are your thoughts on we incorporating fictional? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't mind about fictional religions and storytelling. I don't even care if you put Christianity in there. When you know it's fiction, who fucking cares? I, I assume they meant fictional religions as like, as an atheist, you're seeing all these religions as fictional and therefore is it still appropriate to incorporate them even though they're but, real to some people or something like that. That's what D I thought they were saying. Maybe in, I misread. In D&D, &D, there's no option of atheism, right? It's gods objectively exist in that world. Right, like the Spider Queen fucking exists, and and so what mm -hmm. their definitions of gods are are different. But um, yeah, no, I don't. Let's see. What are your thoughts on incorporating fictional yeah. religions into storytelling world buildings? Should we abstain? I don't. Whatever the context is, I don't think it matters <laughs> at all. Does it? What was the one? What were, I don't know if I got your point fully. Was there a point you were saying that no, we shouldn't do? I said I can understand how, like, you know, with with the history of D and D having like racial stereotypes and like shit like that, uh, and like there there were some issues, and so I could totally understand how like they could potentially make a mockery of or or, or a representation of an yeah. actual religion in the world that people like and, and hurt a lot of people, and I can understand how you doing that as an individual DM, not as a company, could also do something that is objectively shitty. Um, however. Like you said, gods objectively exist in this universe, and even not, even if not that, if you're telling a story and the religion is a part of the story, I don't see an issue with that. Myself. Yeah. Okay. I uh, well, yeah, I mean, there's definitely stereotypes even within D and D. Like, it's not great that yeah. the dark elves are the inherently evil race, right? Like right, that's right. that's not great. Yeah. 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 Anyway, though I do love me some Dritz. Uh, this is yours, I think. Uh, ten dollars from Jeff Meager says, "Forest, love your last reactoria. It was epic. Th great work. Thank you so much. It really means a lot to me." Uh, and Jimmy, stay gold, pony boy. Stay Thanks, gold. Buddy. Will do. Will do. Armor uh, Margin says, "Hey, missed the show, but thought I'd drop a dime your way. Love the extension of the shows, Jimmy Forrest. Always awesome to see you. I agree. I also think it's always awesome to see Forrest. That's a lot of dimes." That's a lot of dimes. Uh, Ten dollars from John the Amazing says Jimmy Charlie Day gets injured during VAing for what's VAing voice acting for Luigi, and Nintendo asks you to replace him. How do you? How much do you ask for? Also, for the gun topic, I support legalization of tactical nukes for the revolution. <laughs> nah, there's no, there's no, that's too large scale. I get it. And I get the idea of like, well, the government shouldn't have anything we can't have in case we ever have to. I get why people feel that way. I don't agree. But tact you can't give tactical nukes to, it's already amazing we haven't nuked ourselves into oblivion with fucking Kim and, yeah. and Putin having them. At that point, there are people who would push the button because of the chaos that would ensue. Um, can't do that. Anyway, uh, how much money for me to do Charlie Day's Luigi? I think I would mostly want access to people through that arrangement. Uh, I would want, you know, enough money to get me my saw stop, but I'd be more interested in networking because boy, that's a, that's a good cast to network with. And maybe through it all, I can deconvert Chris Pratt from his stupid Christian views. That'd be cool. That would be a cool one. I would enjoy it. Anyway, Forrest, 
IBC is great. This is from Ember. IBC is great, but you have got to try Saranac when you're in New York. Saranac. Saranac, maybe? I don't know. I'll look it up. I will look it up. I had a bunch of good New York root beers. Root beer. This one's for you. Uh, it's a four ninety nine from Aerobius. Forrest reminds me that I'm not so straight. Thank you. Uh, Sapiosexuals for the win. Also, Jimmy, you're awesome. Keep up the great work. A, r- a reminder that, that whether you're sapiosexual or not doesn't make you straight or not. You can be a straight sapiosexual. Sapiosexual is much more a, a type of preference. Uh, and sometimes can be interactive with a scale of like demisexuality and asexuality. But your sexual orientation refers to which genders you are attracted to. Uh, and so sapiosexual, this argument comes up all the time because there are people who are like, well, yes, I only want to have sex with the opposite gender, but only if they're smart. So I'm queer and give it to. And it's like, that's not really what makes a person not straight. That's more of a preference of attraction. I'm also attracted to smart people. Uh yeah, sort of a, sort of a, this is one of those ones where you it feels like you're saying so-and-so, you're excluded from the queer spectrum, but there has to be lines somewhere. So it's, it, it becomes controversial. Controversial, indeed. Uh, that said, if you're basically saying like, I don't care what gender a person is, as long as they're smart, I'm attracted to them. Technically, what you are there is a sapiosexual pansexual, and the pansexuality is what would make you, uh, uh, the fact that you don't give regard to the gender for your attraction, that would be where your queerness is, your queerness. Uh, I need to get better at these terms, because I don't, I don't, I'm, like, I, I tend to mix them up too much, and so I usually just fall back away and just say LGBT because I understand also the word queer is being reclaimed and used but like yeah. you know this because you're the same age as me like my whole life that has been a derogatory term and so I even have yeah. to hesitate to use it, it when yeah. I know I should be or could be it, it's just it's just tricky yeah yeah but it's sort of like if we if we say that being attracted to a person regardless of gender as long as they're smart makes you a queer and not pansexual sapiosexual you can start doing that with so many things like i'm not attracted to anybody based on their gender i'm all but i am attracted to people for being tall well that's not exactly a queer identity either and and smart intelligence can be as arbitrary as height uh, anything else so uh no. yeah, yeah like i said there just there has to be division of these terms uh anyway this one i think is for you to read or did you read the one where you said sapiosexual I read the last one. The same okay. sexual, yeah. Tra- Trevor Strop says, "Awesome! Didn't see this earlier. Well, I've been wanting to. I will be in New York this summer. Yes, sorry, oh, Amber cool. put in that someone. So you're talking about the the New York root beers, and Amber put in here that I'll be in New York this summer. I'm like, what the fuck are yeah. you talking about? Oh yeah, I'm doing a I'm doing NoCoCon. I'm doing a convention in New York this summer. Yeah, go see me at NoCoCon, y'all." If you want to go see me up there, I'll be doing a panel and a show, and I'll have a bo- I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do with the booth, but I'll be there. So somebody asked, and it's a fair question because I get what you're saying. Jimmy, why point out that North Korea and Russia uh, uh, have nukes when only the USA ever used nukes on civilians twice? And you're right, technically. However, if we're talking about today, who the most likely people to use nukes in a world-ending way, it still is if we're... The reason why I said what I said and not what you said is the context, because I agree with what you said in a different context. In fact, I, I blame the U.S. very much for the evil of introducing that we apparently accept that in some situation. Uh, so, yeah, it's not. Uh, uh, I, it, while I said what I said, it wasn't in disagreement with what you said. And you don't get it. You certainly you don't give Russia and North Korea passes for their constant threats of using them which the U.S. does not do. Right. The U.S. does not threaten to use them. Uh, uh, yeah. You don't get to give them a pass because the U.S. 60, or oh, fuck me, now it's like 80 years ago. We're getting old. Almost 100. Old yeah, years we're ago. getting up there. Crazy. Use them. Yep. Uh, oh, did, did I not read, read the last one? Trip? No. Trevor oh. Strapp said, Awesome, didn't see this earlier. I've been wanting to ask Forrest about time and evolution. My biggest confusion is how much time it takes to go from bacteria to us. Just doesn't seem like enough. So think about this, because like what you're looking at is a time of about three billion years from like the earliest single cell, because bacteria are even quite complex. Earliest single cell microorganisms all the way up to us. You're looking at a time of around three and a half billion years. Um, just 
ask yourself this. Going from a single-celled organism to a you know very complex system like us, is that so crazy when we talk about something over, over the course of almost 4 billion years? Is that really that crazy when you consider the fact that you did it yourself in just nine months? You went from one cell to a fully formed human in just nine months. And that's because of your DNA. It's very, very cool. But when you look at like the long stretch of time, it's difficult for people to wrap their brains around that. It's a practice you have to do. Think about like two, three years is, is pretty tricky. Think about 20, 30 years. It's like, oh, wow. Think about two or 300 years. And it's shocking. You think about what was going on 300 years ago in this country. It was getting started. It was fucking, yeah. it, it, we had, you know, it's still colonies. Wow, that's ancient history. Now start thinking about two or 3,000 years ago. You got fucking Romans running around. And you go back to like fucking two or 3 million years ago. You think about like the changes in Africa going on at that time. We were evolving two and a half million years ago. Almost uh, like the homo lineage started 2.6 million years ago. So like these are huge changes. And then you stack on billions. Like it's, it's a, Massive. Your stupid monkey brain isn't built for handling those kinds of numbers. So you got to really just take the time to really appreciate just how much can change in such a little bit of time and how much we have very clear evidence of changing over a little bit of a longer period of time. And then just kind of start stacking these ideas and very quickly you'll realize it's really not that crazy at all. Um, multicellular evolution, evolution from a single-celled organism to multicellular organisms has been tested and observed in laboratory settings multiple times. And then from there, it's a straight shot to us. So like, it's, it's really not as crazy as you think. Yeah. Also, don't let yourself get caught in the weeds of like kinds and like that different taxa are somehow like special and exclusive. And there's like this wall before you become a, a mammal versus the everything everything is a fuzzy gradient. So I would go for that. You know what I mean? Tight. Uh, Fredster55 said, miss most of the show, added to watch later, finally privileged enough to financially support the channel, uh, the support the content I consume. We'll check out. We'll be right back. No worries. Happy to say the line is my first Patreon subscription. I need to see Jimmy as Matt. I think that is going to be a lot of fun. And I think you all want to see it. A reminder, we need to get to 250 patrons. I'll shave my head, shave the sides of my beard off. Let's just, I, I feel like I should always make the goal higher and then, and then reveal like, aha, I really, the goal was really 200, but, but it's not, we need to get to 250. Uh, uh, so 250, uh, 250 patrons. And, uh, unfortunately it's not showing me if anybody has, has signed up during the show. Let me see. Actually, does it still show that as the most recent? No. Okay. So it's, it's showing some more recent, but it's not updating the number on the page yet it still says 174 so it's less than 76 off now it's a, it's at least down to 70 off it might be even further than that uh, uh but there are definitely a few more since we started talking so yeah patreon.com slash call the line patreon.com slash call the line anyway data monk says crap three hours late uh uh nm never mind it's Forrest and Jimmy. Live has another four hours. Still best seven hours on YouTube. Next, we need a Forrest Gibbon, Doc Ben, and Jimmy. It, 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 the stream would just never end. That's the problem. That stream would never end. Uh, also, thank you for the nine ninety nine from Sam Stagel and from John Bala. Uh, and we've got nine ninety nine from Julie Cordova. Hi, guys. I lost my 18-year-old dog, Corn Dog, today. I know he did not cross over a rainbow, but love if you could just give him a mention in remembrance. Thanks, awesome show, Corn Dog. You will be missed. The your your Our eighteen years of of uh, uh, of companionship will be remembered fondly for a long time. Uh, and and I'm sorry that that you uh, are gone, but eighteen years, my goodness, what a what a dog. That's a that's an old dog. Uh, and, yeah, and, what a what a I'm sure it was worth it for those 18 years to have you around. Our hearts go out to Corn Dog and Corn Dog's relatives and family. Corn Dog seemed like a good dude. Pour out a little cream corn for Corn Dog. I don't have any here. I was gonna say, do Here's you actually have some cream corn uh, over there? That would have been amazing. I got some in the pantry. I can go grab. Nah, I think we're. I think we're. I think we're good. Uh, let's see. Shane Torres says, Forrest, huge fan. 
You've had the biggest influence on my deconstruction from young earth creationists and fundamentalist Christianity. Thank you for all you do. Thank you so much. That really means the world to me. That is, that is what I want to do to the world. I want to help people this way. Uh, uh, Honey Bear, I see you're still in the chat. If you, you don't have to, because it would be a bit of work, but if you want to go check the pantry for a, a can of cream corn and dump it in a bowl and pop it in a microwave, I'll fucking sit here and eat cream corn in front of Jimmy Snow for the rest of the stream. Hell yeah. Let's do, do it. it for corn dog. We'll, dr we'll drink cream corn for corn. Again, you don't have to. I'm not going to be upset if you want to. I, uh, I, are you, were you volunteering that I would, I was, well, I was looking at something in chat. Were you volunteering me to drink cream corn? No, I was asking if oh. I said, if Amber is still watching, which she apparently oh. is, that if she wants to, she could bring me some cream corn and I can consume the cream corn now yes. for corn dog. You do know that by now, tonight at minimum, you owe her a 20-minute massage and not one of those massages that you're trying to lead somewhere else. Just a 20-minute non-selfish massage. You know what I'm saying? That's you, 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 I feel that's more than fair. I, I would say maybe more than 20 minutes, but I'm getting old enough to where I'm getting arthritis in my hands uh, from my piano playing days. And 20 minutes, especially, I'm, I'm pretty tough with the thumbs. I start to get pretty sore, especially during the colder months. So at least 20 minutes. <laughs> He says, I'm not your servant. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I get some props for, for turning this into a negotiation. I'm on your side, Amber. Uh, let's see. How do you explain, Sam Stagel asks, how do you explain college education to people? I'm the first in my fam to get a degree, and they blame my deconstruction on liberal indoctrination. Ooh, I don't know. That's uh, a hard question. Yeah, man. I would say the best thing to say about college education for people, because I've also talked to people like that. I, I have some some people that I know personally that um, think that you know colleges are just there to indoctrinate you to be a liberal and to change your mind and to pull you away from God and all these things. I would say the best way to describe college education is that it exposes you to other ideas. That's the big. Did you just knock? We have no cream corn. Make it yourself. <laughs> But tell them you're Thank expecting you, that well. massage. Okay, well. Tell them that massage you are expecting. She said, we have no cream corn. Make it yourself. Is and it... she brought me some cream of mushroom soup <laughs> and some <laughs> corn. <laughs> Hell yeah. <coughs> you okay? The thought. Cream of mushroom soup did it to you? I, the thought of mixing the two. Oh, my God. Bro, I will absolutely do it here. If it fucking... Give us another $20 super chat. I'll go grab a bowl and I'll mix these here on camera with the sound and the microphone and we will make Jimmy Snow vomit. It'll be yeah. a great stream. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I would say that, uh, uh, to describe college as a way uh, it exposes you to other ideas. That's the best thing that it does. Um, it allows you to explore, you know, um, um, other ways of thinking, other uh, 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 things from, from all around the world. And also, it allows you to test different ideas. So, like, um, one of the cool things about a science degree is that you don't just, like, they don't just tell you the speed of light. You sh prove it yourself. You go, like, I, I have proven the speed of light in a lab. I have proven the force of gravity in a lab. I have done experiments on evolution in a lab. I have done gene engineering and gene modification in a lab. And that's a part of me getting, you know, this this whole thing. So like, yeah, th that, that was a part of my, my undergrad edu education. And now as a graduate student, I'm doing actual research and publishing papers and saying like, this is new stuff that I found out. So yeah, it's, it's just... I don't know, man. I think that's the best way that I would explain it to somebody. Ye. This, this is a tight beat. Oh, and also I would follow that up by saying... I would follow that up by saying that if your ideas really are that good, then it shouldn't be a problem that you hear other ideas. You should be able to still stick with what you got. Because here's the thing. I used to think I used to be a very much capitalist and then I studied other ideas and realized that my ideas didn't hold up. And so I changed my mind. I used to believe a lot of crazy things and then I studied other ideas and realized they didn't hold up and I changed my mind. And there's lots of things that I believe today that I believed before I learned alternative ideas to those things and those ideas didn't hold up. And so I stayed where I was at. 
So like, if you ask me, you know, why, you know, pick pick your favorite thing, you know, so, something. I've I've been exposed to plenty of homophobic ideas. I they didn't change my mind because they didn't hold up. If those were the only ideas I had, I would be homophobic. But if I was exposed to other ideas, and it'd be, you know what I mean? So yeah, just that's all. That's all. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, last fan says, OMG, I have an evolution question for Forrest. So important. Please, OMG, this matters, you guys. Seriously. Well, uh, and then last fan, uh, okay, followed up. It. Last fan then followed up with, oh. if Forrest disproves the look at the trees argument, might we say that we are missing the trees for the forest? I would have, I would have stuck with through the forest, but missing the trees through the forest. I would have stuck with I like it. You know, I like it like that. I like it like, it like that. Uh, yeah. uh, Rebecca Borg says 10 Singaporean dollars. Every time Athea says, look at the trees, it makes me very suspicious of their intentions. Trees are shady. I feel like the nice. music helps nice. that joke. Yeah, that added to it. That added to it. Mm. We are almost done here. We've got about three more chats. Uh, Mark Smith says, mix it up, Forrest. Don't. I, I I couldn't watch you eat that. It would. I gagged when when they just oh, said... I'm not going to hmm. eat old shit. I'm just going to mix them because it clearly had such a visceral effect on you. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab a bowl. Yeah. Wait here for one second. I will just end the stream. I don't know what I don't know what you think. I don't put myself through th needing to throw up. Uh, let's see. John Doan says, Forrest, when you make cornbread, put cream corn on the top. The very end, yummy. Uh, I guess if somebody likes corn, cream, corn, cream corn, I could see why they'd like that. And then Lost Fan says, how can a mom, dad, or produce baby that's got different numbers of chromosomes than the parents. I get variation, but how can such a big change happen? I'll, I'll wait for him to return so I can ask him that question. So, if if you start making yes. it, I will I will end the stream. I promise. Well, I'm going to talk about uh, different numbers of chromosomes and everything, and we're still getting super chats in. We, uh, we no, this going. is the last one, uh, uh, and I don't care. I'll just end it. I don't I I don't care. I, people would have been mad if it, it would have did. What you gotta understand is that there's different ways that chromosomal variation. Are you trying occur. to get around so it? Like, look. Are you trying to get around? Look for example, look, look for example at you know chimps and 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 gorillas and all the other hominids, um, the anthropoid great apes, right? We gotta pour out the corn juice. Um, all right. Well, thank you everybody for watching tonight. Thanks. We uh, we had a good time. Uh, it was a nice night. It was fun. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna look at the screen here and I'm gonna tell Forrest if you behave I'll bring you back if you thumbs up there's a promise that you're not gonna do this I'll bring you back otherwise I will do the rest of the stream by myself sir I, I can't hear you. you got a thumbs up guy I, I can't hear you you got a thumbs up I'm not I don't want to throw up I'm not joking that it will make me throw up so I'm not so give me a thumbs up that you're not gonna try to make me throw up because I don't enjoy it I'm already sick I'm waiting for that thumb, buddy. You're not coming before the thumb. Okay, there we go. Here we go. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what. If somebody tells you they don't want to throw up, why would you do it anyway? My anyway. Because we've got a thousand people watching, and it'd be funny. No, I. I feel like shit. I don't want to. I, I don't want to throw. First of all, I wouldn't throw up here. I'd get up and I'd go throw up in the bathroom and I'd leave the mic on mute. I'm not gonna do it in front of y'all. It would just no, the not. And, and for for the record, I threw up eight times today, like at least eight. So so if whatever comedic value that is, there's eight instances of just knowing I threw up. Let's just let's just answer the question and move on. Uh, but it's, it's, uh, fuck, what was I saying? The other apes, like chimpanzees, for example, are, and, and, and bonobos are our closest relatives. And they have an extra pair of chromosomes that we don't have. They have one more chromosome. And, and, and the, so, like, they've got uh, 46 chromosomes. We have, uh, 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 wait, no, sorry. They have 48 chromosomes. We have 46. What? What am I doing? Anyway, they have 24 pairs. We have 23 pairs. And that is crazy because we know we split from chimps around seven to nine million years ago. Um, and that's not enough time to lose a whole chromosome slowly. Like that's, that's, that's a problem, you know what I mean? Um, that would be lethal. And so we can see that there was actually a fusion event where chromosomes two and three actually fused together and became one chromosome. Um, and so, uh, yeah, 
That's the, there, there's lots of ways that can happen. Sometimes uh, chromosomal anomalies from parent to offspring are. They're saying you're very quiet example, suddenly. I don't know why, because I haven't turned you down. That's because of you. I didn't touch anything. Uh, pull your mic closer. I don't know. I I haven't. I didn't adjust at all. I literally just there's moved us between these that windows. Can happen. <laughs> that's there's so. That's terrible. That yeah. And you see, the it's, the the chimpanzees have an extra pair of chromosomes that's that we don't have. <laughs> And it's That's... because chromosomes two and three in that lineage actually fuse together before becoming the hominin lineage. And we don't know when this happened, but it could have been as early as Sechelanthropus uh, tungurensis, which is probably our common <laughs> ancestor with chimpanzees uh, because it's at the right time and it has the right morphological characteristics. And it might have even been a biped. <laughs> Kathy Moncleef said, I'm here for the cream cor cream mushroom corn. Well, y'all can do that on his stream after the show. <laughs> he can do that over on his channel. Uh, and buy Amber something nice with the shiny U.S. quarter that this will turn into. That'll get, yeah, because it's you, Canadian. Sir. That's but, about <laughs> as much as he gives me. That is, that's true. <laughs> it's a pittance. That's why every, that's why we have so many amazing hosts. They're, it's very appealing to just hang out with me. Right. It, it, I don't have to pay them to be my friends at all. Anyway, <laughs> that's the I okay, for the record, there are gonna be people who think that I was like genuinely angry with Forrest. I understand oh, no. Forrest's instincts. I get it. I just don't want to throw up. So I was just trying to express that I genuinely don't want to throw up and let's not do that. Before anybody makes a drama or makes it a thing, I love this man. He's a great person. He is at least 70% as good as his companion. Nope, you promised. You pro you did promise, and if you do it anyway, I'll be disappointed you broke a promise. So you, that's fine if you do it. If, as long as me no longer thinking your promises matter is fine with you, then do it. I'm a man of my word. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I didn't say I wouldn't pour other things into the corn, though. Ew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, have your root beer corn. I don't that's fine. It's the I feel like the cereal. the phrase cream of mushroom is also disgusting. Right? I I, I just don't like the cream out of your mushroom. Mm. Okay. Oh, hey, hey, that's so head over to our OnlyFans stream apparently cuz you want to know one of my favorite words in the Potawatomi language? There's a a word papoi which is the word for the force that a mushroom exerts when popping up from the ground overnight, that a mushroom bursts out from the soil and grows, and that, that's called papui, is the force of that. Wow. Happening. What an uh. awesome thing to have a word for. That is also the same word for the force of other mushroom-shaped nocturnal growths that have fucking getting a boner in the middle of the night. The force of your dick is also called papui. How cool is that? That Super sounds pretty awesome cool. Stuff. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, Forrest, anything you want to plug before we go? Uh, yeah, head over to my channel and watch the new What is a Human video. Um, it was a lot of fun to make, um, and I would like to get the views up on that one uh, because uh, reasons that I can't say because of uh, contractual agreements of like, <laughs> not being able to disclose what sponsors Artificial are inflation, right? Yeah. You're not allowed to inflate like, it in any way that could be perceived artificial. That. It'd be a lot of, it would be a lot of fun if people watch that. Um, and if you don't want, you need to learn something too, and that'd be great. Um, and, uh, 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 I think that's, I've got other stuff going on, but none of it's really important right now. So go watch that. The, what is a human video? You'll learn a lot. You'll have a lot of fun watching it. Uh, and I, I had a lot of fun making it. By the way, I still don't know some people are saying you're coming in quieter, but maybe hit refresh. Let's just see if we can fix it before you go. I Cause I, the only anything. thing I did, I yeah, you oh, changed. only I, the only thing I changed was from that input to this input. That's like literally it. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Squeeps. I actually do think you're louder now. Hang on. Just okay. talk regular. Talking regular. This is me. Oh, I don't know. Actually, it's sort of the same for me. I don't know. I don't know what to tell y'all. But anyway, go check out uh, uh, his channel and go watch all that stuff. Uh, if you want to support us on Patreon and see me ball with a goatee, patreon.com slash call the line. It was great seeing everybody. Great talking to everybody tonight. Have a good, pleasant evening, and we will be back tomorrow, Matt Dillahunty and I, at 3 p.m. Central Time for the Sunday show. Monday, uh, Shannon Q will have Apologia. Tuesday will be myself with Exmo Lex. Wednesday will be Matt Dillahunty and Heathen Queen, and then I don't know if we know. Oh, next Thursday is actually going to be the three-year The Line anniversary show. Ooh. Good night, everybody. Love y'all. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>